PKA 629 with our guest Josh, a.k.a. Strange Central. Yeah. Taylor. This episode of PKA brought to you by Lock and Load, Blue mm. Chew, Woo. and of course, Wonky Weeds. All right. A great product, a great way to get high, and a great person to get high with here with us, <laughs> Josh, Strange Central. How are you, man? It's been a couple of years, I think, at least a year. It's been a hot minute. I've been doing well, yeah, though. Yeah. Yeah, Good. you weren't doing well before. Like, like, but someone asked who the guest was going to be tonight. And I said it was you, and they were like, "Yeah, that's the guy who, like, uh, you know, um, uh, you know." And I'm like, the guy who had like a entire life breakdown. You're like, yeah, him, <laughs> yeah. yeah, him. You gotta like kind of do it lightly. Yeah, it's like pretty much I was coming from like full mental breakdown and like alcoholism, which was mm -hmm. I got a year mm -hmm. sober, so it's that's great, a positive man. thing. Nice. Did you have the chip? Um, Are you doing AA? Oh yeah, I get the the gold coins. I gotta start framing them or something. Wait, do nice. you have one nearby? No, nah, make a bracelet uh, out of them. Make it make a little charm bracelet out of them. Nearby, you'd have to destroy it. I would really have to. No, go you grab wear one. it to bars, oh. and you get women to like. Take <laughs> you get women. You get women to be, you to like. And you'd be like, "This, I haven't had a drink," and and then you get the lady to take you out of there to save you from the alcohol. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Please save me I, from myself. I have one. I'm not in the right yeah. place. Kyle has <laughs> one just when yeah. you pretend. If you bring your AA yeah. chip to a bar, do they <laughs> give you free water? <laughs> no, that's, what, that's what the purple hearts for. Uh, I got right. that too. Yeah. I'm that's already Kyle's, wearing that. That's Kyle's hookup tip. Always keep a two year chip and a purple heart in your pocket. So that if you pass by an AA meeting and there's a hot girl in there, you can be like, hell yeah. Yeah. If they well, call you, you out on the purple so, heart, you show I'm them the chip and they're shit. They're shit. Your chips until you have a higher one. I'm <laughs> years sober. How about I that? Four uh, years. Like, yeah, I could teach you a thing or two. Well, that's great, no, man. A year sober. I feel that's like wonderful. Uh, NA is the place where most people go to hook up, though, because it's all like younger people in NA. Like AA, yeah. I walk into a room and it's it's mostly like four 80 year olds who have like 40 year sobriety. I'm like, who the fuck is this kid in his 20s? What are you doing? <laughs> you should be partying right now. You're, you're still yeah. too young for this. This, this <laughs> is the worst hookup tips ever. You want to get yourself a junkie? I got tips for you. Yeah, well, I mean, I I four 80-year-old men with your name on them. <laughs> I dated Apparently. right out of rehab, so it's not like I necessarily did that entire thing correctly. Um, but that mm -hmm. was my first rehab in which I relapsed. So if you want to know a route in which not to get sober, it's date the person you found in rehab. It's a pretty oh, quick shit. route to yeah, be, because you know that you both I love to do drugs. <laughs> like, well, was she there for the same drug too? No, that was the thing that oh. I thought we were good on. Like she, yeah. she was like a meth user. I was like an alcoholic. So I thought it like offset uh, each other. Like, kind of like a Disney offset. <laughs> but I the equation didn't work. <laughs> I have to know, like when you go to these addiction meetings, is there like a, a social hierarchy based on what you're addicted to? Like, is are you an alcoholic? Uh, you know what? Alcoholics is kind of pedestrian compared yep. to, to my man. <laughs> that was how rehab was. It was like everyone was in there for opiates. And you know, I was doing half ounces of Coke a day. Mm -hmm. You walk in like, I, I drank a lot of vodka. And everyone's like, Why the, it's, it's like that Dave Chappelle skit where he walks in for weed. Like, mm -hmm. I'm addicted to smoking pot. And he's like, I, I suck dick for whatever, for crack. Right. Yeah. Why are you here? <laughs> so it is that hierarchy thing where your first few years, you're almost like not necessarily even recognized as being sober. It's like, ah, he's, he's going to go back out. He'll find his way. And then you hit like a year and people are like, all right, he might be taking this seriously. <laughs> So oh, okay. there's there's weird hierarchies in that and there's weird dating situations. It pretty much is in the younger circles, mostly just for hookups, because it's really fucking hard to date as a 20 year old that doesn't drink. Like I can't sure. go to a bar necessarily. And most social situations are like bowling alleys or whatever where people are drinking. So mm -hmm. if I go to an AA meeting, it's like one, hopefully the person is actually trying to get sober. And two, you know, we have the same interest and we aren't going to be going to a bar. So. You said it, NA is kind of the younger person one. Can you not, if your problem is just with alcohol, do they not, are they like, ah, you should probably go to AA, not NA, or are they <laughs> no, like, you, you know, take all Yeah. So if you like switch to that, maybe the, it, yeah, the, the like, cooler group. I think they see it as alcohol is a drug no matter what. And that's kind of like the overclassing thing. So you mm -hmm. can kind of, there's actually groups for everything. Like Overeaters Anonymous and Marijuana Anonymous. It's not quite like, so anonymous. We know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so we can tell. Wow, what's that? Wow, is there a triathlete meetup going on? Here? What's, going on? what's happening? <laughs> they actually I was going to hold those ones in the basements. Ties into something I was thinking. Like, like, have you taken your rehab skills and applied them to other places? Does it help you with diet and exercise and career? To a degree. Um, I, I found when I first got sober, I was really struggling with depression and it was like the kind of depression that I like couldn't get out of bed. So uh, mushrooms was, are good for that. 
I've heard that. I've heard a lot of like the psychedelic experience is going to help. You come her. to me, I got tips. No one can fix that drug. <laughs> <laughs> is what is nice to you. <laughs> I think they say the leader of AA, like 10 years sober, ended up trying LSD. And I'm sure that was like he created some crazy program and wanted to connect with the universe to try to figure out how he came to the idea of creating mm. this program. <laughs> so I think there is a, a layover between like hallucinogenic specifically and Are you addicts. religious. Eh, you know, I, I have my own spirituality. <laughs> like I believe okay. in a God. I, I believe in the idea of God, but I think that every religion has its own, you know, applicable. So, like, goods. so do you ever conflict? Sure. Uh, do you ever conflict with the parts of AA that are so heavily based upon like Christianity? Yeah. And there's, Oh, I just jumped on my keyboard. Am I still here? Yeah, no, you're, yeah, you're still here. here. <laughs> okay. um, yes. So there's actually groups specifically for people that are atheists. And there's groups for people that aren't necessarily, you know, directly religious in the normal ways. And actually in yeah. like the AA doctorate, it says that they're not associated with any denomination, sect or organization. So mm -hmm. if it is, you know, being forced down your throat from the religious aspect, they're not staying true to the actual, you know, rules to the yeah, principles. Fair, fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I just know that it's you know, you know the, the guy who like founded AA. That was a big part of it for him, clearly. Right, because I, it I know was the, the higher the power group. part where they're like, it can be whatever god you want, but like it's got to be a higher power. Like you have to turn yourself over. Isn't, isn't that right? Right. Isn't that right. So the idea of AA, it basically yeah, they you get took an Oxford group, which was a religious group that tried to get people forcibly sober. This was during the you know, like <laughs> alcohol prohibition era. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a temperance movement that was basically fully religious. Like you had to believe in God. You had to surrender to the idea of like the Catholic or whatever, the Baptist God. And then you could join the group. But they took that Oxford principle and consulted with like Freud and some other like the really big uh, psychologist back then and kind of came to the idea of AA that's like you have to believe in something that's not yourself. That's the main thing. Because mm -hmm. like you yourself are powerless over whatever substance you're consuming. So the idea of God kind of comes in for people that can't find a power that is not themselves, that is not, you know, directly God or religious. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like for people that can't find their own spiritual principles or spiritual idea, they just kind of put God in the place because it's easiest for them to understand, if that makes sense. Yeah, so it's, I, it makes, it makes I'm not sense, completely making sense. You have to choose something above yourself, but not necessarily God. So yes. I could go into AA and be like, I turn myself over to Andrew Tate, right? He just, I mean, you know, if you're Tyler, God, you're, you're, you're God. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty <laughs> alpha move. You can only do that if you really mean it though. Like, like, yeah. like if, if, oh, if, 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 if I'm running to AA, no, no, no. If I see you over by the complimentary donuts and coffee in the back, which, by the way, are at the end of the meeting, the end <laughs> of the meeting, okay? You're not the boss of me, Andrew Tate is. Okay, you've had three donuts, sir, okay? Like, calm down. You brought your own coffee cup, all right? Is it like Yeti? Fucking asshole over here. You're you're half filling up your coffee. Like your came here to rent a Bugatti. That's How many sugar something? packets are in your pocket, you piece of shit? Like, no, I just you find that I drugs? get what I I find that I get what I need out of this in the first forty-five to fifty seconds. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, fucking too. guy. I don't even think he drinks. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> He's here for have, free donuts. He just been... bounced over from Overeaters Anonymous. <laughs> He's eating our shit. <laughs> You ever you seen somebody do... come in a restaurant oh. and actually scoop like tons of the like the complimentary stuff that's for customers, straws, ketchup, sugars, salts, creamers, shit like that? My dad. You know what would be fun? It'd be fun to go to Overeaters Anonymous, claim that you're like 18 months sober, but not lose a fucking pound. <laughs> Just like, that sounds like a like uh, Richard I've been killing there. it. I haven't eaten too much in a year and a half. <laughs> you, just, you, just go, you just go to Overeaters Anonymous when you're feeling down on yourself. Or if you're heavy, go to the bulimia place and tell them how you defeated it. Have these really inspiring <laughs> speeches where you're in front of everybody and you're like, I weighed a hundred pounds <laughs> and then you start going off about like 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 how you beat it by the end they're gonna be crying yeah it's gonna be like theoden on the fucking oh rattling the spears it was the terrible i am i was gut i was having sex seven times a week with a different person every night no, bulimia then you're not a you're not a woman either you're not a bulimic woman a bulimic man you I also feel like overeaters and not right. to be the easiest one to like fake. Like you go into AA yeah. drunk, everyone's like, "Oh, he's shit faced." 
you go into fucking AA, like or is anonymous that like what busting out the scale, like, oh, you gained three pounds this week. We gotta test it to make sure you're actually committed. Easiest yeah. to fake in the short term. Like I can I get drunk true. today and show up at AA tomorrow acting like a superstar. That but I, I I can't overeat. What a Mac. huge waste of your time to show up for these meetings <laughs> today, <laughs> today. When you yeah, don't drunk. need to. When you don't need to show up for them. You know, I imagine there's no way culture. to show up to an AA meeting drunk. They bet they had to have noses and like eyes for it, like hound dogs. Like, hey, you, yeah. you're alone. <laughs> you had two beers earlier, didn't you? Right. I can tell. I don't think had it with plenty upon. of mentally ill people. They would think you were among them. I don't right. drink much at all. I'm sure I haven't had anything since like summertime. I should just show up and ask for chips. I need a six month <laughs> chip. <laughs> there's there's principles weird. within the program that are good for everyone. <laughs> like, there's stuff you can apply to like better your daily life, especially for someone who's not motivated or doesn't have like, you know, an active set of something you're trying to achieve of like goals. There is sets of the program that are like really good for inspiring people and motivating people that were gutter, you know, bottom of the floor drunks. Mm -hmm. So they are applicable to a lot of other areas of life, but it would be a huge, it would literally pretty much be torture going to one of those meetings, not being an alcoholic. <laughs> what it It'd Woody, I'm sure you you mentioned him earlier, Andrew Tate. I I'm sure mm. you were excited to hear that they took his cars. Top G. I did see that. Yeah. Uh, we'll see where this goes. He's beaten this same charge before, I think, in England, mm. and he did it again in Romania. And, and what he does, if the accusations are true, is he lures these women over by sort of saying like he'd like to be their boyfriend. We're going to do this thing, and then once they get there. He's really not the boyfriend, and he's just using them to make money on OnlyFans. By the way, I want to circle back to how much he makes at Hustler University. So these girls, for some reason, feel trapped. I don't know. And it's human trafficking, and I think he's charged with rape now, too. I don't know. And um, there's six of them, like six women in a room, producing OnlyFans content for Andrew Tate. And I guess that's illegal. What, he wasn't bragged. He in the U.S.? Like just very mm. recently like what why, why may didn't have we, been why didn't we arrest him for this stuff if like he was wanted you know uh, like heck when did that i don't think he's wanted happen? for it here he's wanted in romania for maybe it. it's because he's oh. doing it in romania he bragged that he was paying off romanian policemen and he bragged that you know he, he went to romania that's not hard because you can get it <laughs> away with it there well it i guess don't talk shit about romania <laughs> some people say that's what did him in like you know they, he's super popular with the people under him but the people over him you know, he sort of flaunts his success in their face and they stomped him down. That people say that. So I don't know. Um, well, who are the people oh, over him? Do you, like, what, like what do government you and officials and stuff like that? You know, he's bragging, oh. Oh, I got the police in my pocket. They're nothing to me. And they're like, oh, you think so? They're like, oh, well, this is a bad look for us proud Romanians. Shut this down. <laughs> or whatever. So Hustler University, he charges 50 bucks a month. And in Hustler University, they teach you how to be a Sigma male. They you know to work out, exercise, and make money. You make money doing things like crypto investing, um, drop shipping, you know, the internet stuff. But there were some other ones too, like online copywriting and logo designing for companies, things I don't usually hear about. And they just encourage these people to go online and make online businesses and stuff like that. Cool. Uh it's uh Zach just said it's 150 a month, but I'm sure I just read it was 50 a month. And I also am sure I just read he had 200,000 people. I did the math three times before I confirmed that's $10 million a month in revenue for <laughs> online advice. Wasn't it a Discord server? Yeah. At its core? Yeah. So he's not even hosting. <laughs> I know. Of course, of course, he delegates that. He's got staff. He has teachers and stuff. Sure. I'm, I'm sure they lack Tate's charisma, but they're supposed to be subject matter experts in the various things they're teaching you, like logo creation. I, I, don't, I wouldn't know how to do that. I couldn't begin to do that. It's not my skill set. But um, uh, when I heard it was $10 million a month, I don't know what his expenses are, but it would shock me to learn it was more than 20%. It would yeah. shock me to learn that he wasn't bringing home gross 800 or eight, eight million eight a million. month. Yeah, right. and and uh, yeah. from that from that part of uh, of like, it makes me wonder know, why he did the only thing. Well, what's could his overhead? Cars well, and manacles. Maybe the only he has other more. he has professors that work for him. I think he started with the only fans, did he not? He started with like cam sites, so assumably like he snowballed from the cam sites into social media. He should have stopped doing all cam site stuff once he got the social media image thing. But well, it sounds we like don't he know. That's what I was I like, telling my wife. I, I, I was like, details. you can't get by on eight million a month. You can't like <laughs> to reduce your criminal exposure. 
See, I need details. Like, like, okay. like all this is so vague. I need to know how many girls and what exactly did they say, and I need to hear his side of it because this is all I hear. Are these I hear charges, and charges are so vague. Like you don't you, you don't know how credible they are. At, uh, every charge at is all. credible, Kyle. Trust me, I know this. And every time, <laughs> like, like going back to all the celebrity, all the celebrity Me Too cases, for example, the ones right. that that were like obvious, the yeah. ones that were a little gray, and the ones that were like Aziz and Sorry, where it was like, what the fuck? Yeah, you know, like like at first you heard charges. Or like, mm-hmm. or uh, accusation. Then there were like the ones like Aziz or uh, Harvey Weinstein. Like, it's like we get, uh, these are hardworking Bill American Cosby. media. Or, or some of them were guilty but very talented, so we forgave them. Like Kevin Spacey. Do you know how many lessons I learned that made me a better Kevin. man from the Cosby Show? <laughs> you speak so for many. yourself. He's a great House man. of Cards was ruined. <laughs> It was mm-hmm. ruined. I wanted to ask one more thing about that, because I know you, uh, Josh, you do Strain Central. You do a lot of uh, weed cannabis content. And now I was checking before the show, you do like the alternative stuff. So that'll be fun when we do the ad read. We can talk about that a bit. <laughs> uh, how do AA and NA respond to that? Is is their take kind of like, well, weed's not your problem. So we're not that's not our our bag. You're yeah. here for something else. I think there's there's boundaries that I've set and maintain. And then also it's just in like you read a set of rules, right? And there's traditions that are surrounding. And in the tradition that says that our, our main purpose and our main core is to uh, specifically for AA abstain from alcohol. Mm-hmm. We're there to not drink. So our common purpose is to not drink. And that's usually anything regarding cannabis or even medication at that is an outside issue. So Mm -hmm. like if it was in NA and I was going to NA meetings and I wasn't like talking about it or didn't say anything about it. And I think the same would be with AA. Like if I didn't talk about it with people and wasn't open about the fact that I use it like Mm -hmm. a medicine, um, I'd be hiding something. So there's like little lies that end up being told and like it's a program regarding truthfulness. So it kind of just comes down to like being true with how I use it and everything Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Um, there's definitely some old heads that have 10 years that are like, you know, you're not sober, you're smoking weed. So you're not sober. And I respect their view, but it's, it's one of those things that weed I've learned will not kill me. It might make me lazy. It might affect my drive you and should, stuff like that. When they mm-hmm. do that, you should call them out for drinking coffee. <laughs> right. Ooh. Ooh. Six Caffeine's a drug too, day. you fucking bigot. Always drive yeah. that. People hate being called a bigot. Right. It's vague. Well, I mean, and then I would feel like I had sure. blue hair and I was on Twitter if I was dropping words like big. <laughs> yeah. No, no, <laughs> what like, you do awesome. is you make a burner account on Twitter as them. You say something <laughs> racist. You screenshot your burner account and send it to Our fans employer. are all going to retweet it. It'll be good. And, and that's how activism is done. <laughs> that's, and yeah, that's, and that's it, uh, activism. And that's did, politics. <laughs> did you say before that you're playing Tarkov? Oh, yeah. So I'm uh, I'm on my fifth wipe. And I technically missed last wipe. But I'm probably 40 or so hours into the wipe even in these like four or five days, but like 10 plus hours in a day. 40 hours of two days. Yeah. (laughs) No, it's been three. It's been three (laughs) or four. We're on day four, I think. (laughs) Nice. What level are you? Uh, I just hit, I think, either 18 or 19, but I haven't been tasking as much as I have, just like scav looting, trying to get that tat, like uh, loot as full as I can. Yeah, it's uh, they added a lot of stuff. The audio is all jacked up. Um, performance so issues are everywhere. But um, I've always I'm I'm used to the audio being bad, and I've got an expensive PC, so I'm having a, just a great time. They Can added a, freeze? yeah, I don't okay. know. I, I I've been tasking. Nice. Um, they added a pistol to the game, a five shot revolver that shoots the Ash twelve ammo, that 50, uh, 50 caliber ammo. And uh, if you have the right ammo, it one taps people to the chest, even with level four ammo or level, level four uh, vests. Right. And uh, sometimes it'll one tap a level five vest. So I put a fucking sniper scope on that bitch and I'm just <laughs> walking around with it, just having a ball. Do you find it hard it, to aim? That No. It doesn't. No, like, I can, what is it called? Uh, Idle sway too much or any of that? No, it's, it's the steadiest thing I've. It's 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 like a rock. I can I, I can snipe right. people at hundred meters with it. It's incredible. It's, it's incredible. one of the meadow guns for sure right now. It's that, and people are also running that new like Russian SMG. Yeah, it kind of looks like the, an MP7. Trent two yeah. is real nice. It's like a valve. It's a lot like the valve. It, I get both both uh, suffer from you know ammo shortage though. But the right. the nice thing about the revolver is I'll pay any price for that ammo. I'll pay two or three thousand rubles a shot because it's a five shot revolver, and I keep the rest of the ammo in my gamma. I just drag nice. the bullets into it. So you're never losing chunks of ammo. So you can spend 20, 30,000 
rubles a shot. I don't care. Or whatever it is, because it one taps people. It's incredible. Right. That's how the three six six if you it's run two thousand a it, shot. Is that's pretty much the exact same. Like I've never ran the little VPO in that game, which is the single shot sniper. Because it's 366 ammo. That's like airsoft ammo, basically. But if you throw the AP rounds in it, it pens through level four. And it's a single shot through level four, even thorax. So I'm just running around with a four shot, basically airsoft gun that has AP rounds in it. <laughs> yeah, I've been playing way too much. Um, uh, I, I saw this the other day. I saw a Navy uh, advertisement. And uh, I always pay attention to military advertisements <laughs> because they're they're advertising towards, you know, 16 17 18 19 year olds yeah. trying to get them to sign their life over right. to the armed forces it's a big ask so what do they do to do it so and nice. i you know you go back to thinking like dude that marine corps commercial that 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 zooms up to the to the mountaintop with the marine dress uh uniform guy he's got the saber yep. he's got kind of like in front of his face and it, you know the camera's panning and it's all it's Dude, like, that made Damn. me want to be a marine i remember <laughs> i remember seeing that on tv in like good. the early 2000s and i was like 11 and being like god it's time someday and then like of course not like <laughs> the, Mar <laughs> the marines have the best look out of anybody like they look fucking For sure. slick why well, so this was a navy commercial Who's second best oh looking or like looking like the dress it's, uniform the, the uniform um what do the air force I, I, uniforms look like aren't they pretty good looking or am i i'll be honest i don't i don't know what everybody else mm. wears it's just that the marine corps thing i can just picture it right with that cap and uh and right and, and the, the Matt, can you pull up like a graphic too. of all the different branches of army like outfits lined up yeah. outfits god I want, uniforms I, uh, I think they're called costumes <laughs> all of their costumes <laughs> Oh yeah, I want to be uh, I want to be in the pirate branch <laughs> of the military. Yeah. Do they have ninjas? That's the Coast Guard. <laughs> you can be in the pirate side or the ninja side. <laughs> yeah, Whoever marketed what, for the Marines definitely like the Navy made them. Said. Yeah, yeah. The, the Marines most badass. Cool. You know, we're so tough. We're gonna run the country. Whereas I feel like, all, like even Army is like, eh, you know, they're Army, they're soldiers, and then you have the Navy, which is like. They're just semen. They're, they're what they are. They're, yeah. they're the Navy seals. What they are. The, no, the coolest <laughs> fuckers in the world are in the Navy, and that's what this commercial was. It was showing off like Navy seals or something, and then it You're said, right. "I wanted to get the quote right: adventure without any loading screens." The <laughs> Navy, and I was like, "Damn, damn, that is no like." That is preying on children. Like, I hearken <laughs> back to what FPS Doug said all those years ago. There's no respawn points in RL. You yeah. get lag out there, you're dead. <laughs> what are you thinking? There's no fucking loading There's screens. No loading in the screens. Navy, it's like, oh my God. I mean, it's true. It's true. Uh, all right. Well, it's like, I think that. <laughs> yeah, what is all that? Right. Well, that's that actually not, is a costume. What's going Maybe on find with a parade? Her hair. Maybe find him in a parade. Like, like this looks like where what? I go to wow. the I love that the Navy's a fat chick. What's wrong with our physiques here? <laughs> or is there, aren't there any Damn big, it. juicy, what? jacked men? Air Force is a bad. Yeah, Air Force just looks like they're waiters. That, oh, oh, that's, the Marine. Boom. that's a good one. Case closed. He wins. That's a great one. I, I guess Navy was second. Yeah, yeah. I, really, I was I hoping the, the Navy was, was cool. gonna be I more. Like I was hoping the Navy was gonna be more Captain Crunch esque, <laughs> right? Like, like some of those shoulder pads with the ruffles, <laughs> like, 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 maybe one of those Napoleon like hats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, 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 look. If you're like the 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 head I admiral or whatever, legs. you know, the the admiral of the North Fleet or whatever you may be, I I, I expect you to have some. Some real, you, you should be wearing some cool shit, like like stuff that you wouldn't wear onto a battlefield. You should look fancy. You should be yeah. flashy. You know what like would peacock. actually make the navy cooler is if we took down the American flags and flew like a really violent flag, like a pirate, before we went into attack. So you know how pirates oh. used to do that, and so oh. it'd be like the American, flag the American flags are going down, and now the one with Putin's head decapitated is up there. <laughs> Except we That's wouldn't want to the... go with like we wouldn't go with an actual person. It obviously would be like a skull and cross. Called? Called. Skull and Jolly cross. Roger. Yeah. Jolly, Jolly Roger. Roger. I kept calling it Jolly Rancher, and I'm like, I know that's not it. <laughs> Jolly <laughs> also a delicious thing. <laughs> I like Jolly that. a nice Jolly Roger. That's a good idea. There's a reason yeah. the pirates use that. It's because it was scary. I I think that it's uh, it's signaling that they're gonna take no uh, prisoners. I think Isn't in it, reality, or, or yeah, that they're whatever. offering battle. It's it's like a sign. It's if if you can Skull. see my flag, something's gone terribly wrong in my naval planning. 
Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> if you're that close, it's not ideal. In modern naval battle, yes. Oh, I saw this. Can you imagine like raising like, your flag just show that you're chasing someone? It's like being so confident. It's like <laughs> a mugger being like having a siren. Like, ha, 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 I'm almost there, idiot. Like right behind you. <laughs> right. If it's more than a Somalian pirate, you're making a terrible decision. <laughs> Glad you brought up the Somalian yeah, pirates. No, no I Jolly saw, Rogers on the Somali pirates. I saw a story the other day where the Somalian pirates were were raiding at night. You know, they're going they go up to those tanker ships and stuff. Yeah. They and they see what they think is a juicy tanker ship and they, they go to board this motherfucker. And it's like an Italian naval destroyer. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like everybody on board is like a fucking like ar- navy man, like, yeah. like yeah. seaman. They're armed. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, well, they open up on these Somalis. They, they and, and the Somalis take off into the night. Well, they like this is what they do is track vessels <laughs> at, at night. They've got like radar and so so they. they I saw this story right too, down. Kyle. But they were on pirate patrol. Like they weren't just going, <laughs> That's even they weren't just like going to Africa for some reason or on their way. Better. Yeah, they were out there looking for pirates and the pirates tried to take them down. <laughs> yeah. It <laughs> didn't work out. It didn't work out. They killed one of the pirates. They mm-hmm. captured the rest. Um they they were impressed, they said, because these pirates were out like fifty fucking miles in a in a, like a kind of boat. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, and the what did they see? Bad. Like what what did the Italian boat look like? Like it's a military boat, so it's right. gotta look military ish. They thought it was like a container ship. I guess it's kind of boxy on the top or like, something. Like I've seen that. There's probably millions of dollars of Parmesan in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the They'll nah. ransom the crew the and ransom mozzarella the heist. one of Taylor's <laughs> unpronounceable meats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Be great Sopra heist of. I was gonna say, like, the military is sitting there with night vision, and these guys are on a fucking dinghy. Like, they've been, you know, fifty yeah. miles into that. A couple of rusty so they just AKs. see like a big black thing in front of them. They're like, "This is easy, clap, e money." Yeah, and mm-hmm. just we're doing walk it. up to armed men, <laughs> and then all the Italians are ready with their mustaches and their, their fucking whatever. It would be hilarious with if they successfully. Mustache and, your <laughs> and your greasy hair. I, I want them to successfully hair. see of thieves them right, like board the <laughs> ship and hide in the Fight. mast. Yeah, <laughs> become a, a barrel. Just like eat their food and go back and make them wonder. Like, did somebody hear? Go bail out one of those fucking smallies. Just putting holes in the in the, in the bow. It yeah. also makes me wonder what the actual pirate success rate is. Like, how often do they actually get aboard something and and complete one of their missions? It's like, what does they that do one it try, means. one shot. Yeah, I mean, that's every Thursday are they, too. That's the. It worked. Like, in I'm movie. sure that. Even guys who maybe aren't the smartest cookie in the bunch it must look at some sort of risk reward analysis when they right. do this, right? They're like, ah, oh, it, it, I'm suck right yeah. now. I'm hungry. I have no job. No one's hiring around here. I have no skills. Those are the people risking it to become pirates. Yeah, yeah, probably. So. Yeah, risk it for the biscuit if you want to be the best pirate. And you, <laughs> there's a path. You gotta be the sweetest like- cookie in the jar. <laughs> you gotta be you gotta be the sharpest the crown in the box. <laughs> <laughs> the smart cookie is a thing, and then the smart cookie in the box is not really Yeah, a thing. <laughs> yeah I, I mean the only time I've ever heard of fucking Somali pirates really bringing home a W is that Tom Hanks movie. <laughs> right. like you you never hear about a real story of like man the Somalis they they got on the fucking Mona Lisa ship dude they it's gone we don't know they, where it is just, <laughs> I don't know why, why they, they were they were they were doing their traditional tour thirteen miles off the coast of the Horn of Africa <laughs> that's just what they do they like to go to the stateless you know nation of Somali Somalia where there's you know no government and pirates Kyle I have been trying to play Tarkov. So hard. Oh, your poor I, PC's still fucked. Uh, well, the 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 blows, core man. problem is my incompetence. I, I am trying. I well, for people that don't know, my computer's like over time would freeze. I just come back and it would have like the the screen on it with a time that's not real. Like, oh look, a day and a half ago at four a.m. That's when it froze. That's not what time it is now. Yeah, and that was happening for a while, and I kind of just re- reboot it and use it. It was cool. I bought what was the game we were looking at? Dark Tide. Is that right? Dark Tide. And I had all these issues while I played indicative of a bad GPU. Like I was getting a lot of graphical anomalies. Anomalies. Anomalies, I think. And uh, my other monitors were like blinking red and green and blue and stuff like that. Yeah, that's weird. I Googled the symptoms and it's, oh, and the game was crashing a lot. And so that's a GPU problem. So it's like, all right, I buy a 480. Cool, cool. 
plug that in. It doesn't change the symptoms. And then I like, I had this issue where it wasn't booting anymore. I had to like boot in safe mode, uninstall the graphics driver and like get it to boot again, all these troubles. And eventually it won't boot at all. Or if it does, it's super slow, like on the order of more than 20 minutes. So I think it's the motherboard. That the, after Googling, the motherboard is giving a code. I think it was AA. And that says it's a uh, bad motherboard. Okay, cool. Yeah. We have a subject matter expert in the PKA Hangout. He writes device drivers. And if you're not a computer programmer, that's a uh, code for he is like an alpha computer programmer. He's a subject He's the nitty gritty nuts and bolts guy. He's, the, he's a guy who would know. And he's like, look, I see how it's pointing to the motherboard. I get that. But I'm also very experienced. It's always RAM. It's always RAM. So I was like, fuck it. For $100, I'll buy some RAM. I plug that in. It doesn't fix it. So now I have to swap the motherboard, which is pretty much building a new PC. Like, it, <laughs> And I have a case well, What is here. that? I'm sorry. I'm a new. What is so that So the entail? motherboard like, is the thing you... that has the CPU seated inside of it. Right. It's the it's the thing. It's, it's, it's the it's middle the that everything connects to. Car. It's mounted so you have to take apart everything to get to this. Basically. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. the chassis case. of the car. Everything okay. has to come Engine off mounts of the to it. The body mounts to it. Everything plugs into the Thank motherboard. Thank you. That helps it's, me. It's the big circuit looking thing that everything plugs into thing. so uh I, I have a pc i'm not using so i was like i'll put the motherboard in that case it has an upgraded psu i'll use that and uh i start pushing everything over now i've done this like five or six times before mm-hmm. which is to say like i can do it but it it's certainly not my cup of tea and i haven't done it for like four years or something yeah so you're not sharp yeah, there are a lot of little things to get wrong, and I'm carefully doing it. I spend hours on it, and it won't boot. It acts like it's not getting power, except it is because the motherboard, not the things that plug into the motherboard itself, has like different RGB lights, and they're all lighting pretty. The rainbows, you know, it's like now I'm green, now I'm yellow, now I'm blue. Like clearly, you're getting power, but when I press the power button, it's not responsive. There is a power button on the motherboard, which you would think would bypass like my shitty Everything. wiring if that mm-hmm. was it. Yeah. But it's not responsive either. Like, what's, what, is, what's, what are you getting to your monitors? Yeah. Again, not responsive. Like it's as if I never pressed the power button. <laughs> like, 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 right. Um, th- have you tried plugging the monitors into different um, ports on the, on the, uh, the PC? Uh, because it'll, been... it'll reset. It might go back to the um, the like primary ones. That I you... could play with that, but I'll remind you. Like, I mean, fan, maybe not right the now. Fans like... don't spin. The the like. Oh, it, it doesn't beep. There's an LED on the motherboard that usually has a bunch of codes could, and stuff. Could it be like a lemon not situation, like the way yeah. cars are sometimes? Could be, but Just now what? You're getting lighting I, does not mean no, you're getting like connected. No, no you, you don't think so, Kyle. The it reason wouldn't... you get lemon sometimes is because they cars have multiple computers in them talking to one another, and it can be so difficult to, to track down the problem. We've got one computer with <laughs> five components, <laughs> you know, like, like, like. We, this isn't rocket science. It's it's barely um, computer science. They, they have to send out a lemon of a PC every once in a while. <laughs> Which part is the lemon though? Like like again, like 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 the motherboard. This seems to be the most important thing, right? I, well, he already, I, he already fixed I, that. I swapped the motherboard. I'm still having problems. I swapped the RAM. I'm still having problems. I, if it was a bad yeah. CPU, I, there's like a light for that. I'm not getting that light. I, I don't. That sucks. Man. Maybe the light's broken. <laughs> I'm deep at it's this point into sunk cost light. fallacy. The cost yeah. being both <laughs> like the, the things I bought and my time. And I'm like, I know I'm just like one switch away yeah. from getting <laughs> this right. <laughs> I, I, I just don't know what switch it is. And it's Can I, get, you, Here's what you need to do. Take it to a PC repair shop in town. Leave it no, with No, don't admit defeat. Kyle's <laughs> <laughs> right, I think. I, I should just walk this thing over. I mean, I'm shocked you didn't just buy a whole new PC when like that one broke. Because it the sounded to me Hunter like your PC Biden's. broke. It, oh, yeah. The I guy, should have. I, that guy will keep up with it. All right. He'll make sure it stays safe. Yeah. You Wait, leave it with happened? Hunter. I said, leave it with the, Hunter, the Hunter Biden. Biden. <laughs> and then oh, if you forget, yeah. he'll like track you down and give it to the news. <laughs> and then you'll be able display. to find it easy. Yeah. <laughs> as long as it's working if again. Fucking, when... uh, Giuliani will claim oh. to have it. Dude, I'm like frustrated on your behalf because I fucking hate this kind oh. of shit where stuff just doesn't fucking work. <laughs> and meanwhile, and you that... and you go through the list and you watch the YouTube videos. And the worst oh. is when you watch YouTube videos to help with something, and then you get like all the way through, you do all the steps. And it doesn't work. And then you go to all the comments and all the comments are like, 
lifesaver, perfect <laughs> as though it was never broken. And it's like, God damn it, fuck! Like, <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Dude, am I, I retarded? I, perhaps. And, and by the way, my work area sucks. I'm working on the floor behind me in a shag carpet. <laughs> 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 Drop a little of those tidy screws. Try it. See if you find it again. Yeah. It's great, it's great yeah. fun. I, I've been playing that game all day. Yeah, good luck. You're going to be using then, tape. Yeah. Well, what I, what well, I look, wish I was playing was Tarkov. And, and, and for people who know, the nature of Tarkov, like if you grind like Kyle is, Kyle's ahead of the curve. What level are you? 26 almost 27 right Ooh. i bet when kyle looks at a list of 50 people he's in the top three all the time i've only right? found one person that's at my level see oh, yeah. right so that I've means that when kyle level. enters the raid he's a little wealthier his character is better his character probably experiences less recoil than like a brand new character it runs longer mm -hmm. it carries more shit he's stronger he's faster kind of his recoil is less there's a bunch of things his footsteps are quieter than a new person why because he's ahead of the curve and he gets an advantage and hear it. their footsteps better. right way yeah and he can hear their foot right meanwhile i can search a filing cabinet faster than you i'm in a race and everyone started but me <laughs> I'm, like, I'm there like i can't wait to get to the start line I, I, well uh... one of the benefits that you'll have is we will i will have all the keys by the time oh. that you get there um i I've, I've got be able to help that way yeah the keys are so so they they've slowed they've slowed progression way down yes. for anybody who wants to get into tarkov like but what he's saying is true but everybody's slow because yep. of the the grindy nature of this particular wipe this iteration of tarkov has going to have a, is going to have a very long early wipe uh, cycle they've made very common ammos um, more effective so you don't run out of ammo should i try um, it i have no. friends of mine no. bullying me telling me you don't think i would enjoy it, it? no no you wouldn't enjoy it you need no. to get you need to play a game where you encounter many more gunfights to build your mouse and keyboard skills in tarkov you'll get into one gunfight every 12 minutes and it will be six years before you're clicking on heads yeah. like landmark how much yeah. do you enjoy your life currently <laughs> I, I, think, I think probably too much to, to do. I just I'm not very good at those kind of games. Here's what you can do. There's a bunch of like super casual Tarkov players in our Discord. Go play. There's a, multiple of them are at the very beginning, even though they've been playing for like a week. And mm -hmm. you know they're still at the third quest. They've been playing for a week. You can hop in and play experience. with them, and nobody will give a shit if you lose, and you won't give a shit if you lose. And everybody yeah. there will be will love. To answer Taylor's Tarkov, question. well, I, I so, would never want to. Please, Taylor, let me tell you about Tarkov. I, I would ooh, not. Taylor, want... take a gun. <laughs> ooh, take my guns, Taylor. That, let me. When that's, Kyle that's said one advantage idea. I'm having, I didn't know what he was going to say. It turned out to be keys. I thought he was going to say, "You're on YouTube. People will give you money. <laughs> people will. People give you. I can Anti live anymore. stream, they and they'll give me kits. They can't anymore. You, they, yeah, they made. Oh, they could give you kits. They give you kits, yeah. but you they made so many. You know how you used to be able to get no. They that seems kind of silly. You can't transfer from your inventory a, to someone else's. Oh. Here's the problem. I'll do it real quick. There's uh, real money transactions fuel oh. the um, the the coding that's required to make smart cheats. So what somebody does is they make a good cheat. Now they can dominate in Tarkov and accrue lots of valuable items. Now they can go online sell those valuable items for real world money, dollars. Mm -hmm. And that person comes in and they, they're able to they used to be able to just drop cases full of money and valuable items and everything. And now you can't do that anymore because they've limited the things that you can take into a raid and then drop. It says you can't drop this. Try again, motherfucker, and we'll delete it. Making oh, it harder sorry. for <laughs> cheaters to sell in-game items for real life money. Yeah. Kyle, yeah. by the way, that was really concise and well stated. I so, so something that skill I, set of yours. Something I don't like about like Tarkov, like that that form of game is like I will never, like, if I started now, like, I need a new PC first, got to order that, but do that, and I start playing, I will never be good enough to play with Kyle and his friends and Woody. Like, you guys are way too good for me. I'll never catch up. Whereas, like, a, a, like I just pick Age of Empires because that's what I'm playing right now. You Like, you could jump in and play that, and I could teach you because it's, like, those one-off mm -hmm. games. Something like Tarkov is, like, I, I frankly, like, I would not want to play with Kyle and his group. Not that I would be invited I because so I would be like, like I, I would be worried. Like I'm going to cause some, I'm going to fuck up no, no, no. and I'm right. going to cause some, I'm going to cost somebody you, you six hours of their time. No, 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 no. So that's what I'm saying, dude. Like, like I play by myself. I don't play with anybody. I've played this whole wipe solo, but there's a group of guys in there who are brand new 
and they're t- they're they're not taking the game seriously at all. Is what I'm saying. You yeah, can just like jump in there. Seriously. You can just jump in there with them and go. Look, there are silly ways to play that game that you could be good at. You could be an extract camper. You could <laughs> wait at the part at the little pl- the What's door where everybody. All right, so escape from Tarkov, right? You have to escape these raids. You go into the raid with all these valuable items that you bring. You push O on your keyboard. And it's, it gives you a list of places that you'll need to extract from in the in the next forty five minutes, okay. or you're fucked. You got to get out. If you if you just if you don't extract in the forty five minutes, you just die. Like everything dying. you brought you in just is lost. Lose everything. You. Okay. You might as well have died. It's worse. So than so there's a list, a very short list of locations where people will extract. Usually just two primary ones on a map like Interchange. You can just go there and wait in the bushes with grenades or an overpowered gun that's strong up close but not far. Or the opposite. You can use a sniper rifle and aim at the spot where people are going to be from a distance. And you can extract camp them. And so they'll go in there. They'll fight tooth and nail. I like the sound of this. <laughs> and, and, and here's the thing. it when, when it happens to people, they are incredibly upset about it. Okay? They are salty. And you know that you've ruined their time because they just spent 30 minutes working hard and <laughs> yeah. they achieved something. You, when you do it, you'll loot them and you'll see, you'll get a, a, an idea of what they just did because their uh-huh. loot tells a story. <laughs> In there will be another man's helmet and another man's medical device. You can tell that, that there's like two classes of meds. Oh, mm-hmm. this is somebody else's shit. <laughs> you'll see another guy's gun. Then you'll see another mm-hmm. guy's like dog tags and, and the dog tags will tell a little story. Jim was killed by Bob. Looks like Bob right here, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and so the I avenged you, Jim. <laughs> the extract rate in Tarkov is probably around like forty five percent. That'd be like a goodish, typical, and reasonable. So most of the time, oh. you don't get out. If you're extract camping, <laughs> these people were crossing the finish line. These people did it. It's one of those raids that went well for them. They've got a backpack full of loot. They're happy as can be. They're sprinting and dancing Not and hopping that. to the extract. <laughs> and then there's you, the Grinch that stole it. <laughs> there's me. one more thing. One more thing. <laughs> there, are quests, there are quests that require you to go to a place, do a hard thing, and then get out. They've already done the hard thing. Yep. They just have to walk out. But if you kill them, they got to come back again and do a hard thing again. Do and I then... have to do the hard thing if I steal their no, stuff? No, you still have to do it. You don't have to do any hard things if you don't want to, but <laughs> but if you want to progress through the game and like do No, the no, no. Or... But when if I extract camp someone, can they hear me in voice chat? Uh, if you like want them to, seconds. yeah. Now that, yeah, yeah, now, now, now that is them. tempting. Uh, it's basically like sitting at the end of a bike race, watching the winner coming across the finish line, and then sticking your foot out as the bicyclist like flips forward over their yeah, handlebars. And then you get on their bike and you win the race. Exactly. <laughs> if you want to play, That's you hilarious. could buy the cheap version of the game. You could get in there with the boys, and y'all could go five men deep and extract camp and you'll have a blast you'll have yeah. a fucking blast now what's the you said the success rate on actually extracting is less than 50 percent, which surprised i did not realize it was that fucking hard so extract camping has got to be unbelievably common like every time people are going to extract they have Very to be rare. like all right let's wait wh- well you you always pucker up when you when you <laughs> yeah. go but because of the one time that it happened and it hurt so bad but but i look i've played a lot obviously i've a lot yeah. And um, I, I don't think I've been extract camped. Reserve. I don't think I've been extract camped D2. once. I've gone through D two maybe five times. Um, <clears> Why wouldn't you do it? It seems like, like an easy. Get in, way to it's incredibly boring. You're in there a long time. That's, and yeah. And, and I'm coming for you. I like look. I'm checking every corner when I come. Like if I'm coming into D two, you better be good. If I, I, I'm coming. You know, I got grenades. I've got a good gun. I've got. I'm stacked. Like you're, in, you're gonna be in trouble if you're not good. Um, right. so you're not always successful unless you have something overpowered, like an impact grenade, which are rare, or or something like that. I got a grenade launcher now, by the way, Woody. Fuck, I got a fucking yeah, under barrel grenade one? launcher. Yeah. Yes, for the AK. It's it's nice. cool. I've uh, I've seen it on Twitch. Of course, I haven't tried it. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. man. Um, I don't want to talk anymore Tarkov, but but um, mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I'm I am absorbed into it a hundred percent. I've been playing it. Um, Good. I am engaged in an automobile base where I watched all my competitors drive away. <laughs> you'll you'll be there before you know it. What do you believe? You gotta believe. Uh, Zach gave me a good link. Tonight. Thank you for that. I'll check it out in detail off the show, but for fixing my PC. Have you guys seen the um the Top Gun movie yet? I'm going to watch it tonight. I still like, haven't I got, seen it. No, I, I, I read that it was the second most profitable or second most like highest selling movie of 22. 
Yeah, it, it's incredibly highly rated, and I saw that it was on Paramount now, and I, I have that yeah. channel. So Dude, I'm gonna, Gen I'm gonna Xers watch it fucking love it. Every Gen Xer uh, I know, like, organically brought up to me, like, you saw Top Gun? I'm like, no. <laughs> and they're like, oh, well, I was born in 1975, and I fucking saw it. I love it. Like, it's like, okay. Maybe I should watch it. That's me. You dude. should. You're, you're two years off, it. but I'm yeah. out. <laughs> but, basically like, describing me. Top, <laughs> Are there any more homoerotic volleyball scenes? Just, just, just asking <laughs> for a friend. You, Gen Triple X loves it. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Cruise might be the best spokesman uh, in the world. Like, like He's so... He's so cool and good at everything he does. He makes me think, like, shit, maybe they're on to something with that Scientology, right? Like, like the guy never rages. Uh, not mm-hmm. really. Not at the, nor, not at the yeah. normal human rate. One like, of the religions like has to be right, right? It's a numbers game. I love True. that he's, he's, like, gone into his Tony Hawk phase in, late, in his late life. Like, when he was in his 20s, he wasn't jumping off buildings. He was dancing in his underwear, right? So now he's in his 40s and 50s, and he's he's, like, Riding yeah. motorcycles with no helmet, fast what a like maniac, standing like, on airplanes. His risk profile got even worse as he aged. I yeah. actually, I think maybe Tom and I are onto something here. We're, we're risking. Yes, less. as a billionaire so movie too. star, though. <laughs> like, 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 like. And I bet he, he wanted. If Tom Cruise dies right now, he lived a better life than anybody else I can think of. Look, Le- Leonardo cool DiCaprio. Life. Leonardo DiCaprio has the greatest life that's ever been lived by. He's top ten lives ever lived by men. Did you see his new girlfriend? <laughs> no, but I can imagine. But oh his his God. system is hilarious. <laughs> she's like when she's like twenty four and ten months. He's like Zach, show like us pushing uh, her out of a Leo's movie girl. Car. <laughs> like, like, get the hell out of here! I want the picture right? of them on the boat. Uh, show me the picture of Leo and the girl on the boat. Leo doesn't have a shirt on. No other pictures. Full management that, team specifically for next in line girlfriends. Like, ah, no, we <laughs> yeah. got to get her moved out. Get the next right. one. In. Yeah. I like the idea that that his like her girlfriend's twenty one. So they're looking at like. I don't know, 16 year olds who will be ready when she turns yeah. 25. Uh, she's ripening. Her womb <laughs> ripens, my lord. <laughs> There's some high school junior. They're like, you're going to be Leo's girlfriend when you're 21. Yeah. And with the he first got- overall pick <laughs> College of scouting. the 2004 Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> new girlfriend draft. <laughs> like Susie Q. <laughs> Put her on the, the number three the draft pick. You'd have to wait. <laughs> Put Dude, her in Kyle, the minor leagues saw... for a while while she seasons. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah. Look look at look at his <laughs> look body. At him, that's just right? that's great. That's the body that's the one who, who doesn't pod. care. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, he's Elon Musking that workout. Schedule. Look at look at like that is an affluent lack of muscle. <laughs> like, like right? that, there's a level of affluence it takes to get pussy in that sort of, Taylor, of Taylor, body. I bet he's got gout. <laughs> I bet he, he's got like that. Yeah, he's eating fucking uh, organ meats like Bobby Dude. Hill. He gets gout. <laughs> yeah. the, the confidence, confidence that he years. has blows me away. Look, he's <laughs> getting a hand job right now. <laughs> this guy's all. I love Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio. I, I like wish I were under twenty five. Leonardo, <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio is it has lived a way better life than Tom. Uh, although, although, although Tom has enjoyed his life more than Leo. That's the difference. Uh, I think because I would Tom, say that means I've never seen Tom. Tom I've never. I, I'm listening. Remember when that guy squirted water on Tom at the at the premiere? Remember that 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 like piece of shit went squ- like squirted him in the face? No, and he no, I, he, he, he was I'm he was like back. he was like no 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 don't hurt him don't hurt him come 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 here <laughs> what's your problem why'd you do that why'd you squirt me with the water what's wrong with you that's a jerk thing to do that's a jerk thing to do you're a jerk and like <laughs> and it was like ah oh, he really called him out he didn't let him like run away into the crowd or be drug away he like shamed him in front. That's of a good everyone. way to handle that I've never seen yeah. that clip. So what's yeah. wrong with you? Emotional warfare. I like it. It's way better yeah. than what Dana White. No, does. what I'm saying, like, what I meant was like that's the only time I've ever seen Tom Cruise look sad or upset about mm. anything. He's always no. so goddamn happy. His big like embarrassing moment was him being too happy and celebrating by jumping on a couch one time. That's <laughs> yeah. the thing people bring up. Oh, remember, you see when Tom Thanks, Cruise Oprah. lost his mind? He was really happy. Yeah, oh, yeah I've so never been that happy enough to jump on a couch. Yeah, I don't know. Are you a world famous, good looking millionaire who's in incredible shape? Dates a different twenty five year old every five years that's set up by the religion that you own. No, you aren't. Well, I guess not. You won't ever jump on a couch, then you piece of shit. Tom was yeah. happy. You won't ever jump on a couch on fucking Oprah or whatever in absolute <laughs> jubilation. <laughs> like, yeah, when you go on it. Oprah, make sure you keep them fucking uh, yeah. shoes on the floor, dude. <laughs> let, let, let's see. I, I'll jump on the couch too if she has me on her fucking show. Jesus. <laughs> I don't take it over by Zenu or whatever. Yeah, that's actually no, that's all that Zenu shit. Lord, is no, it's Lord Zenu. Yeah, 
It's Lord Xenu. Thank you. Um, no, I mean, I was making sure that you didn't think Xenu was a planet. Xenu's a you guy. Know, one thing I know is one thing I'm I'm a little confused about. I'd love to get clarification on this. Is Xenu merely imprisoned? Like, is Xenu out there, like imprisoned, potentially to be unleashed back upon the 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 the, the galaxy? Because I I don't remember if I know he was like overthrown and he was either imprisoned or 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 laid low. Oh, but I don't Xenu remember bad. which. They'll be like, we, they the can tell guy. you. So okay, so, so I thought he was a Scientology god. Who's got so let okay, so so here's science here's here's Scientology. I'm gonna lay it out as quickly as I can. <laughs> um South Park can also do this for you really well with animation. I'm gonna skip some stuff because it's silly made up stuff. First of all, you need to know that L. Ron Hubbard was a science fiction writer, an unsuccessful one up until Scientology. Um Dianetics, I believe, something like that is the name of the yeah, book. No, he's super um, the idea is that this galactic ruler, he ruled over the entire galaxy, many star systems, um, named Xenu, uh, had an overpopulation problem. Too many people. Like, like can't, support the, can't support this population problem. And so he took huge swabs of the population, and he like liquidated them and took their souls out, and um, he, he threw them into volcanoes on Earth. He flew them to Earth in these spaceships that looked like DC-10s, as he described it. <laughs> Uh, a plane of his time, so it makes sense <laughs> that he that L. Ron Hubbard would use that to describe. Yeah, he couldn't compare and, it to a plane of the future. <laughs> and, and no, of course not. He doesn't know about that stuff. Um, and and, and they, they so they fly the souls to Earth. Um, they no, they fly the bodies to Earth. They drop in the volcano. The souls ride, rise up, and I think they brainwashed the people on the spaceship first to let um and, and made them all crazy with some sort of like visual stimuli. But then their 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 souls rose out of the volcanoes, all the all the aliens that were thrown into Earth's volcanoes, and those souls flew into early man, our ancestors, our ancient and and, and those are body thetans. Those are the sources of all of our psychological ill and many of our physi physiological ills. So you got depression, fucking body thetan, man. That's some depressed ass alien soul infesting your body. Mm -hmm. And we can purify you of that. So like they're going through those levels, like, like um, trying to purify the body thetans out of themselves. And you don't learn. And, and look, I got some of that wrong and some of it's like bef yeah. horse before the cart. But the point is, it's all wackadoo made up like sci-fi shit. And it's not very it, original. And like, it's not very good. Sci so Star Trek is so much more original than all that <laughs> nonsense that, that L. Ron. He's a bad science fiction writer. If, if Gene Roddenberry had a religion... Man, I might have already altered my ears to <laughs> twenty or some shit, thinking I was gonna get to go up on Vulcan and live up there, living logically for the rest of my of eternity. He could have hooked me, but this was a bad science fiction writer, so none of it makes sense. The problem is you don't learn any of that made up non nonsense gobbledygook until who knows what a celebrity pays in because there's there's special scenario. But let's just say that like you're a businessman. Let's say you're a, like a, a respected businessman who, yeah, we'd like him amongst us. You know, he'd be a respected member. He's He's cut from the same cloth, but like the amount of money that you'd have to contribute might be a quarter million, a half million dollars, like a meaningful amount of money in your mm -hmm. world, like a, like huge to you before you find. And it's been in fifty thousand dollar, hundred thousand dollar chunks, maybe or maybe smaller to begin with. You, you've you RPG this shit up to the end. And now you've been told about Xenu at mm -hmm. Leah. I'm, I might butcher Leah, Leah Romini, the king of described, queen's wife. Yeah, yeah. She talked about her mother is like super into science. She was like one of the inner group she knew about xenu and i guess there's like this ceremony when you're like oc 10 or whatever the fuck um where you go in and you like they, they let you in on some of that crazy shit and like she came out and she was like what the fuck and her mom is like can you believe it can you believe it and she's like no no i can't <laughs> no i literally it. cannot <laughs> yeah so um scientology is an evil thing um but i feel allegedly, like you do believe it you become Tom Cruise. So there is some credibility. No, 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 no. That no, is no, a catch 22. No. <laughs> no, if you do believe it, you end up in Florida as an unpaid intern living in an unair conditioned trailer working as a slave. Cause that's no, allegedly, Tom allegedly in yard. Minecraft, allegedly <laughs> in Minecraft, that very litigious group. Um, yeah. They're very litigious. Sort of let's, let's, let's keep, uh, <laughs> let's keep respect. I felt that Tom mouths. Cruise is actually really <laughs> logical in his Scientology that for him, it's a good deal. Right. And you would think Scientology is terrible. They take all your money. They make you work for them, et cetera. But if Not you're Tom, Tom Cruise? Cruise, no, he gets free landscaping and bitches. And who knows <laughs> you see him with that metal? You see when they gave him the metal? They get no. medals? Oh, so, no. so there's a video. 
there's a video. Oh, maybe I'm gonna get this a little bit wrong again, but but like it's, it's the, at a metal give it's a, a Scientology, it's at a Scientology metal giving ceremony. That's all that matters. That's and fun. there is the other and religions it looks, don't have that. It looks like a televangelist situation where you've got a massive group of, of churchgoers and a big stage and and like uh, a podium, and it's Tom Cruise and it's like the guy. Um who's the guy I who had, runs Scientology? Is I've got miscavige uh, in my head. Uh, head like, Doctor Adam Science. Anyway, <laughs> that guy, that guy, and I. One of them's getting the medal, and, and and Tom's like giving this really impassioned speech. I don't know how they let that get out, but mm. uh, it's very creepy. He's fully bought in, I believe, but it mm. has been nothing but a benefit. I, I I think it was in one one of those documentaries I wa I, I watched about Scientology. They were talking about how they like set up and sort of arranged his relationship with um. Who's the girl from Dawson's Creek? Yeah, there he is wearing a <laughs> medal. Is, okay, is it that Katie is... Holmes? Katie Holmes. How, the, how they arranged the whole thing as he was leaving the, the, the Nicole Kidman relationship. How they were like, they're like, oh, yeah, we want a brunette. She needs to be this age, roughly, this skin tone. Um, you know, and they like set the whole thing up, arranged that they would be in the same place and they could go do this and that together. And Tom Cruise isn't really even a part of this. He's like, yeah, I'd love to be set up. And they're like, all right, let's get that. Everybody, come on. It's like that scene in uh, um, I Apollo didn't know 13. About it's like, you, remember, you know, in Apollo 13, when it's like, all right, you got this and you got that. Two things that were never supposed to go together. You got all this horse shit, put it together. And they're like, all right, team, <laughs> engineers. And they, they pulled one of those and like threw Tom Cruise in there with Katie Holmes and made a whole relationship out of it. Did they have kids? I think yeah. they had kids. Didn't they, they did. name it like, I think the kid's name is Rumor. I, 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 think, <laughs> um, I think that's, I think so. Something like that. Rumor. Surrey. 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 Who is Apple? Is Apple so right? Jackson's Siri. Kid? Rumor. Rumor is Bruce Willis's daughter. She's hot <laughs> and, and, as fuck. Yeah. I want. Elon Musk has a kid with a like unpronounceable name that they just call X. Maybe. Yeah, it's like yeah. AEX twelve. It's named after yeah. that big plane. That shit you know sucks. Why? The kid's you gonna have to that... have like a special keyboard. You know why that's his name? <laughs> because 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 now when Elon Musk becomes like su like a like a such a hated individual, his sons his son can just make his name anything now because that's just a placeholder name right like, <laughs> like, he'll be brendan musk eventually he should have we named him even... insert yeah. name here yeah, answer, yeah. Plan that was a grime that's dude, just... I, I, I two things i'm just dying to say one taylor said something that is stuck in my head that that leonardo dicaprio has an affluent lack of muscle mm -hmm. it's like i am fucking up i look poor <laughs> like i am yeah i'm going to fucking you, rock you work in. <laughs> wow uh, go do some roofing you labor about that wow yeah no you oh just you want to be doughy as hell so I people know wow that is a man of up. beans <laughs> <laughs> and the, i saw avatar I, I saw it it was i enjoyed it look i'm gonna i'm gonna i can tell you the plot of avatar and it won't spoil it at all jake sully the main character in the first avatar he sort of repelled their invasion well, they're mad at him, so they're trying to get him. Boom. Now you know everything there is, is to know. Is he still there? Same actor? Yeah. Yeah. Now, it, now, I don't... Here's something I don't remember from the last one. Okay. Originally, they, like, put their brains in that Navi body. Right. Oh, oh, he just never went back. At the very end... What happened to his crippled, like, man body? Mm, they ate it. I want to say they used the magic soul tree to permanently put him in the blue body. Yeah, and oh, uh, in, in, in the first is it, is it weird if you did sex stuff like to your man <laughs> body when you, when you were in your Naboo body? I I'm okay with it. No, the Naboo they don't have penises and vaginas. They have well, their, that's not uh, gay, right? They have the remember because you <laughs> not saw the, gay to do it to uh, your own body, right? The pony. Yeah, but I'll be in my Naboo body. You know, It'll be a little different. <laughs> you know, it won't be like twins. I can cause... finally suck my own dick. <laughs> but it's not even now. It's but with some blue alien mouth, uh, you know, that's some weird. I, I, I get myself this. off, and it looks like I just had a popsicle. Dude, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know what? I I, I love you, my own joke. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> do you think the fur, is the furry community like big into Avatar? Do you think I don't know. I They're not even furry. <laughs> no, 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 think about no, no, but furries. think about what it represents. It represents leaving your human body and going to something that 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 and it actually becoming like that other like weird blue animal thing and that's what they're all the fucking about i every time i you know they're they all want to be like a blue animal ish thing but i foxes and wolves 
Like when we've when we look at the Nabu or Navi or whatever, they got the all right. All right, let's not leave the Avatar topic too much. Dude, the movie was good. I saw it in a 3D theater, and it was like a modern theater with the reclining seats. And when the bass went hard, it pushed on your back. I don't Indoor know bathroom and everything. <laughs> <laughs> modern theater. It, it no, really I did have you. an I indoor bathroom. You. Yeah, yeah. But no, no. Like, like I'm trying to differentiate it. Like I have Let a decent... shit in a bucket at the end of the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> I have a decent Spatoon. little home projector type thing going on, but fucking my couch doesn't punch me in the back when the horses stomp and gallop around or whatever. Yeah. Um, and and it was 3D, and I, I really enjoyed it. Even though the plot was paper thin, I uh, the visuals were literally the best visuals that ever has been anything made so far. No, I, I there are obviously real actors with like prosthetics and makeup, mm-hmm. and I can't tell where the reality ends and the CGI. That's begins. awesome. That's good. I, that I have no idea. He's known. For, he's always done that. James Cameron has. Right. James Cameron is the reason that um um that technology moves forward um not only him obviously george lucas those two men are the reason um and steven spielberg to some extent uh, more of more with steven it's more with cameras but yeah, but those I three agree. have driven the advances in camera technology filming techniques as well as known um christopher nolan um <laughs> and, and and the technology though like like james cameron specifically with the technology you look at terminator <laughs> 2 that liquid metal. Quick shout that, out to Tarantino while I'm doing this. No, <laughs> Tarantino. <laughs> so, but, but I, I'm not naming everybody. Like, like these guys have done specific things. Uh, like, like, uh-huh. like, like, but if you look at James Cameron and the tech that from the liquid metal Terminator and Terminator Two, that's crazy. It is. That, 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 it still holds up. You can watch that movie from like 1992. Scorsese, I think. Yes, do you? <laughs> and uh, then you go to the uh, you go to the abyss. You know that that uh-huh. wacky technology mm-hmm. where the 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 um, the, the water. Uh, tentacle thing like has the human face and that uh that white that pretty white lady uh whose name is just i can't remember memorize that name i don't know how anybody does her last name is just katie holmes we covered this dude your son not even close um <laughs> so yeah it's i, I, white I, I you forgot no it's 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 a it's a it's a really weird name it's my ba 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 there's like multiple um, syllables or something. The but movie's really good. It, it does beat you over the head with the environmentalism. So if you're sensitive to that, mm-hmm. you won't like it. There's one scene, this won't spoil anything, where they basically hunt whales. And they do oh, it yeah. in the most like traumatizing, evil way possible. Like They get the ooh. baby first. No, they get the mom because the baby won't leave it, and that's like a free whale that comes with the mom. Hell and yeah. uh bonus nice. whale. All right, free whale. And it's yeah. just torturous the process in which they like get the whale. And then you they know like that whales passed and let me ask gone. you this, Woody. What what kind of good stuff do you get out of alien <laughs> whales? Uh an anti aging cream. Oh, there's no problem anymore. <laughs> Reasonable. Reasonable. No, Who's trade. lining up at har- Who good wants trade. harpoon duty? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the only reason dude. they need to kill less is to make sure that they have an, a, a sustainable on. supply of anti-aging. Yes. Let's <laughs> breed them. We need to be breeding them in like, like tiny tanks somewhere. Like, mm-hmm. like by the thousands. Dude, I don't that, give a uh, shit. If they make anti-aging, are you joking about that? Because that's like the perfect answer. Like everybody oh, no, got that's, that's the that. plot. Yeah. That how is well so does it work? Like, like how well does the anti aging It completely work? stops aging. In Holy its track. fuck! Oh yeah, the yeah. yeah they, they didn't go as far as to say it makes you immortal and like impervious to damage. But no, fuck but you what won't Taylor age. said. No, I don't care about the population. <laughs> Heck I need you, enough Taylor. for me. I'm not sure what for. Because <laughs> no. no, no. Taylor has this idea of like sustainably farming them. No, I want it all. I want it all now. All at once. Wipe them out. <laughs> Wipe them out and get me enough, and I don't care about anybody right. else. Well, in your reality, a, you, a, a thousand years <laughs> down the road, you you fall apart. In my reality, I've got fucking anti aging cream forever because I start an evil despotic dictatorship where I ensure that it's huge environmental levies and regulations on the common man, and nothing <laughs> at all for me, the elite. So it's going to be like it's like nothing at all, like it is here. In, in, or, I can't like, wait to see. How, <laughs> I can't wait to see how like humans with like guns and missiles and spaceships are going to lose to the fucking blue blue indians again <laughs> i i can't wait to see that little swing of like tech of, of nonsense it's going to happen again like the, the worst part about that inevitably happening you don't have to spoil anything or, or or whatever but but the worst part about that inevitably happening is the team that shows up that that happens to read the report about the last team it happened to yeah it's the same you know? people 
and they're all 15 <laughs> and they're all 15 years older inexplicably <laughs> Dude. Uh, I, I, this if, if, if isn't you, a big spoiler because you learn it in like the opening minutes of the film. You know what happened after Colonel Custer fucking lost at that last stand? He died. He was killed. There weren't any more L's after that for it a long time. It turns out that the big baddie, if you remember him, he's a military guy with a scar on his face. He's older. Yeah, um, badass. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Pumping iron. Um, well, they had a backup of his personality and they put it into a Navi body. And now he is also a Navi, but he's, you know, does he have a scar inexplicable you know just just oh yeah the scar transfers over (laughs) how else would you recognize the character dude actually taylor's right as soon as they transferred they just have also the haircut transferred over so you can recognize (laughs) him that way dude this sounds really stupid man (laughs) (laughs) uh, the hair the plot is yeah so he has a high and tight military haircut oh i know scar on the side of his head so if you didn't have short hair you wouldn't probably appreciate the scar man fuck avatar (laughs) <laughs> I mean, that's this is some basic ass shit, James. It Cameron. is I'll, basic, I'll dude. James Cameron came up with this plot in 24 seconds, and then it took him a decade to make the movie. Yeah, so that's from Avatar <laughs> One. He's a Navi in Avatar Two. That guy looks like he. Uh, that was he the rapes. only cool guy in the first movie, dude. I was rooting for him the <laughs> whole fucking time. I he wanted like, them. I was man. sad they didn't. He didn't use go biological warfare. No, it, not it, nearly far enough. He I was wanted a to baby, use, a big uh, baby. He needed to get real and start, you know, getting some guns on the ground. That that picture, you're right. The tattoos came over. They actually got a bunch of soldiers and all their tattoos <laughs> came over. Like there were soldiers <laughs> that like love a particular style of sunglasses. So they got like big ones made for their Navi bodies. <laughs> and they're like the same people. For Damn, the Oakley's thing. showing up big. All right. <laughs> yeah. are, are any of them like pissed where they're like, fuck, I don't have a dick. Like, I, I, now I have to fuck with my hair like a loser. I think pretty much all Maybe of them are better. pretty. The Navi body, if you get over the fact that you can't, or I guess jerking all is different. I don't know. You're just like it, a Ken doll. It's now. a better body. The dudes up there brushing his hair. And I was going to say, you just play with your hair and you're doing the same thing at that point. Yeah. It becomes oh, more efficient. Dude, I could finally <laughs> suck in my own hair. <laughs> yeah, you suck your own. That's what they keep doing. They're like, everyone stop sucking your own hair. We, it, <laughs> it's something that you learned as a child here. It's not, it's not okay. It's, not a, it's, it's pretty gauche here. And meanwhile, the, <laughs> meanwhile, the general is just like meanwhile. throating himself. <laughs> all <laughs> the infant babies do it constantly. It's just part of the culture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This sounds really dumb, and I'll, like this genuinely. How long has this movie been out? Uh, a few weeks, a month. The, the around movie was, there. Uh, yes, but I, I want to add the movie's three hours and ten minutes, and for me, it flew by. Kind of like uh, it's a long movie. You, you it is the only person movie. in my whole world now that okay. I know who has seen this movie. Like that's the level of like disinterest. Like <laughs> I feel like among a lot of people with it, like. None of my friends. No one has mentioned this. No one's going to see it. I think I don't think the movies is an interesting. It is the of- biggest selling movie of that's come out in 2022. Damn, my friends just. Met. I guess I just don't hang out with people who go see movies. Yeah, it crossed the billion dollar mark. It's already like in the top 50 all time mm-hmm. of movies, and it's. I guess the old. Top Gun movie was second. You what? said right. I was gonna say. Yeah. I feel like that kind of shows you that to actually reach like the mainstream audience, it's not your average consumer that you're targeting you're targeting like this weird like gen x completely like not the average movie goer that we're all of a sudden like i have to go see the new avatar i have to go see the new top gun mm-hmm. not like your average person about, who's consuming stuff yeah and, and you can see like that, that's a good point josh because like disney has made a pivot in their core consumer in the past you know five ten years as well where it's no longer you know young children watching right. a lot of disney cartoons it's like arrested development millennials who are consuming disney cartoons and so like they're pivoting a lot of their content to be like for you know a, a you know 35 year old millennial it, instead of for kids of course there's still I, kids stuff. i could be wrong about this but it, it's my opinion that movies are more about like events now and those are the only movies that matter so it used to be 20 years ago you could do a rom-com and it would pick up you know, if, if you're the fifth most popular movie, you're OK. Mm-hmm. And then it comes out on DVD and you get like another boost. And that's that. Now you're either fucking Marvel, Avatar, Star Wars or your movie failed. Yep. Yeah. Or it's you can, you can see DVD. all those. Uh, no, no, those... no, no. I think there's room. You see. Otherwise, the, the you A20... want to stream it. Yeah, it's really it's releasing straight well, to streaming. Well, I think the A24 stuff is a good example of like cheap. Of, like like profitable that, modern A24? cinema. Yeah, the, the the production studio that that, that made like Midsummer, um, Hereditary, The Lighthouse. Um, yeah, I like that. Yeah, all of those like 
really successful, low-ish budget, but well done. Like they don't try to reach higher than what their budget is. Like that's where like low budget looks bad. That's smart. Like, like like if you if you try to make a fucking like Star Wars clone with a twenty million dollar budget, everybody's laughing at it. Have you ever seen that movie where like they're they're swatting at the CGI birds with coat hang- coat hangers, and clearly there's not there's just people in a parking lot swinging coat hangers that can't <laughs> see the make believe birds. Yeah. Like don't make a movie that requires CGI if you have twenty million dollars. So they don't. They make a really creepy movie that has. 30 seconds of CGI and the whole goddamn movie in the dark and it's a person mm-hmm. floating or like having a weird face and it's disturbing. In Hereditary movies, with that that poor little girl. Yeah, that was a good movie. That unfortunate looking girl. Yeah, yeah. she has well she has like a like a disease or something. So. Yes, she does. Like that's why I called her unfortunate looking. Of course it is. What I, I I didn't I wasn't honest. I didn't call it. I wanted to call it. <laughs> I appreciate that, Kyle. You're, you're a good man. I softened the blow. I softened the blow for that toad face. <laughs> right. Zach, would you put up a hereditary picture? No, 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 but but yeah no I I see what you mean Woody I, I saw that um what's his name explaining maybe it was Matt Damon or uh, or um or somebody explaining how uh, movies aren't as profitable was profitable as they once were because of the DVD market mm-hmm. um, but I don't know I, I think when you're making a movie for uh, one of these big streaming services you know like like it doesn't have to be a hit that that Chris Pratt movie that's a bad example because Chris Pratt's kind of like the lowest tier of popcorn movie but. That was an expensive ass movie with the one with the time travel to fight the aliens. It was like this is a big deal, like blockbuster yeah. movie. Just hey, isn't he like the biggest deal us. popcorn movie guy? Like with Guardians of the Galaxy, and I feel I like Tom I see him. I don't much. watch his films, but I feel like I scroll he's, by him on shit all the time. Yeah, I, I, he's doing a lot of them. Um, it, it seems like 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 they're always successful, and he and he does one or two or three a year. So good you would for think him. So he's I mean, got that not, Jurassic Park money. Man, I saw I saw the first of his Jurassic Parks. Really, just mm, not good. N- did not, you you know the really? the red you know the red yeah, you know the redhead know. in Jurassic Park? Um, her, I'm space the big her ass. It's, yes, it's it's <laughs> how it, it's um Ron Howard's daughter. What's her What's her name? That's Ron um, Howard's daughter. Yeah, yeah. Her ass is so goddamn big. They had to it's Photoshop un- it down. Yeah. They photoshopped it down for the poster. <laughs> like, like she has like a badonka donk ass, like a big old ridiculous with Bryce Dallas Howard. That is her name. She's a beautiful young lady. Bryce Dallas um, Howard sounds like it. She's not a young lady anymore. I don't think she's probably older than me at this point. But um, she's uh, at this point, like, like she somehow. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, she's beat you. <laughs> she used yeah, to be yeah. half my age. <laughs> yeah. She's forty one. She's gonna catch me. Forty one. Yeah, yeah. Um, still beautiful, beautiful woman. Um, uh, but yeah, they had to Photoshop her big old giant pale ass down <laughs> to make it less huge for the poster because it looked it looked silly before. Yeah, it looked like well, not before they just sh- uh, oh okay. her oh yeah yeah I she people looks good love for her forties. Her um, they love it. she was in Mad Men and I think yeah, in no 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 no, no. that's one, Christiana Hutch that's Christiana oh. uh, Hendricks Christina Hendricks. This is just a terrible terrible photo of Bryce Dallas Howard. Find, show Dad. me her in Jurassic Park. Yeah. That way she's... Oh, that's the good one. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one that they're like, guys, we need to keep people focused on dinosaurs. <laughs> like, <laughs> <they're Fuck>. Instead <laughs> of asses. Confirm yeah, no, who you're thinking of, Woody, is, uh, is yeah, the woman from... Christiana Madden, Hendricks. Uh, Chris, Christina Hendricks, Christina. who is... Uh, who has the biggest boobs there has ever been. <laughs> what? Apparently. Yes. I, th- I think, and they're, I, you know, I don't like, think I'm exaggerating. They're like R's or something like that. They're measure? absurd. Oh, yeah, wow. they're R's. So they're <laughs> R for retardedly big. <laughs> <laughs> for really, really big tits. <laughs> <laughs> fucking retardedly big. Do cup sizes go past H? I don't even know. Yar. Yar. <laughs> Yeah, you be needing a flag as a bra. Wow, those are they're like human heads. Each one yeah, is those head. are some yeah, old This is like one of those things where like then the Photoshop would like drag like Howie Mandel's head up and then put it back down <laughs> to be like like his. Her I head. wonder. Wow, I wonder if I, I, you know what I seriously want to see like is her lower back incredibly strong? Yeah, does she have like back. that that muscle next to your spine just like overdeveloped to counter 
the the weight of her pulling her forward. All I, the time. I think there's a she whole a strong like order. shout out to Christina Hendricks. You're welcome on back on, on the show anytime. <laughs> God, <laughs> damn those fucking mommy milkers. Just, <laughs> <laughs> I want to bat them around. They're so big. <laughs> you break your wrist. <laughs> I want to. Ah, uh, I just want to like. Poor caramel all, all right, anyway. Yeah, I, I remember the Big first fan. time I watched Mad Men and she came on screen and I'm like, How how am I supposed to focus on the business show now? <laughs> like the, now movie. I'm just gonna be thinking every time she comes on screen. On Amazon, God. there's a there's a ser- a limited series called Ten Star, and and she's in it uh, uh, at one point. And I was like, Whoa, whoa, whoa. How is nobody even saying anything? <laughs> <laughs> because like in reality, if a woman with titties that big like came into a room <laughs> When she left, somebody would say something. About right. it. Yes, like, 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 especially in a small town, <laughs> that's news. Like, like she comes in and she's like, "I'm representing the fucking oil company, and we're doing this, that, and the other." Of you course, whatever you say, ma'am. And you need to stay out of our business. So there's, and, and she leaves, and and they're like, ah, "Fucking corporate lawyer," or whatever they said. They don't go. Did you see the tits on that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what she even said. It was. What did she right. say? Did anybody <laughs> catch it? Yeah. Man, that's, that's a dirty legal trick. She said isn't that, in the big tit one. That should be <laughs> that would be hilarious if after show. she left the table, everyone was like, Did you hear her words? <laughs> <laughs> that should be the whole premise of the show. Is like like she's going everywhere. <laughs> she's constantly warning people of like what's coming and like letting them know that people are out to get them and like nobody ever hears what she I says. Like, the, the, the government's on their way no, for you right now. The government's on the way. And they're like, Oh yeah, baby. Oh, she yeah. Hey, 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 she's into, like she's Paul Revere and she's rolling into town. And she, <laughs> and she's British are coming, and everyone's like, she said something about coming. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Me too. Yeah, me too, babe. Yeah, dude, we wouldn't have a country if Christina Hendricks. I'm kind of into your so stories. How many of them? It's so funny. <laughs> it's like, tell the, the founding fathers, and it's like, tell them what. <laughs> that, I'm, that I'm hard right now <laughs> uh, <laughs> because of your tits it. bouncing around on the, the, the Potomac River, or whatever the fuck. Ah, uh, American history. I want to see a George Washington TV show. Why hasn't that happened? I want to see. Uh, I want to see him cross the river. You know what that 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 cold river he crossed. How about a childhood? Like a um, childhood. Like like, uh, like his. He was the. He was the apple president the apple tree president who lied and didn't <laughs> chop it down it You're wasn't thinking a, of steve jobs what led to yeah, that moment? <laughs> yeah he, he had the all that I cannot tell the lie i cannot uh, tell yeah. a lie yeah which that's is definitely a, stupid a true fucking story. story that's a that's a stupid fucking story like, like like who cares that he couldn't tell a lie as a child that means he was an uncreative child i don't i don't give a shit <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, like, and really he's gonna have a hard time succeeding in politics you know what I lie. <laughs> like, like, like i couldn't believe this blew my mind we were talking about his wooden teeth which everyone knows he wore some wooden he had wooden false teeth and he also mm-hmm. had hippopotamus ivory uh false teeth but was something not too many people know i guess he had people teeth too and, and i teeth, think right yeah i think that he had slave teeth and I, I choose I, to believe he harvested no, they, the slaves he owned. They, they, they I, would here's take, what uh, he was like. All right, light him up. Those are the best teeth. Smile, no, they, boys. They, they would take cadaver <laughs> teeth. So he that had one. the That's teeth not of funny. a cadaver. No. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> no. It's a lot That's funnier if, if, <laughs> if he's lighting up smiles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, our founding father wouldn't do that. He was against slavery. No. He just kept it in, in, in check. He these, could, teeth look, <laughs> these, these teeth look whiter in the donor mouth. Those are why, horse teeth. Why did that? You can't tell me those are horse why teeth. Why is there a big spring back there? He didn't have that in his mouth, did he? That's just no. for demonstrative purposes, right? This is for like, uh, so it can I'm going to be honest. Like I don't comedy. think any of that was in George Washington. <laughs> well, did he have that whole mechanism in there? Like the, You know, the it's funny. You can tell. Everything? I don't see any that even look vaguely like like a person's <laughs> tooth. These look, oh, they like look awful. Bone. These look damn. I, he was not a good looking man. Dude, that guy Wild smiles day. at you, and you fucking. Oh, look at that one. Can you imagine being Can so successful do? that hundreds of years after you die, people talk about your teeth? <laughs> Can you imagine how? Oh, that's his jawbone. That's going to be Trump's hair in like 200 years. They'll be like, back in the day, they thought it was real. Like, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Time out for a second. Like, 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 that's wait. Whose jawbone is that? I can't read the blurry text. Like, that's whose jawbone George is that? George Washington's jaw. I'm. Is no, it? there's no way. No, no, no. It looks like his name is. 
uh, Lawrence why do John we have, Devonshire. Why do we have George Washington's fucking bottom jaw just in a fucking container somewhere? <laughs> you know, I don't that judge, is disrespectful. Judge Doesn't that seem respectful? Yeah. Do we have FDR's crippled polio legs somewhere? <laughs> all weirded up in a vessel? Yeah, you're Please right. You're right, man. I hope they have JFK's like something... head in a jar. Like, <laughs> yeah. in, like yeah. Futurama. That's like something you would do to an enemy, where it'd be like, oh, yeah. here's Stalin's teeth, or hair, here's Stalin's hair plugs. But like <laughs> we wouldn't do that to to our own guys. Dude, to our that seems, that wouldn't be like this is Lincoln's beard. If that's actually George, all right? Is that like a? Why do we have George Washington's jaw? That's definitely not dark. George Washington's jaw. There's no way they tore <laughs> Zach his jaw. Told off. me it was. Zach's incorrect, and I haven't read any of his messages. How was so that acquired? You know. Did someone dig up George Washington's grave? And then he like <laughs> goes to, to the out. Natural History Museum and is like, "I did it for you." And they're like, okay, it's, a, <laughs> okay. "It's true." A set of false teeth that's on display, or is it his jawbone? I need to know. The lower like, plate about- of one of Washington's set of false teeth was on display, so it looks like he could in he could wear that, take it in and out. And that's wait, 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 wait. All right, time out. Let me ask you this. <laughs> So show show the picture once more, please, Zach. Uh, uh, you're telling me that his teeth were so bad that he put this in the instead jawbone? of his normal teeth. He only, he only had one tooth. There's only three in the jaw. It's <laughs> <laughs> been a long time. You know, look, at this look, point, there's only like fucking three hey, teeth hey, in the front. Fair, well, at this point, really it feels teeth. like you're taking digs at Boogie 2899. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, Boogie's got a solid fucking front eight, you know. Like, 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 <laughs> yeah. He did. Now but he's Those got are 32. some bloody good teeth. He's very like, good he, teeth. 18 inches solid. into the ground. <laughs> they're they're very solid. solid. Kyle, yeah. I caught your joke. I think no one else did. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> all right. No, he got those he got those teeth that you sell by like bragging about them on social media, so you know they're good. <laughs> uh they look better. I mean, all jokes aside, they look better than anything. better than they did before, yeah. 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 But not as good as they could have gone if he had <laughs> I mean, back in the so like, when he first got him, he looked like you remember the Animaniacs? <laughs> <I> like Tom <laughs> Sawyer <laughs> paying these motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did he like, change him? Did he like have him updated or anything? I think he got him shaved down a little bit. I had okay. to do the shaved same thing now. with these two. Yeah. When oh, I yeah. first got them, they were too too long. And I had to go back in and be like, hey, trim that down a little bit. And he trimmed them down for me. Yeah. Okay. Like Bugs Bunny action going on before. Yeah. yeah you don't want I that. would like, you know, there's a part in uh, Harry Potter universe where Hermione has bad teeth. And, and there's a situation where they, they get shrunk down magically. And she's like, ah, hey, what? Don't reverse that. Leave them the way they are. And and like, it just didn't make any sense to me. It was like, if we can actually alter our bodies, then why are there so many ugly kids at Hogwarts? Sports, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, 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 there are so many fat kids at that school. Jesus, <laughs> that's fucking a, Christ. So many that's fat the way kids. I thought about Elastigirl from The Incredibles, right? She could mm. choose any body shape and she chose Badonkadonk. I think she's choosing <laughs> to have a strong lower body and you're being a sexist. Uh, well, uh, I do that. Just, yeah. <laughs> objectifying that woman who's chosen to fight crime and she needs to have a good vertical leap okay uh, i would have chosen to be like just a regular guy but i'm like nine feet tall yeah but only outside the house like it'd be inconvenient to like like shit on a normal toilet and stuff but like right. when i went outside just be i'd huge. like to be able nine to change sizes yeah the yeah, ad is i'm dominating the street no, <laughs> <laughs> no one dares cross me but your <laughs> car won't fit you I don't need to. My fucking my legs are. So you get all that everywhere. NBA money. You can you can buy any car you want. Yeah, yeah. I'll go. To, I'll go to fucking twenty feet tall. Boom. Now oh, I'm taking huge I'm stride. Oh, <laughs> it's hard to score it's twenty funny. feet tall. So, <laughs> the basket. So, no one. So some stop of you me. probably. Some people probably already seen the video of Dana White and his wife getting into a fight from New Year's Eve. So um, uh, here's what happened, uh, and here's what you see in the video. Anyway, you see um, like him kind of. Th- they're they're arguing. And uh, he kind of pulls her to him. And he establishes wrist him. control. That's how it starts. <laughs> I, so J- I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off, but Jackie and I watched this video and sort of debated who's wrong, who's more wrong <laughs> for like a good 30 minutes. And, and like, nice uh, bonding. It, the video is actually two videos linked together. So I'm guessing it was something of a prolonged argument. Like this part I'm inventing, but I think the guy's filming. He took a little magic from like his first film. And then he just jump cuts to the next part. So I'm guessing there's a gap. And then you see the thing that Kyle's playing out. In the first one, he was holding his wife's fingers like awkwardly. Like he's he's got a grip on some but not all of her fingers. And he's controlling her hand that way. And her wrist is kind of bent. 
And my interpretation is that this isn't the first time she's hit him, that he's like wrist controlling or in this case, finger controlling her and not letting her hit him. And he's agitated with her, too, and sort of manhandling her. He's alphaing her a bit. Um, then it jump cuts and she's leaning over like a half wall. And I think she may have like her face in her hand. She's obviously upset and distraught over something. He leans into her and says something that makes her more upset. And again, like gets risk control. And with her other hand, she slaps Dana White. So Dana White immediately slaps her back twice. And that's the end of the footage. You can't tell if he hits her twice. Uh, I have like a really high confidence on this. I Oh, you saying the second one might have missed? I watched Errol Hawani break this down. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, I, I could be wrong. I... Uh, look, he's a professional. That's what he does. And he, he was a Dana boxer. White. It was open oh, hands. We're the wrong guy. Okay. <laughs> Ariel Hawani, the, the MMA, like MMA. When you hour. said he was a professional, I was saying he was a professional fighter. Dana White. Oh, no, 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 no. You know who Ariel Hawani is? You know, the, of course, the Jewish yeah, guy that... with a shaved head, the large nosed fellow. That's racist, but yes, I do know him. It, no, it. It's racist that he chose to have a large nose like that as a Jew. True, like, I didn't. True. Yeah, that, that is what that, he picked. Yeah, yeah. No. I <laughs> fucking works. love Ariel. I, I I back Ariel every time. Every time he's always right. Come, every time I'm talking about every time somebody comes at him, they get fucking dealt with. All right, because because he'll, <laughs> he'll lay out evidence timelines and he'll start showing fucking screenshots and video evidence. He'll be like, play, roll it. Roll the tape. Roll the tape of that motherfucker saying this. Roll. A, show me the tweet of him saying that. And he's just. He's like, I thought this. I said he, he nails people to the wall. So Dana White and him hate each other. So of course he uh, he had like a whole thirty five minute like thing here uh, where he tore Dana White a new one, made him look awfully bad. Uh, yeah, I guess it does look bad. So you know, Dana I, White said to add on to oh, what man. you're saying. I, I want you to do the whole thing. I brought the topic up, and you, oh, I'm sorry, but you, you it's you, all you yours. Only now. half covered the area thing like so in the nobody knows what even go ahead go ahead let me maybe i'm not letting you finish your thought <laughs> really I i'm not gonna were... do it i don't want to talk about it anymore you i brought it up and and you did you you wanted to tell it and i want you to tell it okay so in 2016 dana white tore into area ariana tell help me with his name ariel you won't even do that. <laughs> He's not even giving you that in. You don't know the man's <laughs> name, but you want to tell the story. I don't know anyone's name. But um, uh, so in 2016, he's like, what are your kids going to think of you? What are your kids going to think of you? And he came back at him with the same line. He's like, now, Dana, what do your kids think of you? You're hitting their mom. What do your kids think of you? How are you going to deal with that? And that was what I wanted to add on to your story. <laughs> That's he, he like held on to that for years then and waited to strike at the right time. He did. It, it, I think it, gymnastics. I'm not positive it was 2016, but I think it was. And yeah, so he held on to that for seven years and uh and then struck back. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see um what happens to Dana. I don't think anything will, but a lot of people are taking shots. All of his enemies, uh, Chris Cyborg and uh uh um uh just a lot of people. I saw Chris Cyborg saying he needs to take some time away from the UFC <laughs> to spread awareness for domestic violence. Like, Shut up. <laughs> Shut, no, up Ugo. Shut up, Ugo. <laughs> like, I'm like, nobody cares what you have to say. Give yeah, Dana and his okay, wife but it does, in the ring. It's a bad look, and it's a really weird look because he's just about to have that, like, I can't remember what he calls it, but like the professional fighting championship, our professional slapping championship is, uh, is his newest venture, and it's going live on, uh, on cable. Like soon, like days from now, maybe it already did like the first episode. And then here he is um, getting babied by TMZ, by the way. He's got enough connections there to delay the story and to make the story. Dana White apologizes for X, Y and Z, not Dana White beats his wife at a nightclub on New Year's Eve. And the club, the, the story's delayed so many days. Right. Like we didn't hear about this on New Year's. We, hear, we no. heard about it a week later, almost, um, you know, days and days later than we normally would. So he definitely had some uh, control over that. I feel like TMZ was like, hey, Dana, um, shit, you slapped your wife last night. And we have the video and we have to release this because if we don't, you know, they're going to sell it to somebody else. So it's going up on the 5th. Let you let you know. Like, yeah, I didn't think happened. about that. It released with his damage control. 
It, it was like it came out <laughs> and he immediately had like videotape with TMZ talking about it. And I didn't I feel like they gave him a chance to work it out with his kids first. You know, this is coming. You should know. So, yeah. I, yeah. He, and, he definitely got the rich white person treatment, you know, like like the way the police Dave Chappelle had had a a bit about that in, uh, in, in the Chappelle show where like if a white person were treated like a black person and, you know, if it was reversed when you when you're in trouble with the police and you had you had the black guy being called by the DA. Hey, um, easy money, is it? Yes, sir. Uh, we have some disturbing charges. Down here. <laughs> They're saying racketeering, murder and oh, shit. and he's sitting there murder. That's crazy. This could be damaging to my public profile if it were to go public under the wrong lighting. And they're like, yes, sir, we completely agree. That's <laughs> fine. We'd like you to come on in and us all get our heads together and wrap our arms around this. And then it showed like the white guys in bed with his wife. They kick the door in. They come and they immediately kill the golden retriever. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, get out of the crowd, you piece of shit. Like, like just reversing the roles. Yeah, it's about how it go pretty accurate <laughs> i'm surprised it was i didn't actually see the video was this like a backhand was this an open hand like was it i saw genuine? two open hands i, I kind of okay. want to rewatch it now because kyle said there was only one but so i mean that's just marketing for his new slap fighting then it's just really bad marketing <laughs> <laughs> all press is good press. i want to watch the slap fighting like like i want to see i'm gonna is watch Dana the gonna compete episode. him versus wife him the first, wife's match. first match exactly that's what i'm saying, yeah. that's what I'm saying. like 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 she could run the women's division and he could I wish they'd do a whole Vince McMahon thing, but they won't because I think he actually just assaulted his wife and it's not not a bit. Um it's Vince pretty McMahon? pretty rough stuff. No, but oh Dana White. Dana White. <laughs> Dana White. Yeah. I uh I don't know. That's a bad fucking look though. He's he's uh you never see her in public. I didn't even know he had a wife. Like I I, I guess I knew that that. I guess I knew he was married, but I didn't think he had a wife, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, so she's not in public. So this is not a, oh. you know, this was a real deal fight they had in in public. She really yeah, you, you told me that like they had they a public were... statement where they're like, we're embarrassed by this. Give us privacy. We talked about it with each other and our kids. Respect our, you know, distance. They're in a nightclub on like a second floor. And, the, and there's like a half wall in front of him. And someone's filming from the first floor. I, I, this is all pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, there's like disco blinking lights and shit all over it. I looked at the video. He did slap her twice, I think. I can't be 100% sure connected in the darkness and the blinking lights. But he went to slap her. Tried to slap her twice for sure. Yeah, so. it's, uh, it's not wins. a good look. It's not Data a good look. He, well, he won the fight. He won the fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. That's, that's yeah. the point. Wait till I get you home. <laughs> i don't think um, it didn't look like their first rodeo at this like the way that he he was they were first animated. rodeo isn't out in public like that i wouldn't imagine no. agree she hit him hard and, and and she hit him pretty hard and when he was talking to her he was like grabbing risk it was like he was defensively alphaing her if that makes sense like trying to control her hands and i'm like i think she's hit him before well if you've got a cat that scratches you know oh. how to approach it <laughs> Yeah, there there could be reasons she's never really been in the public. Also, like this could be very well be like a reason she's not been in, in public eye a lot. I don't know their relationship. I can tell you, he cheats on her so much. She's <laughs> obviously oh, is that public? Is he okay with is it? it? Top G. Ollie under duress. Like something's going on there where. Like, under you're... duress. You've never under heard of Pud? Yeah, Polly under duress is a term where like. She doesn't want to be Polly. I'm just making this up. I don't know what her deal is. <laughs> but it's that or lose the Dana White money train. And she's like, well, I'll take Polly under duress over divorce. Some some mm -hmm. people are in that spot. Well, that, that would be a side. shitty situation. But I, I, <laughs> I've never heard anything about this at all. Uh, I I, you got to listen to more sex. I, I got to listen to more fucking <laughs> MMA podcasts to get up on everybody's <laughs> sex shit, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I, but I yeah, think he... Like, um, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I think this is the industry where you get away with it. I, I think that, like, traditionally it has been, you know, we've seen so many, it's a little bit different, but we've seen so many um, sports stars just yeah. get a little, you know, they'd be able to beat their wives uh, on camera or Haven't NFL or players like killed people. Yeah, but they have the CTA. Well, yeah, on, but they on, prison. on purpose. Like, yeah, like, but they <laughs> went to prison for it. They didn't kill somebody yeah. and then get to, like, play. They weren't <laughs> like, yeah, hey, like, Ah, let it slide. Kind of oh, yeah. 
For, <laughs> somehow, OJ did. OJ yeah. did fly. For you get for one. White though, <laughs> like a little domestic you. abuse, it feels like it's baked into the cake. Like you all knew yeah. what you were getting. Dana White doesn't portray <laughs> himself as a boy scout. Dana White doesn't portray himself as like the honest. No, he's a fucking mobster running UFC. That's like kind of his brand. And when I found out he hit his wife, it was like, yeah. That's probably not yeah, even the but worst it's, thing it's he does his to her. it's his brand. Like you if you're a fighter, I don't think most people assume that like you're beating women because it's like, yeah, he <laughs> loves to beat things so much. Like well, like I know, like all you guys, we do this show together. Like I'm actually I'm, I'm a really nice guy. Like is it to talk to you in real life. <laughs> I'm not like gonna be like brutal and mean and everything. Like that's just for the show. Like the same way, like he's playing all that shit up too. I'm sure he's a normal guy who just likes to slap his wife sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes well, look, he doesn't. He was defending himself. You know, he was in a, a bit of a brouhaha. Um, there was, there was, like, look, in <laughs> I his love statement, that term. <laughs> and, me too. And in, the, in his statement, basically what he said is we were drunk and we started smacking each other around and uh, we're embarrassed. And he had a great statement. And yeah. it was, of course, it was well coordinated with TMZ to make sure it came out uh, along with the video. And uh, and I think he'll be fine because this is the industry of like I think so too. I don't know all sorts of like shady shady shit, and I don't think anybody cares. Well, and the I, statement makes it different and, and, and also she hit him first. Like 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 right. I don't think yeah. that matters. He shouldn't be slapping his wife in public. Like like if she's like attacking him and he can't get away, you're gonna have to do something. Like we've always said that. Like look, don't, but 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 I don't think that the first slap from your wife. You, you need to take her out. She, that's the other thing. It's his wife. It's not like some crazy woman at a club right. came up and smacked him. Yeah. Defend yourself quickly. We don't know what's next. Yeah, she <laughs> like, could have a needle in her pocket or something. Yeah, or you know, it's a razor in her in a left hand and a smack in there. I don't know what's coming let, next. I'm gonna knock you the fuck out if you slap yeah. me in the middle of a club, like lady. But it's his wife. She's not gonna sneak up and stab wife. him. It's his wife. He didn't need to smack her. That was a you're gonna smack me, motherfucker, kind of smack. Yeah, but. Yeah, that Story was not a defensive seat. smack. It was like a retribution, anger. like a that was like drunk a, anger. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna embarrass me right now, are you? Well, whop! Like that's what I got. That's what I read with that situation. The story seems to be Dana hit his wife. Like that's what I keep hearing about. I think we might hmm. even open with that. We did. The story should be they hit they each hit other. each other. Yeah, yeah, or like a match made in heaven. That's been the story <laughs> the that story I've should heard. Should be Dana's a counter puncher. Like that's They've engaged, engaged in mutual combat. <laughs> that, that's exactly how Ariel put it. He, he 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 like phrased it that way. He didn't say Dana White hit his wife. He was he was like they got into an altercation where and and he like laid it out like the, the chain of events and everything and was like very fair about it. He always that, is. That is the more accurate way to say it. There was an altercation. It's not yeah, like one she, of them she, was hauling off and just smacking the other one. Uh, yeah, non reciprocally. I don't know. Um, I don't think I would. I know that um, that as close as I've come to that, I was sober at the time, but but I uh, I had my girl, uh, I guess a, not a girlfriend, but a date, smacked the shit out of me in line at a Six Flags, and uh, I didn't and think about Six Flags. Yeah, right there, <laughs> right there in front of everybody. And, in line. Uh, I, but yeah, oh, in line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't even leave. You <laughs> no, get no, no. stuck until you no, no, get no. to the front of no. the line with the same people that just. It was you a double. Snapped. It was like a double date too. It was a double date. The couple <laughs> were, were standing. We were all the four of us were standing there talking, like 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 two guys, two girls were, were chatting. And to my credit, I was trolling her. I had I had told this like wackadoo story about how like oh you know the scream machine here was actually in Coney Island. It was called the Coney Island ice topper and they took it apart piece by piece and brought it. i told this ela elaborate lie about how they brought it here and put it back together again yeah so that when she went really i go nah <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't think that was funny and she just like smacked the shit out of me and uh and i didn't think Aww. for a moment about ret oh, i was fine who gives a fuck i you know, wait, no, I was saying awe because, like, it is that's a good bit. I liked it. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, it all. She, like she was all wide eyed, nodding along as I told this, like, silly story about how, like, they put it together piece by piece. The Mormons might have been, been involved in this. It was just silly. I was just making up nonsense. That's hilarious. And she didn't like being, like, made to look a fool, is how she, she thought it, uh, it came across. But uh, because she was nodding along and believing me so thoroughly, but mm -hmm. I think everybody believed my, my silly, goofy lie. So, uh, but, but yeah, I didn't think about hitting her back, but then again, I wasn't drunk. I've never been drunk and hit by a woman. Um, uh, so, so I don't know what that's like either. Um, I know so. that like, I know that my mom and my dad would argue sometimes and like, like, and their most serious arguments, the ones where dad would be like, all right, 
I'm going to go leave now. I'll be back in a mm-hmm. few hours, maybe tomorrow. They'll but, cool but, down. Like, yeah, but but she would be all over him like, you motherfucker, I'm going to get to... And she'd punctuate her words with these like titty twisters. She'd attack him. She'd, she'd like come in, pinch, pop, twist, and pop it, you know? What a bully. Like, like, bam. <laughs> like, 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 and he's back. giving up. you swirlies at the same time. <laughs> like, he's, yeah, he's backing up into the door like 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 because I... I think he doesn't want to turn his back because he knows he's going to like get one in the back of the head or something if he <laughs> oh, turns around. And, and and she's like, you motherfucker titty twister. You motherfucker twist. You piece of shit twist. <laughs> Tell me motherfucker twist. Wasn't he defending? He's trying to, but but like... but She's, she's quick. Your actually, no, fine. no. No, he's not defending at all. That's right. I remember it now. He's just taking them without flinching. That's what it was. After all those years, he's got iron nipples. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) He was just taking them without flinching as he backed away. (laughs) Those, I mean, his nipples are just dead skin at this point. (laughs) There's there's no sensitivity there. That's raw hide. (laughs) It's it's like a, it's like a dog's chew toy, like that. that, Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't think I would hit my, uh, my wife certainly, um, in a scenario like that. Um, yeah. So, so it is a bad look, and it does, uh, like, like what he said, suggest that he probably has hit her before, but she's probably hit him before, um, and and, yeah. uh, and and who knows? But yeah, it didn't way- look like Woody hit the nail on the head. It didn't look like their first rodeo. Like this is something that has happened before in their kitchen, yeah, but not it- at a you know club or whatever they were. If anyone watches the video, look at how he grabs like wrist control and he something comparable by holding their fingers. He looked like he was concerned about getting hit yeah or scratch oh, she, she's absolutely it looked like she slapped him many times before because you're right been, he had a he had a little regimen down even when he was drunk like you know. those two <laughs> met when they were 12 like they know each other really well if wow. if she had gone from 12 to whatever he is now 50 and never hit him i don't think he'd be like establishing risk control and protecting himself yeah. and all that or maybe it's a i i wonder if she oh she did slap him it was a scratch what i'm afraid of is always a scratch anyway with, with with crazy ladies like i, I don't want to be scratched my face at all i don't want to be scratched skin. it's embarrassing yeah. that like like a cat yeah i, I don't want to big like cats it, it, it's not a good look <laughs> 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 it's not a good look for a grown man to appear to have been scratched on the face by a woman all right explain that for the next <laughs> 12 <that> days <laughs> well it was just crazy get him <laughs> well first thing she did she asked me how'd you get these scratches on your face <laughs> <Didn't do that. laughs> yeah, yeah no you, you don't like, want to have scratches way. on your face from a woman that doesn't look good Dude, yeah. the uga game that um uh, last weekend was fucking extraordinary they were down almost the whole goddamn game and they came came back at the end did you watch it outscored yeah outscored outscored them 18 to 3 i think in the fourth quarter came back 41 to 40 i think it was something like that and and uh they get the ball uh, the the um ohio gets the no, ball right, back. It's the ball yeah <laughs> they get the ball back and they have a chance to kick the field goal to win to take the lead back from uh, away from georgia and this kid has to kick like a 50 yarder it's not even close taylor he hooks oh, I, it I saw so it. bad way right and then they zoom in it? And dude looks like he wanted in. to kill himself. <laughs> dude, that that was it. Bad that was that kid's moment where where two roads diverged right there. Like if there are multiple universes right at, or, or whatever, there are two versions of that kid that kicked that fucking ball and missed it. And and he's on the ride that goes left cuz he missed. There's another guy that makes that fucking kick and they beat the University of Georgia number 1 ranked team. They go to the national championship. And and they're gonna then they would have beaten TCU because they don't have any business in there with them anyway. That kid's a national champion. He they ride into it on his fucking kick. Mm-hmm. The draft is coming up. He's yep. one of those guys. He's one of those guys who gets that that lifelong. He uh, didn't matter what the pressure is. Oh Dirk, he fucking <laughs> kicks him in. Remember the national title, the game that got him into the title Ice in game? his veins. I was there. 53 yards, and every soul in America was watching it. Like, like that would have been that guy's mm-hmm. story. But now he's that other kid. Like, like I bet he – hopefully his life it, goes well. Like, the lead-up to his it, kick, like, I, I watched the clip, and if, if I'm remembering the correct game, like, they were talking before the guy went up for the kick, and they're like – 
this kid's fucking tremendous. Here's the past Ooh. list of like the he was on a run of like and these weren't like piddling little kicks. Like he was kicking like that distance and hitting it. And so it's not like this was out of the cards for him. Like he had recently made many kicks that length. And he so like it so hard to the left. Oh, it was like I tried to do it. Like <laughs> yeah. it was it was so like, like he had hard plenty of left. power. He had plenty of power. Um like I can't kick a football at all. Like I can't throw one either. I I saw this thing that the US military was designing a, a grenade that was shaped like the football because they knew that so many servicemen would be able to fucking throw mm-hmm. the thing accurately and now far. we have women in the military again. <laughs> well now they now they make them out of eh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> don't, do don't do that. Um yeah. I, I I wish that sometimes I wish I joined the military just so I'd I, I could have gotten to like play with some scary stuff. But the thing is I have this this uh, this silly version Coming of me in the military. You, that's <laughs> <laughs> right? What else did you want to play with? Like, play with tanks and big. Like the no, head no, no, of no, no, a no. Taliban <laughs> member. Like what are you no, talking? I, wish, <laughs> I wish that I had like shot for like Air Force pilot. Been and, and like my you know in, in that situation, I think your dream job is we're in a fighter plane or something fast and cool. Mm-hmm. Backup job: We're driving the cargo planes, and we'll fall back to to air to airline pilot someday and make a killing. And like worst case scenario, maybe we end up being an air, air aircraft mechanic, also doing well, falling back to a well planned job. Right? I kind of wish I'd done something like that. That would have been fun. I because uh, there's I, only one way that they let you in a a, a fifty million dollar fucking killing machine that flies dude. faster <laughs> than the speed of sound. Like, like, you know, there's only one way you get to do that. And you have that's to be going incredibly in smart. And you have to be like, you have to be like, one like right? you have to be like the right. Are they? Height. You have to are be they, very are smart. Those, are those guys fucking geniuses? I mean, they are <laughs> like, like, I don't know. Well, one like, of I'm my, it's, it's, it's funny. Like one of my really close friends from high school, shout out, Matt. Hope you're doing well. I haven't talked to him in fucking 13 years now, but uh, he like all throughout high school, he was one of those guys where Like, you know, you could ask those certain people who were like, what are you going to be? I'm going to be an attorney. And then like 10 years later, you're like, that guy's a fucking attorney. He always was like, I'm going to be a fighter pilot in the Air Force. And we were like, "Okay, like, you know, that's like fucking borderline impossible. Like, that's really hard. But he's he was brilliant, very smart guy, super athletic. And like I this was a few years ago now, like I was just curious and I was like, I, I Googled him to see what came of him literally a fighter pilot for the u.s uh, air force like that is what he is now he like flies nice. those 60 million dollar planes like and i was just like like i, I got like he? a boost he was he was like uh five eight five eight ish right See, that's one thing i've always it. heard which apparently is like prime fi- fighter pilot size like five eight is like very you know, good for that not only do i think they fit in there better i think that they handle g's better if you're if you're shorter they, i think you're I, right I, and uh, it, it, I guess I guess I'd have yeah. that going against me. Even like yeah. six feet tall is apparently pretty tall for that position. Like it does help you. To YouTube, be it was the distance from your heart to your brain, and it's just a little shorter if you're shorter. And that, yeah. on average, women were taking G's better than men. I bet just because mm-hmm. on average they're shorter. Yeah, that, that makes sense. sense. But yeah, yeah. Don't you I bet the drive too, like professionally and stuff when you're taller. Like most like F1 drivers are pretty much the same size like five eight because they have to actually fit in their cars mm, yeah they're little look at jockeys they're all four foot ten that's true. well it's got to be an advantage to weigh less right Definitely. like yeah, in, in all racing sports any of every racing kind sport. that they don't yeah. balance out for you know which is balancing, balancing out seems well, unfair should... too because no, it's like that seems, that seems like part so of your fair. effort is like like that dude who's like practiced racing just as much as, uh, as much as you who's 250 pounds but you also put in the physical effort and you weigh 160. I cut, like you I, should get a benefit there, right? Yeah. It's still, it's a sport. It's a sport. Would, you would. don't get special sticks that make you shoot harder if you're not strong in the combine in the NHL. <laughs> like you have to work with the same equipment. You have to, you, you have, you'd that want seems, to, that seems fair. you'd want to, you'd want to hit the scale like super bloated and heavy. And then you'd want to be like sweating and pissing it all out for race day. <laughs> well, that's what, uh, or yeah, it would be the opposite of what like yeah. wrestlers and people do. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I why don't they just weigh people in right before they go in the cage? And if you miss weight, you're out. Because that would incentivize them to fight while dehydrated, which is dangerous and bad for your brain. Yeah. That makes a huge let's, amount let's of Let's see sense. how it goes for them though. Ring. 
I mean, let's see. I, <laughs> it would you, be you, funny. You, <laughs> I don't know. If you <laughs> you want you want more knockouts in your league? They That's how it. you get it. But it's just Most like weak, like it. no. <sighs> Like just exhausted punches. <laughs> yeah, everyone looks like heavyweights. Yeah. Most Very guys heavy. literally wouldn't do it though. Like, like you've seen those guys on the scales who are like oh, shaking and trembling. Like, like you, like, like we could go beat these guys up right now. Like they, they had a hard time getting to this room, mm -hmm. right? So the idea of them going and and performing at at like against another professional athlete is silly. They wouldn't. They they'd be like, ah, you know what? Turns out I'm not a 155 pounder actually. After yeah. all. I, More of a 170 pounder. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are professional athletes. The scale is three inches tall, and they need help stepping down. Yeah, that's the moment I could beat Joe Lozon. Oh, <laughs> you, a lot of those guys catch an ass whooping. You push them hard enough, they couldn't catch their, couldn't break their goddamn fall. Yeah, I, I wish they'd do something like that because I'd like to. It's so silly when you see that Dustin Poirier and Khabib Nurmagomedov are 155 pounders. They are these giant dudes. They are big. They're six feet tall, and they're 205 pounds when they walk around. These are big, solid, muscly men mm -hmm. who somehow get down to 155 <laughs> when it's fight time. Is there a better system? Because like, like what he said, like you really can't weigh them too close to the fight. Or yes, you can. Yes, up. you can. If they want to come in like that and get the shit beaten out of them by a guy who belongs in the weight class, let them come. If they want their brains beaten out of them, if they want to die, let it happen. Let Dude, that, I love this. I'm, so, I'm such the, a retard in regard to MMA. Kyle says that, and immediately I'm like, all right, I'm, I switch teams. And then, yeah. so, so yeah, you're right. So now it'd be a 155 pound guy who's hydrated, actually like, weighs 155 like, pounds, and then there's a dude who weighs 185 pounds who comes into the ring who has no business being there, and he just gets dehydratedly knocked out. I, all right, yeah. you you won me over. I that like would that. be fun. It, one championship does it, and it's expensive. They weigh people in training camp the way people all year round it's almost like usada drug tests mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that makes sure that they don't cut too much weight they check their hydration that's overcomplicated that... though we weigh them right before they step in there and and there mm -hmm. are severe consequences for missing weight so you better be dehydrated yeah. enough right when you Fucking... walk in dummy you don't get a <laughs> sip of, you don't get a sip of water till you're in the cage uh-uh after round one yeah. <laughs> five, that's, five the other rule. that's the other rule no sips of water till after round one you, don't, you shouldn't even be thirsty when you walk up to that scale you should be like yeah bro let's oh, do yeah. this no you don't know, take I your necklace off don't take Live. your beats by fucking whoever off. No, where, where <laughs> are the sneakers when you get on there? Those rock sneakers. <laughs> they, should have to, they should have to only drink beverages that are that are promoted on the mat. They're drinking it's Monster just, Energy oh and Dos I, I just know when I introduce the sport to new people and I, and I, I have to explain that like, oh yeah, see, the, they cut weight. And you see a guy who's like, uh, uh. <laughs> he looks, he looks like the guy who got the chemicals spilled on him in RoboCop. He's, like, uh, they're all, they, they got the Mr. Burn hands, like, 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 like our beloved president, and they're all shaky and trembly, and they look gaunt. And sometimes they'll even tell you, they're like, God, I feel like shit. Like, like it's their worst day of their lives. <laughs> Fuck that. Don't make them have to do that. Make a system that doesn't incentivize that because they're the ones who are paying the price. Like, like. The, sy the system is supposed to make it so guys don't get hit while they're dehydrated. <laughs> Shit, it's it's failed. I just, I just loved Mr. Burns' hands. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Dude, any <laughs> clip of Joe Biden moving? Like, dude, fucking make a fist. Tom Cruise got got a running trainer. I, I, have, you, have you guys seen the video where they break down how Tom Cruise gets better at running as his career goes? So at He's some point, he hired a professional running trainer. Olympians have looked at his gait, his run, and they estimate that he runs like 11 second 100 meter, which obviously isn't like anything to sneeze at on a professional scale. It's not impressive, rather. Um, but but for, for a normal man, guy, it's, it's wild. Impressive, yeah. They talk about like how he he shifted to the palms open, like straight back, head up, like like running running thing, and how that oh, every movie it seems that he's getting better. The, the, and then they talk about how he like looks forward to the sprints in his movies. Like I've seen interviews where he's like, not interviews, but behind the scenes stuff. And he's like, yeah, yeah, we're doing the sprint later today. Yeah. Yeah. The big one, the big one. And it's, it's when you see Tom Cruise run, it's a thing of beauty. It's, it is it's, a, it's the action hero run. I found it. There's the evolution of the Tom Cruise run 1981 yeah. to 2018. Daniel Craig is second place run. It's a very good run, but nobody's as good as Tom Cruise. And the other I'm thing about to point to out in that video, when Tom Cruise runs, 
He ain't in shorts. He's not in sneakers. He's in a fucking suit. 90% of the time, he's in a fucking suit and a jacket most of the time. It's crazy. And he's just 50 years old. I saw something related that was kind of neat. So Will Smith, this is back when he was on top of the world and, and Will yeah. Smith in a movie was a good thing. He was trying to get his son to be a movie star. And Kyle, help me. Do you remember the name of that movie? After Earth. Be After Earth. And he's talking to his son on camera. And he's like, look, girls will look at you run and make a decision about how attractive you are in half a second. You have got to get your run right. And I was like, wow, he's right. I do that, and I'm not even a girl. I'm just a little gay. And <laughs> <laughs> so okay. I like, do a lazy jog like one of these. Ah, so, so I, you have I, that I'm not trying thing cooking. I mean, I try. If I run, it's it's this, though. It's 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 very pumpy. Mm. Yeah, I don't robot hands for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's, it's closed fist for it's sure. It's closed fist. I, I, kind of loose though. If I yeah, if I were yeah. to go like this, I'd feel like such an asshole because I'm not going. <laughs> I'm not going very quickly. <laughs> like <laughs> not when your fist closed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. I don't. God, I look like an asshole either. It's kind of like this open <laughs> hand thing where like I, my hands are closed, but they're not like fisted. Yeah, <laughs> I remember the best runners at my school would do this. Like where like the, the long distance runners, they just yeah. would have no like just it's all, T-Rex hands. Which makes sense because like energy conservation, I guess every little bit counts. I <laughs> don't run, I'm not run. made for it, but I and to rehab my broken leg, which I'm still working on, I do grapevines in my driveway. I have this really long driveway, and I grapevine gay as fuck. I'm just like, I hope nobody sees this. <laughs> full hips, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> feeling like a vaudeville performer or something <laughs> yeah I, I i've done that before. like it is funny when you're doing something physical and you're like thank god no one's here like i started <laughs> in the last like literally month or two actually stretching a little bit before i exercise and lift weights because i've never done that before and the like the level to which i am inflexible is <laughs> baffling to me because like josh doesn't know i i was a goalie in ice hockey like as my sport growing up. And so I could do the splits. I was incredibly flexible. It's part of the position. You have to be able to do that. Now, like I'm grunting, touching my toes, <laughs> like just, just bending down to touch my toes. It was totally involuntary. I could still touch my toes, but I went Ugh. like, I didn't, I didn't mean to. It's just, that was, that's the level of fat I am and or, or, uh, or inflexible. And so yeah, inflexible, like, yeah, inflexible. I'm, I'm not as fat as I was. I've, I've been, I've been trimming down, but how, me too. How's that? How's it going? I was going to ask about it. It's been going very well. Uh, yeah. I have made very big leaps in late night snacking. Like, cause that's <laughs> like always, that has been my, the, the, the crucible I've had to run is like, Every morning, it's like from morning until 8 p.m. at night. I'm like, I'm I'm jamming. I'm feeling good. Look at me banging on all cylinders. And then the last few hours of the night, I just start feasting. And I won't even notice sometimes I'm doing 11 p.m. dietary choices. How? No, no. (laughs) You know what I did? uh, Dots pretzels. Anyone who's ever had dots pretzel sticks, the most delicious, salty uh, snacks you can get at the grocery store i ate a family-sized bag of them the other night and the not the whole uh, most of it and (laughs) i and i did like i remember the next morning like i was shitting and i was like jesus this is and i was like oh yeah like that like like, oh yeah you deserve this and so like that was a fuck up i also mentioned the couple months ago fuck up i had where i ate pizza three days in a row (laughs) because because you know some some sometimes life comes at you fast and so like you just need your pizza but overall been doing very good if i snack at night now i just like fill a teeny little dish with like some goldfish and then no matter how much i want to get back up and keep munching like it's like no no you don't get that go drink another diet pepsi go drink go guzzle some make some lemon water and guzzle that like fill your stomach with some zero calorie liquid instead and that has been helpful so you just discipline the fuck out of it you're like i'll i'll allow myself a a, a taste and that's it no more just just the amount i put there and then like i'm not even joking about like the diet pepsi thing like i will be like because like you can you can trick yourself into thinking you're not that hungry with just liquid and so i'll just be like i'm just gonna 
drink a big diet. I'm just going to drink a bunch of Diet Pepsi. I'm just going to drink a bunch of lemon water, something like that to trick me into being full. People a little say bit. that. Apparently, the most clever part of my body is my stomach because yeah. it's like, I'm <laughs> hungry. Here's some water. You fuck. I didn't say thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> but there are other times like this happened just actually last night. This is undoing my whole fucking point. But like I did have a tube of M&M minis that I got <laughs> for, for, for Christmas. And I did wake up at three in the morning to pee and just got like a wild thought in my head at 3 a.m. And I'm like, oh, those M&M minis are in the pantry. And so, and so I got up and I ate M&M minis last night at like three in the morning and then like promptly went back to bed. And like I got I to gotta cut stuff like that out, obviously. But general, but I don't buy candy. Like I don't have candy in my house, and so it's not like something that's just going to organically happen is me popping up to buy to, to to eat candy. So this was a one one off, one simple thing. Uh, so yeah, I've been doing pretty good. I've, I've been doing pretty all right. I want to. I don't even know what I weigh. I should weigh myself, but I know I'm. I've lost a good bit over the last year just because I've had to switch into my thinner person clothes, <laughs> like at my absolute fattest. You know, Woody and Kyle know this, Josh. Like. I have 38 pants for when I'm so fat, it's like I hate myself actively. And it's rare that I get that fat. And then 36 is like normal level of fat. And then 34, I I look like I'm they're painted on, but I can <laughs> wear the 34s now. And, and only a couple of them look like they're painted on. And then like 32s is like, uh, that's like dream mode. Like that won't happen again. It's okay. You know, we all have <laughs> memories of the good old days. <laughs> You know, it's like a money ball where it's like, you know, everybody reaches a day when they can't play the game anymore. It just comes with it or not. It's now or 50 years from now. So, yeah, I, I, I ran it feels good. Fitness challenge. So coming into December, I was working out well and I was lifting heavy. I was at like PRs and like two thirds of my lips and stuff. It was so heavy by nice. my standards. And uh it's December 5th, I had, you know, one of Jackie and I, we go on these sex occasions or whatever. And, and so that's a weekend. We're back for one day. Then I go on my long motorcycle trip. So basically from December 5th to like the 21st, I'm living on restaurant food. Mm -hmm. And then we transition to Christmas food, right? So even <laughs> breakfast is like... I don't know, turkey with gravy on it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like I'm having breakfast uh, gravy. I'm, yeah. having, I'm having like Thanksgiving a couple meals a day and stuff like that. <laughs> and, and, and so I just ate too much. And of course I ate all that restaurant food and, and I, I didn't work out at all on the road on either of these trips. And when I came back, my I didn't complain about it on air, but my lower rib, like I strained it on one of the times, like the floating rib that I picked up my motorcycle. And both my elbows are bugging me. And I was like, it, I did not come back from that trip primed to lift weights emotionally. Yeah. And I, right. I'm taking a rest day. I'm taking a rest day. But like rest day three, Jackie is like, take the year off. <laughs> you know, it, it is Christmas day now. Yeah. You know, like it, it, just, just you can start next year. So I started the diet on like whatever, the 28th or something. And uh, I started lifting weights on the first. So I'm back at it. Nice. Now. Back in the gym, rocking it. You yeah, always feel better when you're actively working out. Like it just. Yeah. Uh, if you've been in that routine for any amount of time mm -hmm. and then you don't have it, your body, it's like you just feel your body almost like fall apart yeah. day by day. You feel your sleep fall apart in real right. time when you have a nice habit of lifting weights and then you take an off day or not even an off day. Cause like an off day is like that are planned. Your body's recovering. So you still get tired, but you just right. blow it off and it's. Suddenly, well, like, I oh, it's no four in the morning schedule. and I'm not tired because <laughs> right. I didn't burn myself out today. For me, yeah, uh, everyone should lift. It's so it's so helpful. It, it's like a, a confidence, almost like happy with myself, judgmental type thing, right? Like if, a, if the number on the scale went up by a pound, but I know damn well I've been strict on diet. Yeah. I, I don't care, right? Mm -hmm. That scale will give way to my good habits. It just got to. Yeah. Um, and but when I know that I've had bad habits, like even if the scale doesn't reflect it, you fucking know what you did. Like it, it, yeah. it, it happened. And, uh, you know, so I, just, I just feel better, more proud of myself and I'm doing it right again. Right. Good. Good. How about you, yeah. Josh? Are you, I need you to develop into... an actual like workout type routine. That's not directly cardio based because like I spend, I do pretty much all like marketing right now. I'm not really mm -hmm. doing any in front of the camera stuff for the most part. Um, so I spend most of my days here just staring at my computer and True. pretty sedentary 
Um, so I'll do like walking and occasional runs and stuff. And I have some free weights behind me, but it's all super basic. And I need to get back into like a daily actual gym routine. Mm -hmm. I'm just living where I am right now. I'm, I'm like outside Seattle. We're having a lot of issues with just like security and safety it's like there's a lot of homeless people really? there's a lot of crime oh yeah and stuff. I, I all the more reason a... to get jacked <laughs> yeah, right. or get fast you know, that, that seems like i, I, I think you should incorporate homeless people into your workout routine <laughs> right it could be a little, MMA, a little running a little you like, run down service. there say a couple choice words and now you have to run. <laughs> run <Yeah. away. laughs> like a 50 dollar bill to your back show it to them and start running <laughs> Do like yeah. a fishing pole with a twenty off the back. <laughs> now you're talking. It's the opposite. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be weightlifting. Like, if what you like is cardio, and that's what gets you going for you, that yeah. makes you just as tired. And like on the in the truest, strictest sense, running is better for you physically, health wise, than lifting. Like, right. as far as longevity. Like your heart, just health, stuff knees. like that. It is bad. I'm not Kyle, convinced. you disagree? It definitely yeah. is. It'll blow your goddamn knees out. All right. <laughs> So you, you, as if squatting running. and stuff is like about, breaking say, your knees. Are we talking squatting about is the one thing that scares me. Just about to break. I can't hear you. Squatting. Well, then just don't squat. Just do I, something I, else. Anything like, on the you're not training for the Olympics. Like, yeah, it's do not what your benefits you. Over time. I don't know. I, I was just saying, like, like, are we talking about for like longevity? I was talking about for like overall health and longevity. Health. Like running seems to be like cardio seems to be the thing that helps them. Cardio is huge for longevity because of the heart issues right? right like not only will you like be less likely to get heart disease and any number of things but the running is kind of tied to a better diet which is going to help with that too yeah. and also if you're a fit guy you'll be much more likely to notice if something is a little off right if you're measuring your your 4ks every couple of months and all of a sudden like you've got that weird pain when you when you when you like like you don't know that your car makes a noise at 80 miles per hour until you go 80 miles per hour right yeah. and right. like so if you're sitting on the couch and you don't ever tax your body at all, you might not know that things are going awry. But I don't know. A guy who's an athlete, I think they, they're going to live a lot longer, especially if you're just do you don't need to be an athlete. Don't let me say that. If you're doing 30 minutes of cardio every single day for the rest of your life, on average, those guys are like a decade living longer, I bet. Right? Oh, yeah. If not more. And like. And then that also like compounds, like you said, where it's like, okay, the people who take the time to run for 30 minutes every day are also more conscious about their food. They're more con. Right. It they're says probably, a lot about them. Yeah, they're probably like, not things uh, about their... dabbling in heroin on the weekends. Like they're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're probably having a few beers with friends and then running. <laughs> like right. It says a lot about their socioeconomic status as well. They have spare time. They live in a place where it's safe to run. They have special shoes to do it. Like, like, like these guys are like, this is a different class of people a certain class of people, maybe not a different class of people. Not everyone can. I guess everybody gets a cardio, right? Like, every, that different. is the We're one thing about, everyone can. Now, we've yeah. now I'm just talking about running. Everybody gets some fucking cardio. Go fuck. Yeah, like, I like, feel like, like if, you're, you, if you're a prolific like, 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 like fucker, like you can get some cardio in, in the bedroom, right? Like cardio is cardio. Yeah. <laughs> you get cardio in anywhere if you're not concerned about being like rude. You could be a poverty riven, like Central Africa type dude and still get cardio in. And, and oh, you'll be do. yours will be yeah, forced upon weight. you. That's not their issue. <laughs> Kenyan, Kenyans love cardio. They <laughs> we, they love it. They're great at it. Do they? we were talking they're about strength Kenyans, training versus cardio? Runners. Yeah, we were talking about strength training versus cardio. I keep getting fed this like strength training is the better thing to do. I the, dementia, right? This is something I worry about because I can't remember a fucking actress's name for, <laughs> to kill me, or to, to save me, whatever the phrase is. But um. Uh, they're like those Sudoku puzzles people do all the brain mm -hmm. teasers that like mental exercise not proven to help at all but right. strength training does like it's better for your brain than Sudoku puzzles I wouldn't have pictured that but that's what they say I think it's that mind muscle connection uh, that what you're you know you're you're focusing on something that's got to be that's got to yeah. be uh, uh, flex, flexing some mental muscles too maybe well you have to be pretty smart to bench <laughs> yeah I, I, there's some math to do there's fractions sometimes yeah you know what's uh, funny is that like people who don't like know how to lift probably really do think that like you just go in there and move weights around and like there's not like specific structures you have to put your positions you have to put your body in or you're gonna fuck yourself up like it is more complicated like if you've never lifted before at all I watch a few videos every before you try it right i, I min max everything but I, I i do think that that's like a a common trait among people who like get into bodybuilding or like get serious about fitness in one way or another, like, like 
how could you be a runner and not, you know, your times? Whenever somebody yeah. starts talking about running out, like, I don't know shit about running. Don't get me wrong. I don't know the events or the distances, but I'll ask them their times and some bait. Like, yeah, what's your time in this? What's your time in that? Ah, you know, <laughs> they don't know. It's like, you're not a runner. You're posing as a runner. Like, mm -hmm. like I, I'm not anything well, like in a the runner, same but way, I know you're like, not a runner. Like, we lift weights, like, but we're not weightlifters. Like, you know what I mean? Like, aren't we? Yeah, but you probably I, we, know more just, than the basic. All right, we know the we know the it, general it's, it's, part. It's like what do you being have, a right, here, here, minor league baseball gatekeep player? Gatekeep for me. Gatekeep a bit. Gatekeep for me. What do you have to do to be considered a weightlifter, not a, not just a lifter of weights? I guess I was thinking of it more like like a weightlifter. Oh, oh what? Could would we? power would powerlifter be the right word? Like someone whose principal goal is like more weight. Like that is oh. their thing. They are like, I want a 700 pound deadlift, and that is my thing. Is so it I enough that it is their lift. goal, or must it be their profession? Mm. I, I think it's enough that it's their goal. Like because, like, I know the way that we all lift. Like, we don't really give a fuck about the total amount of weight. We're more concerned with just like building muscle and looking better with hypertrophy. It's more expensive to lift more weight. It's got to be hard to make that your profession too. <laughs> Yeah, like make, making an actual living off of specifically just competing in bodybuilding, you'd have to well, have like a secondary well, social media. You'd have or to something. be, or you'd have to be just fucking unbelievable. Like a Greek god, like one of the top feel, five or something. No, I've always felt that anything that I do that I get paid for, I'm a professional at it, and and so I was a professional Russian, and so like, would, you know, made a little bit of money like doing my uh, workout transformation. So I, I feel that I'm a professional bodybuilder. Um, you know, I, so I, I is don't... sorry, I'm cutting you off here. Is Wings <laughs> a pro cod player? Yes, yes, he always yeah, yeah. has. <laughs> not anymore, not anymore. I don't even think he plays, but he's a professional video game player, and whatever game he plays, he's a pro at that, in my yeah. opinion. As long and, as the money's and, and coming in, he's a professional. And you're just splitting hairs if you say anything else. No, you so you don't a, have to like compete. You need the licensing organization to put their stamp on it. To, it, it no, I don't care. Yeah, so you don't have to compete in a, like like a he sport money to be it. a professional. Like minor uh, league baseball players would. Let me be ask you this. Let me ask you this. How many? Okay. Do you think the guy that that painted your car ever went to a painting competition <laughs> and placed third? No, but he's a fucking car painter. That's his job. True, all right. True. You don't have to compete against people to to be to make money at something and to therefore be a professional at it. So Wings valid. is as much of a professional cod player as Optic name a name. Or yeah. or or you know what anybody. As far as I'm concerned, you know, no, no, you, I you totally do something agree for money, you. you're a professional at it. I think that's valid. But don't but but you know. But it doesn't mean you're good. It does not mean you're good at the thing. It doesn't. Is, it is doesn't. That the, the okay. It means no. you're entertaining no. it, it probably. Right. It can mean. I, I guess in the weightlifting thing, like to Kyle's like umbrage took with my point, is like I just almost I guess in my head I considered it like different levels of intensity. Like I am a I am a game I like to play games, but I'm not like a good gamer. Like I like to lift weights, but I don't, I don't think you like, need to I'm not a power lifter. Like like you can be incredibly obsessed with games and be a full time gamer and still stink, and that's okay, because so many games are single player games, and and so and games aren't always about like hitting a high score. It's about the right. fun, right? So mm -hmm. like you don't need to be good at a game to be a gamer, but right. you don't even you clearly don't need to be good at a game to be a professional gamer. We all do <laughs> that. So um, yeah. that's how I've always looked at are, that. You, are you guys like board game people at all? Do you guys like? Board I games? want to be. I, I, I dude, dude. My house. Come to my house. Open invitation. I'll, I'll invite all my friends over. We'll I, play board games. Do it. I, I, I dude. I, I always wanted to play board games growing up, but my sister was always too young or too disinterested. My mom would be on board, but my dad would not. He would either want to watch the news or like relax in the evenings. He does not want to sit down for a, a game of Monopoly or Who's He What's It or whatever. Same exact thing here. I know exactly what you mean. Where mom would be like, "Yeah, Taylor, let's try this game," and I'd be like, "Dad, do you want to play this game?" And he'd be like, uh -huh, "No, no, like, <laughs> no, Very I'm much. watching the hockey game." That sounds like being in high school detention to me. Playing a board game is just. I, oh, I if everyone's invested, it's fine. That. Like, and, drink some beers, forcing me to pay right, attention to something thing. I find not interesting. Not you. No, no, kind no, no, of no. You'd have fun, like Settlers of Catan. <laughs> like if you, I, if you guys both came to my fucking house, Josh too, and y'all came <laughs> over and and we played board games, you guys would have a blast. You'd be having a good time. I guarantee you, you Woody it. would be having a. Okay. Good that time. would surprise me because we played. Like, 
It's such magic a fun was fun. Magic. Yeah, was I, I play magic all the time. I love magic. It's a good like community building. Yes, thing. He's a smart man. Socializing. Here's what we did, Josh. We we we. Uh, I'd never played magic before, um, and and we didn't have very many cards with us, but we all went to Walmart and bought like multiple booster packs or whatever. And we made, <laughs> and we made decks right there. We had like a draft, and we and draft we played packs, like four, nice. like four handed, and it was really really fun. It was it right. was a great time, especially great like time. So, we were so high, and that was a great time. But yeah, I could get into any board game, like 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 not necessarily mm-hmm. a card game. Like I'd like to play, um, settlers adult, of Catan. I'd like to play That's an adult board game, and I don't mean like adult isn't sexy or dirty or anything. <laughs> like 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 one of the harder ones. Like like Code Names is a board game. They make Code Names. I have Code game. Names. I have it. Right. The only board game I can think of I like is Chess. I'm a prof- world class Code Names player. I know I'm you are. You're you very, very proud. good, and I you have it. Good. I have the game. And if you come to my house, I call you as the as, as on my team. <laughs> I'm better at code names than I've ever been at any game I've ever played. I love code names so much. I dominate code names. It is. Don't give. I'll, I'll win when I have the shit. Like uh, it, everybody will be like, "Oh, look! It gave Kyle the bad words. None of them connect. Dang, that's gonna be an L. No." See the the thing that that I think Woody Will isn't considering with board games mm-hmm. is in a lot of them. I, I'm picking Settlers of Catan. There's a lot of other ones, but Settlers of Catan is like one of the most popular board games. It's very simple. It's about you know settling different places on the board, resource management, and then building roads or additional cities or whatever it takes in order to reach the requisite ten victory points in order to win. And it's it's a blast, but what makes it so fun like because it's a pretty simple game is that you can fuck people over right. easily. You can lie. You can trade resources. It's all about trading. And so if the four of us are playing and Kyle has even a slight lead in the game, my mission now is to manipulate Woody and Josh into thinking <laughs> that Kyle does not have a slight lead. Kyle's running away with it. And we all have to dedicate ourselves to stopping Kyle. And Kyle, at the same time, notices that I'm barely behind him. And he's going to try and manipulate Josh and Woody into thinking that, oh, Taylor's setting you up, you fools. He always does this. I'm not that far ahead. I'm only ahead because I have this one car and Woody's going to come up in a second. And then you can also do things like there is a knight. So there's a bunch of hexagons on the board that have different resources on them with a number on top. So it might be wheat and a six. That means if you have a city adjacent to that and you roll a six, you get to pick up a wheat cart. Now, there's another piece that you can put down if you roll a seven with two dice. And that lets you move a piece onto someone's square and steal a card from their hand. Now, this is in poor taste, but what you can do, (laughs) and what I always do, is I pull that card and I go, okay, Who's got something great for me? I won't fuck you over if you got something great for Taylor right now. Who's giving good trades to Taylor? I got a sheep to trade. Give me three of anything. And then they have to debate amongst themselves. Like, no, don't fucking give him that, man. Like, he needs that. Or like, well, I don't want to get fucked over. Buy him to you. And then something you can do every once in a while, which is fun, is like if Kyle was trading with me in order to not get fucked over, and I go, okay, all right, I'll take this hugely lopsided trade, Kyle. Now I'm not going to fuck you over. And then I fuck him over anyway. <laughs> <laughs> because there's because you can't. It's all diplomacy. It's all di- every figure, it's second. Very fun. Every moment of that sales pitch made me want to play less and less. <laughs> the more uh, it went on, on it, the invitation, less. <laughs> invitation <laughs> officially. Invitation officially rescinded. rejected. You're not welcome at my rescinded. home. Like, yeah. You were like, I can go, right? six wheat. It was like, I can see I just, him losing interest. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it, when you were like, oh, I it's have so a six, fun. I have a wheat. And then there's a manipulation. You said hex. When French, you said hex style, he checked out. I watched him. <laughs> it's it's such it's like, such a fun game, man. It's just, this it's is the worst possible game I can imagine. It sounds like Taylor, like get a fucking motorcycle. I will take you on the <laughs> <laughs> get a yes. fucking motorcycle. <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna keep playing Catan. <laughs> you keep, keep playing board games. I just you, found another dude. This I is gonna make it sound that you hang on to for the rest of your life. <laughs> like, are these the painted mountains that Tom Hanks ran through in Forrest Gump? And I'm gonna be like, yes, yes, they are. <laughs> Look around you. You can hardly tell where the mountains end and the sunset begins. This is incredible. Look at this Colorado. <laughs> You got birch trees and fucking this, and then we're gonna go. <laughs> 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 oh, they got birch trees. 
Here we got Bird Street, Colorado. has like a yeah, different like a book system. <laughs> one of the leaves. I'm going to put you on top of the rock. <laughs> See the world. There's Dude, I was friend. about to tell you, you I was about to be forest. like, there's actually another game <laughs> called, <laughs> called, <laughs> called, and this is, and this is so funny because I just thought it's called Ticket to Ride and you build trains. <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually a great game. Shout out to everyone who plays Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride Sellers of Catan. Very fun games. You guys are wrong. Well, actually just Woody because Josh says he likes it. And I know, <laughs> and I guarantee this is the kind of game that Kyle, once he realized how to fuck people over and that aspect of it, the high risk high reward you'd have fun with it because that seems to be something you enjoy in games is the ability to really make someone's effort worthless and also the risk of having your own effort made worthless i go to where quest keys spawn and throw them away so (laughs) so so that no one so that the people who didn't have enough balls to get there yet or enough gumption they don't get a key that right Oh, you piece of shit. That's like great. <laughs> I hide them. I, I know. I know the where now. they. I know where they spawn. I go there. I pick them up. I throw them away. I know the corpse <laughs> on customs. What else are you talking about? Is the brown jacket day? on uh, second second story of three story. The um, you go up the metal in stairs, doors. two doors down. You jump over the desk, make a right, go in there. The brown jacket's the second one over. There's the mechanic key in that. It's for the bronze pocket watch that's in the truck. It's a one use oh, okay. key now, which is extra fucky. It's yeah. another way of. Here's what they're doing. It's a little shitty. This this isn't as much a Tarkov talk as it is a game developer being a certain way with streamers and a different way with the community. So a lot of people suspect that streamers get access to better servers, but we saw all the servers go down um, dur- during the event. So I'm not so sure about that. But but what what they had what they did do for sure. A lot of the streamers. Um, obviously speeding through the quest and through the game's progression. I was fast enough as well that I got through the unknown key and that mechanical key when they were multi-use. They're now single use. They changed that. Like as the fast people got through it, they like threw this, this bottleneck down behind us. They shut the door behind us and slowed everybody else down. And they're, they, they're, they, they're doing that multiple times. It's like as the fastest people get through they're shutting doors and uh, b- behind them so that people can't progress as fast. They're making keys yep. that you could just buy now barter keys. And uh, I love it. It's making but the wait, game so just, slow and grindy. It's not a streamer thing. Uh, I, it is in. It's just people who want to. The, the only the people there are grindy. the streamers. It's it's yeah. the professional players. Like, you like think the their AMR motivation the was streamers. Their motivation was to close doors behind streamers. You think? I think that they like. I think it looks good um, to have streamers shitting all over the the average populace of the game because it projects a an idea of what it's like to play tarkov that is very attractive whereas if everybody was kind of on an even footing if you saw what tarkov was like 24 hours a day for the average person if you had timmy stream for 12 hours and you showed what what dude i i watched a level four guy (laughs) i watched a level four guy i sound hoard him the whole way i like 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 I, I got eight witnesses to this. So I, I, I'm nonchalantly looting, sound whoring him. I stand up, I voip at him, hey, catch, and I throw an impact grenade, kill him, go back to fucking looting, and he's fucking dead. Like, like, <laughs> hey, catch. <laughs> the scabs shit. are harder than most players. The scabs are legit this wipe harder That's than most players. That's what Tarkov is now. like. He never saw it coming. And I guarantee <laughs> like, that. That was a huge amount of fun for you, right? He had to run five minutes to get there. He was a, 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 like, like it's such a run to get to where we were. Like, so if he knows where he's going, it's five minutes. If you don't, it could be ten. <laughs> it could be ten <laughs> wandering. You're like That's Moses like, in the desert. You know, I always thought that Moses getting lost for forty years was ridiculous until I played Woods in that Tarkov. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Yeah, I could see it. I could see it because I think I've been doing loops around this mountain for half a fucking hour and the timer's on red now. And Moses didn't have landmines. Yeah. You you start at 9 p.m. and the sun's coming up. It was like, what's over there? Sand. What's behind us? Sand. Uh, So this episode of PKA is brought to you by Blue Chew. I should have had the ad up. As we head into the holiday season, it's time to give yourself and your loved ones the gift that keeps on giving and giving and giving. 
which is today's sponsor, Blue Chew. Yes. Guys, confidence can take you far in life. It can also help in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate. That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part? It's all done online. So no visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Get that extra confidence with the help of Blue Chew. Don't let that Christmas tree be the only wood in your house standing loud and proud this holiday season. Now you can go try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code PKA at checkout. Just pay the five bucks in shipping. That's BlueChew.com promo code PKA to receive your first month free. Blue Chew are the perfect stocking stuffer to make you your best stocking stuffer. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and <clears throat> important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring oh. the podcast so much with your dick pills blue can i just Go say ahead. can i just say they gave me a hard time one time because i mentioned taking multiple ah. tablets um but but it says right here on my fucking like pouch of of drugs that they sent me chew and swallow one or two tablets 30 to 45 minutes before sexual activity is needed and i've got the nine milligram tablets so they're co-signing 18 milligrams at a time here yeah they, they've always so, said that i think it was you being like that's <laughs> the same more than that. I don't know. But yeah, mine says the I, I same mean, thing. I have the nine kind and it says one or two. Uh, which I I just have a oil drum full of dick pills at this point. I need to <laughs> to, <laughs> to cancel that. Um yeah, so so I so whenever you want to do that, you go on there and you can put it on hold and it'll ask you the reason. And uh, I remember when I was going to to jail, I put it on hold and and they're like, hey, why? <laughs> and I, I it, there's options. They're like, I have plenty of medicine. You can click that. There's one that's like, ah, it's not working for me. And I'm sure they would say, hey, ma this other thing yeah. could. You know, they're, they're asking some helpful questions. It's mm. a doctor's sort of situation. And I just typed in, going to prison. <laughs> Lol. <Yeah. laughs> they immediately approved the hold order. <laughs> they're like, all right, all right, that's fine, that's fine. I think it's short-sighted. Yeah. You could use dick pills in prison. And I mean, this episode of PKA also brought to you by Lock and Load. We've got oh. Blue Chew to keep your dick hard, and we've got Lock and Load to make sure that it's spurting the absolute maximum amount of semen possible. Well, I guess not the semen. It's more the seminal fluid, because don't worry. Be this, isn't, this isn't going to make you more fertile. So if you're trying to get someone you know, pregnant, don't think this, this isn't for that. This is to make your orgasm more pleasurable. This is for you, sir. Everything in the world, you know, is all about these other people. It's all about these ladies and their pleasure. Now, now we're talking to the gentlemen out there. And it's Not time anymore. for you. It's time Not for anymore. you to bust hard, to bust heavy. The premium, premium cum pills that will make you happy. And is. that is, and that is an act, a legally actionable. <laughs> no, <never mind. laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so check out our dick pills, code PKA, code jizz, 10% off or 10% off everything else at Derek's site, the pre-workout, the protein, the weight loss supplements. Derek's got a million incredibly uh, produced products over there, incredibly scientifically, chemically constructed. And so check those out, PKA or code jizz, 10% off any of that wonderful stuff over there, but mostly lock and load, come like a man. Oh, I read Gorilla yeah. Mine was like the fastest growing supplement company in the world. It, like, fastest growing in the world over the past couple years now. They're, and do you know how hard it is to be the fastest growing supplement company in the world two years running? Because once you get from right. like to a critical mass, I could start something called like Taylor's, you know, Food Emporium. I went and from be one like, to I'm four. The fastest growing. Yeah, I went from <laughs> uh, from zero to one. <laughs> like the, the most <laughs> improvement, infinite improvement. But yeah, uh, yeah, he's Derek's gonna have some generational wealth if he doesn't already. It's... I hope he does. I love Derek. Yeah. He's a great guy. Agreed. Yeah, every time I see him on YouTube, and like, it, it, it is so interesting to see someone with his like physical presence also be that incredibly knowledgeable on like the scientific specificities of certain things because he's well he's spoken. sitting there yeah he's well spoken he's sitting there just a mountain of a man and then just be like 
And something some people don't know about this pre-workout is it's not activating this adrenal gland located here. You may <laughs> think it is, but the Actually. reality is that let's pull up this metadata study. And it's like, <laughs> all right, now we're now we're learning. Like <laughs> I feel like you I'm with you, but it's not antagonizing this adrenal gland. Like yeah, it, it, yeah. I was like, wait, antagonizing? Like it is it is it like making fun of it? Yeah. <laughs> I understand. You want you want a pre-workout that bullies your glands. <laughs> <laughs> just antagonizes the hell out of them. Calls them gay, swirls them. Like, you know, that's, that's the kind of supplement you want True to be motivation. taking. Yeah, it calls your T receptors bitches, so they're motivated <laughs> to, to get moving. But yeah, code PKA, code Jizz, check it out. Uh, did you guys see the, uh, uh, I think the guy who was in the coma from the football hit, he's awake now, isn't he? Like he's responsive. How bad it was. I thought, dude. Apparently, it was fucking bad. Like, how weak are people? Your heart can't stop for a little bit. <laughs> did his heart? Were meat bags? Because he had to. They did CPR on him for like a huge amount of time on the field. And I was mm. seeing stuff online where people were like, everyone was like, they got him to the hospital. And I saw people commenting like, dude, CPR was performed on him for eighteen minutes or whatever. He's likely brain dead. Like yeah, it it's, it's almost hour. positive. Over half hour. Yeah, and I saw CPR a bunch of people being like, though? "It's almost positive." No, <laughs> no, it yeah, doesn't, Kyle. <laughs> why not? Why doesn't it? Like, I'm gonna, Kyle, why can't I manually breathe for him by pressing? But I mean, they had like, probably an EKG. That's what CPR does. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Yes, like it does. One. It's what it, it does. does. It's what CPR is no, for. I'm it's to it's Kyle. to re-kick it. It's not to if it takes that no, long to not. re-kick it. It's, no, no, no. I'm manually on operating that motherfucker. Hump. Yeah, I'm pumping his blood for him and breathing oxygen into his lungs. I'm doing all the work. You're not breathing. I don't. They don't do that shit anymore. That's not. Yes, said. they do. No, that I Wait, literally watched a YouTube video nothing. where they said no, no, no. People. They have a different system now. Now you use a puffer. You don't. You're not supposed to Look, use. I the, won't let you stand <laughs> there. Sit there. <laughs> and besmirch a goddamn American hero here. I, 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 what pull countless <laughs> human beings out of the water? <laughs> I was like, what are we talking about? You acted like CPR is like some made up propaganda or something like that. Like, See, like seat belts. Or, Taylor's on or, to something. They removed the breast. Or but voting. I don't, I don't think they removed it for two person CPR, and I'm not sure. I don't know. I just saw online that like apparently if you're under CPR for that duration of time, it is very, very likely that you're brain dead. But if nah. he is responding, then he's not brain dead, obviously. I mean, well, check yeah. at this Clearly point. You've lost the argument before it began. It's the EKG, we have a case though. Study here. You have Man, to think look. about that. They have like <laughs> portable, portable defibs and portable stuff on the field that are much more advanced than like someone well, who just went out. Yeah, yeah like they would have like things. basically pro professional medical equipment on the field with all the trainers and stuff. So I'm I sure like that. They had pretty much ambulance equipment just on the field at that point. Yeah. I'm sure. So, and then, so like, they wanted to keep the game okay. going. I'm telling you, if you hit me in the chest, I'd have been fine. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. always the man that whatever his name is. Dude, he didn't hit him that hard. Dude, yeah. I mean, he, did, he no. didn't hit him like, that I hard. I watched it. Everybody was like, have you seen the hit? It's the hardest hit ever. And I watched it, and I was like, he'd have bounced right off me. It's real. That was what, like, surprised me about the hit. I'd have laid the other it's, guy out. It's a he'd very, have been the one hurt. Yeah, he'd like, have had as, a neck injury if he hit this peck. As, as far as, like... <laughs> Football hits go. That was not so bad. not noticeable as a no. football hit. Like there's there's a um, there's a dozen so fucking hard dude. I thought he I I really did think he hit him. I watched the clip in slow motion and I was watching how like if you watch the thing it looks harder than a normal hit. When he's like running, he's so lowered and he's he, you can just see him generating so much power and speed and he just comes to a dead stop in that man's chest. I don't know. I thought I, it was the kind of hit that happens ten times a game. Yeah, not same. not a weak hit, but football happens all well, I mean, the way he reacted like, is what was really crazy. I guess. Well, he stood up and then yeah. he like and he talked. It looked like he talked for a couple seconds. Like he stood yeah. up and then like said something to the dude and then just. Well, that's out. why yeah. I had to check and see it wasn't a head injury because that's what I assumed from the jump that like he got knocked out or like it was something to do with his head. And then you play it back and it was like, oh no, that was directly to his chest. So the only answer is that was his heart. So yeah. it, it, yeah. it did not it look like his, a hit that. Well, I did. It I saw his heart in that moment. Is that what happened? I, I, I don't know. It, it, must have that it, it was in between beats. So it was like a one in six million chance that it was in between heartbeats and it hit in between heartbeats and threw the rhythm of his heart off. That was essentially yeah. the theory that was being like tossed Who around. Who says Twitter one in six million chance? That sounds like that thing. Yeah, that, that was a Twitter doctor. So take that like grain of salt. 
Yeah, is it that six million. million. Who did the boxing? Is is that who you watched also? I, I believe so. There was someone who did a full video on it. Yeah, I, I saw they... that video, and it, apparently, if you hit a guy in the heart hard at just the right spot in the cycle, it can stop it from beating. I saw it's mostly young people that get it. It's usually it, uh, young people in baseball or hockey because the small projectile and like, I guess when you become an adult, like your chest gets like thicker and like stronger, like hardier. And so like in younger guys, like hit, getting like getting the fucking fastball to the chest or something can cause that. I also heard pump. it was more common in baseball than football, which surprised me. Yeah, because it's like all about I mean, that made sense to me because it's usually all about like, like you know, a, the running. point of impact. Right. Like then it would make sense that the smaller thing well like a baseball is a lot the point of impact is so much smaller than like a shoulder. I thought baseball players caught it all the time. I'm not talking about me, a swimmer, right? I get hit in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> but a baseball player, they get hit in the glove. Well Are but baseball no, 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 this, this happens to young people mostly. Batters. And so it's like yeah. oh, it's like a young guy he's not in the MLB, like he just is trying to catch a ball and gets like drilled in the it's very rare, regardless. I think Kyle like, might yeah. be right about the batter thing. I don't think it's drilling first base. Yeah, you open up, you open time. up quite a bit of your outside where you'd be able to you be hit like hit down there. around it's, it's, there. They're yeah, not pitching that hit. hard at, at like sixteen, because yeah, they are. Some people are. It, yeah, at sixteen, they could fucking hurl it. 50, yeah, 60. Yeah. Oh, I, I read it was mostly like that. line drives that did it. In oh, I mean, there. I I bet that doesn't help either. Anytime the ball's moving fast and it hits somebody, I, the worst thing I ever saw was was. Me breaking my goddamn ankle like a dumbass, and then that one kid getting hit in the mouth with a throw with a fast thrown ball, and he had braces, and he just ate that Ooh. shit. Blood. Oh. When you broke your ankle, was your foot displaced? Was it all like? Um, no, it wasn't visually like funky at all. Uh-huh. Um, uh, they diagnosed it as a sprain, and then the pain was like really excruciating that night. I woke up like in like ridiculous pain and went back, and they're like, "Oh yeah, it is broken, huh?" Like on a second look at the fucking X-ray, like Jesus, you people are incompetent. But um, <laughs> it uh, it sort of bent. It was my right. It's hard to remember honestly which one I broke. I don't remember which one broke. I think it was the right one because that that makes the most sense. And I think the right foot, if um, turned toward the pinky, like the pinky led yeah. the way in the turn, and it turned out away from my body. Ooh. The right foot turning away from your body, pinky pinky direction. When you were uh, running for a base. No, when I was sliding in, that you wear steel cleats and the cleat caught on the rubber plate, uh, so it my it made my foot yeah. roll, made my me roll over my foot. My foot Which had based? to stay home. Oh, okay. Did your home is, is yeah. buried in? Yeah, I bet yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A total loss. Was it? Was it close? Was it not? No, I didn't. Have to, like, have walked it backwards. I, I don't even know if they were throwing. You know, like like, like I was just gonna slide and look cool and fucking pow. <laughs> I thought the way it felt. And it was How old so were you? Loud. Ninth grade, I think. Oh, okay. Something okay. like that. Ninth grade, I think. No, ninth or tenth. It doesn't matter. Um, but, but I thought there was going to be bones sticking out of my shin when I looked down, cause that's what it felt like. Um, I was afraid to look cause yeah, I could hear it so loud, like so loud. Oh. And, uh, yeah, that was silly. I didn't, when I, um, when I broke my leg on the motorcycle accident, it didn't hurt that much. The first couple like medical people that looked at it predicted that it wasn't broken. It was just sprained because there wasn't that much pain, but it was really obvious on the x-rays. Yeah, it wasn't tremendous pain. It hurt, but it wasn't like overwhelming. Like, oh, oh, oh fuck, yeah. fuck, fuck. It wasn't that <laughs> shit. Like, I was... I've had, I've had pain like that. Like from when I burnt my hand, it was. It like... wasn't like what. I've just heard Kyle's <laughs> orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> Did it hurt so much that you were shaking and it hurt to touch <laughs> afterwards? <laughs> yeah, I'm just imagining <laughs> yeah, afterwards still because it hurts so After much. your broken ankle, did you have like a moment of clarity where you thought yeah. about it? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh. I probably should have taken the free run here. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> I, we I really need to score. and that was not fun but it was the same thing where like once i did it it was very loud and like the pop was loud but i walked on it for like a week and i missed occasionally it would lock. Would you break my i've torn my meniscus my menial and my lateral um Fancy. so like it would lock into place and all of a sudden i would be standing there like 
polio leg, just straight fucking couldn't <laughs> move it at all, or Ooh, else I'd be in like immense pain. And then once it would go back to normal, I'd be like, okay, it'd be fine until I had surgery on it. How white trash is polio? <laughs> I had a teacher that white had trash. Polio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> imagine imagine how white trash you have I'm to be. I'm pretty sure polio. polio was all over, not just <laughs> yeah. in white places. Oh. No, 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 no. Do you have modern the flu? polio? Modern day, modern day. Modern polio. Like, right. oh, no, you don't have to worry. That white trash problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about modern fucking polio. It, 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 look, if you know somebody today who has polio. They're white trash, I promise you. <laughs> do you know someone there's, there's with a high polio? Connection? Yeah, I do. Uh, I, he died a couple years ago, but yeah. Like, like he, he had How polio. How old was he? He was my mother's age. They went to high school together, and uh, his name was Jeff. And Jeff ended up in a wheelchair. And uh, and I remember asking some, one day, you know, because he was around as I grew up. Like, not around us, but like, you would see him in the community or whatever. Mm. And uh, I'd be like, oh, you went, my mom would be like, I went to school. Can you believe I went to school with him? I'm like, he's your age? He looks, he he looks fifteen years older. Yeah, yeah, he's my. I'm like, what happened to him though? Was it a car accident? Like like that other lady you went to school with? Because that happened. No, <laughs> it's polio. I'm like, what? <laughs> that stuff from World War II that they came up with the vaccine that that you know my dad's got a polio vaccine scar. I'm, I guess everybody of that age does. You can see it. I don't know if you guys have, but it's it's neat. Find your old people that that have them. Look at them. Make them show you the scar. <laughs> people still get polio vaccines no because it's eradicated that's what so. i'm saying you've got to be so dirty to get it now i think you get it from bed, we're so but... old we're like you didn't like that guy we're like you didn't make it past the deadline where it was like Jump. real try real to real find real. a headline try to find a headline about a person who had who just got polio and and zach have my back here when you show the picture <laughs> <laughs> So, so you might have to cherry pick a little, you know what I mean? And if you never find a picture, that's okay too. But don't don't show no colored people with polio. And for people, love, Jesus no people, Christ. Teacher. <laughs> no people love colored. Either. I, I forgot. Polio okay. and it was like trash. So this we, we got distracted, and I didn't finish the fucking ad reads. I need to. <laughs> I need to finish well, the wonky. You know, that's just how good wonky weed products are. Because <laughs> there's sometimes track of you, time. you get lose track of time, and you get too fucked up, and you forget to do the read on your podcast. Wait. Are you or a loved one interested in THC products, but aren't hmm. sure where to get started? Well, wonky. Weed Weeds.com can help. From the same company who brought you Death by Gummy Bears.com, you'll hear more about them when they're back available again. WonkyWeeds.com was created for the common THC consumer to enjoy a huge variety of THC alternative products. That's why at WonkyWeeds.com, no matter your preferred method of consumption, we have a THC solution for you. At WonkyWeeds.com, you can find pre rolls, distillates, cartridges, disposables, gummies, syrups, and even chocolate covered potato chips if you want. No matter what you crave. Suppository's coming soon. 2023, let's go. 2023 suppositories on the potato on the docket. Chips are good. No matter what you crave, Wonky Weeds has you covered. These products are of the highest quality and correctly dosed for your benefit with many different products and customers all around the usa american-based wonkyweeds.com serves all states where hemp derived thc is legal so whether you're a current thc enjoyer or just interested in trying something new go to wonkyweeds.com and use promo code pka20 pka20 for 20 percent off your order once again wonkyweeds.com promo code pka20 for 20 percent off your order get yourself some gummies some distillates some vape carts there's a huge amount of stuff that you can grab over there as kyle has said many times if you're looking for a very strong vape you want to go with the hhc that seems to get you the most fucked up the highest thco maybe a tit bit lower than that and then if you're trying to start out gently delta 8 is nice and mild the weakest by far of those so if you're not quite sure Don't try some delta 8 Lee. <laughs> if you're a baby bitch, then try the Delta Eight. But if you're a man, if you're a man who takes cum pills, if go for the polo, HHC. If you got polio, then maybe a little Delta Eight will take away the pain of your crippling old timey poor person yeah. disease. You won't remember that you can't walk, and so it won't even be real. So wonkyweeds.com promo code PKA twenty for twenty percent off. Buy yourself some vapes. Buy yourself some gummies. Some carts pre-rolls and distillates i uh i forgot i hadn't taken edibles in a while i mean like a month and a half two months or something like that i've just been vaping i've uh i i've, I've had fun with that and the, the edibles can ruin your whole day you know or or, or like you know yesterday they fuck I, you oh, up. hey 
yesterday I found a package of them. I hadn't seen them around in a while. I've got them like laid about everywhere in boxes and stuff. They sent me so many. And I was like, huh, I wonder if these are fresh. And I pop them. Sure enough, they are. Because if you leave them open too long, they'll get like hard. I bet you can still yeah. use them. It's a gummy bear. Like, <laughs> you could like soak them in like hot water, I guess, if you wanted to. Look, they're drugs. You'll, yeah. you'll figure out a way to take it, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to... No, we never said they tasted good. Low and key, they are suppositories. They do taste good. <laughs> Some of them taste good. Some of them. The strawberry are, ones just, I like. The, the strawberry ones are actually okay. Anyway, I popped two in my mouth and I, I was chewing them up as I walked up the stairs to my, to my office here. And I started thinking, your tolerance is probably gone. And I, I walked into the bathroom and I, I like opened the toilet and I spat out the vast majority of what was in my mouth. <laughs> Like well over three quarters of what was in my mouth, I spat it out because I was thinking like this is too much. Yeah, I'm playing Tarkov and I, I'm in the Discord and like like I don't know, there's half a dozen people in there, maybe more. We got there was a big crowd later on in the night, and uh, I start feeling so weird, and the game starts looking funny. Like <laughs> there's this ep- there's there's a field of view bug you can do right now, so that um it, it, the game does have a kind of a a different look to it. Um, that I do. It makes it, I feel like it's advantageous. And, and, you know, the game looks amazing as well. I'm playing in 1440p and I'm getting 144 hertz and I'm using a flashlight. So you kind of have those God rays going and I'm running and I'm feeling so weird. It feels real. <laughs> I, it's like, it feels like I'm on a SWAT team and I'm clearing mm. a building because you can see the dust particles in the beam of light and like the, the sort of fisheye yeah. thing I'm, as I'm moving makes it sort of feel like I'm like, I don't know. There's there's so much depth. It looks so good. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong with me? I, I'm, I'm like, oh, the edible. <laughs> the edible. They're so goddamn strong. Thank um, God you spit the other say, half Imagine out. you ate that entire thing. I, I've, yeah. been, become the chair. I've been dosed to the max before. Like, I've had some maximum dosages before. Like, like, like I used to watch Joey Diaz on, on Rogan brag about mm-hmm. his 200 milligram Gummy gummies. And at this point, it's like, all right, I can. I, I I'm not gonna be like his friends that are scared of like a, a corner of his edible. I'm gonna. I'm on yeah. the same level as he is when I'm when I'm in the swing of things. But uh, nonetheless, nonetheless, uh, those things are super fucking strong. So to eat them with caution. Yeah, start and, off small. The ones they really over, are. Yeah, I mean, if you were to take too fucking... much and then start driving, like it. Don't drive and take any amount. But you get what I'm saying. If you were to like take two of these and then go for a drive because you and like forget, right? You take two, forget, and then oh, I need to go pick up little Billy, dude. Let's hope you're not gonna make it. If you, you're not gonna make it. You're gonna. You're not gonna make it. I can. Yeah. There's no way you're gonna be you on the side of the road. Like you're driving crying. a spaceship. Yeah. It would yeah feel, you don't want to so do that. Insane. And these are the death by gummy bears that Kyle's talking about the wonky weeds gummies that we're promoting tonight. Those are cheaper. The, those are 30 milligrams a pop, still pretty strong, but uh, not anything close to the hundred milligrams a pop that the death by gummy bears pushes. So yeah. check them Great out, stuff. check them out. It's, it's high quality stuff. Uh, what is your preferred of the uh, THC alternatives, Josh? So I actually did a, a, a like alternate cannabinoid tier list recently, and I think HHC I would agree is probably in terms of like strength up there. THCO is also I think like psychoactively probably one of my favorites. But I've always been a fan of the because uh, I'll, I'll consume normal weed and then mix it with Delta Eight, and it's like it gives almost that CBD quality where it's very body heavy, very mm-hmm. just like almost sedating. So I've I've liked pretty much every like alternate cannabinoid that's come out came out recently um okay. I, i'm still it's funny i kyle years ago changed the way i smoked in some way because like i dabbed for a long time flowers never really got the job done i heard this motherfucker talk about the way he smoked and he basically said like it's pretty much he sits down with flour smokes smoke 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 smokes he's trying to achieve something very specific in that single sitting session and I never really smoked like that. I'd be like, ah, hit a little bowl here, hit a little bowl there. So like mm-hmm. if I consume flour at any point, I'm sitting down with the intention of like three or four bowls, you know, just fully relaxing and consuming for that specific intention, not just like one yeah. little hit there, well, one there. <laughs> I don't like this sort of make believe things thing that like proper respectable adults do when they consume <laughs> things like caffeine, alcohol. And then slide it on over to to cannabis and other drugs where we pretend like we're not here 
to get a desired effect. <laughs> Don't act like that booze tastes good. Don't act like that fucking big dick of a cigar you're puffing on just, just makes you feel like such a manly man. <laughs> Suck it deeper, Arnold. You bitch. You're smoking it because it tingles and it feels good and it makes you yeah, like because you want a the nicotine. Bit. It's a right. buzz. It feels good. So let's let's get all that bullshit out of the way and let's dose the way it, it's required to immediately achieve those effects. I'm not going to sip your fucking sweet nonsense over the course of half an hour until I get a weird <laughs> headachey hangover. I'm going to drink the purest vodka I can and I'm going to drink three fucking fingers of it because that's what it takes to get me trashed. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You're looking I'm for a take specific and three effect. fingers in a fucking like like glass like that. And I'm going to down the whole thing right now and chase it with some orange juice because I'm classy like that. And I'm going to be <laughs> drunk because that's what I want to be is drunk. I That's don't literally that. how Kyle drinks. Like he's not doing a joke. Like <laughs> he will literally just be like, I'm going to drink and then just drink a five ounce glass of vodka <laughs> and be like, yeah, that was uh, that okay. was my drinking. You know, yeah. maybe later now I'll I, drink another now, three ounce glass. Um, but <laughs> and, and I do that for, for two reasons. One. I'm over the pretense that I'm not here to get drunk if I'm drinking. Yeah. Right. And and two, now I can keep track. Now I'm never going to overdrink again. I I do I bet I got sick so many times when I was like I don't know, younger, like like right. in my 20s and 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 just to make it so many and, and early 30s even. It wasn't yeah. that long ago. I've had some we rough just nights. lost track. This how much show you forced us to do some stuff that we know is like <laughs> well, this is going to suck is you just keep yeah. drinking yeah. more. Yeah. yeah. But so but I, like in my you know, in my personal life, I don't do that anymore. I don't, I don't drink till I vomit. But yeah, if right. if you if if you're going into something like like if you're trying to get high, for example, on like weed, cannabinoids, whatever the fuck, why am I sitting here like putting all that harsh smoke in my lungs with some <laughs> mid grade marijuana? Like I'm a connoisseur smoking my hand rolled like non bleached <laughs> paper. <laughs> no, get the fuck out of here. I'm going to smoke some weird chemical out of this thing that I heat up with a blowtorch and in <laughs> one hit. Let me tell you how how what it's like. You get such a hit of THC that you salivate to the point where you have to spit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like like I That's like oil. like it it's so much spit in your mouth that it feels gross to swallow it and it's your spit. Like you're <laughs> like like, I don't know if as a kid, if you were ever gross enough to sit there and like save your spit up till you had like a mouthful. <laughs> I never did. It just seems like a thing kids might the do. But I'm just was doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when kids would spit out that snotty shit and suck it back up over and over. Kids <laughs> do oh. weird things. You remember it. Come on. They did it. You had a shit bandit. Don't no, like I know. Exactly. I know. Exactly. I'm a man. I'm kids picturing. I'm picturing Joe filled. doing that on the playground and wanting to vomit. I hate the that. bully <laughs> thing is, is how I picture it. Right. Oh, that's no? awful. Just, just I've me. never seen that in a bully context. No. I just saw people in like the when gross I, out context. One guy's pinned down. The other one's doing. Yeah. That. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I hit like a big dab and I get and I have it. And shit. I haven't in so long. I was smoking some like Delta eight stuff uh, like a while back. That was that was concentrate. And uh, it was it was I, I stopped doing it because it was so harsh and the vapes are so good from uh, from our boys. <laughs> this but, stuff, <laughs> but it's I such a. It. I, I I smoked that stuff. That was just okay, if I'm being honest. I was getting some stuff. Um, um, well, it's Delta Eight, from so it's not place. that not as strong. Yeah. yeah, but it's concentrate, and I was smoking huge like strings of it, oh. and uh, and and you would get this huge like hit of THC. And again, you would like salivate and have to spit. I'd be, I'd be like, I'd run to the sink. I right. ran to the sink um, uh, to, to spit. Like, like it's that much of a huge punch. I remember my girl, uh, this guy came to my house. This, too um, this guy came to my house. He was, he was visiting and he was like, hey, have you ever done dabs? This is the first time I ever did dabs. He came to my house. He's like, you ever done dabs before? And I'm like, isn't that some kind of a fucking like lame ass dance move or like, yeah. like, or like or like planking or something like <laughs> like like, like that's, that's, that's some cringy shit man no 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 he's like no 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 not that just like, he's like it's time no he's no, like, no no it's drugs it's drugs he's like, <laughs> he did he said cool that people. and i think he said something like that so i was a little sketched i was like are we talking about methamphetamine because <laughs> i i don't i don't like that at all to me that's a little sketch that's another white trash drug i'm sorry it is, it is. Adder wow skeeved out by meth it's, it's think he's up mr La -da. Like <laughs> fancy pants over here no methamphetamine in my house um please um and um but he, he's like have you ever smoked and he explains no marijuana concentrate and i'm like i how do you do that and he's explained there's like three or four ways but Long story short, the cheap, dirty way is to run, I think, butane 
through ground up mm -hmm. flour and you extract the concentrate thereby and then you're able to like scrape it up the butane it all evaporates away as butane is known to do but but you've got this oil now you scrape it up you do it in the dab rig like we've described before it's a bong but hyperheated by a, a blowtorch and instead of glass you've got aluminum or quartz is your bowl we heated that motherfucker. I, I had some wheat i had like three quarters of an ounce of wheat or something half an ounce i'm like Cook it all up, big man. You know what's up, and he did. And it made such an un, it made such an appallingly small amount of of concentrate because I because I didn't know what I was looking at. Yeah, that I was immediately angry at him. I didn't say shit because I didn't want to act. The problem was it was so hard to get half an ounce of weed. I just had procured that weed that day. This was my like weed for weeks. Yeah, and he just turned it into like such a small amount of like brown sticky shit, and yeah. I was I was, I was like I'm not gonna make a big deal out of this because he's gonna think I'm cheap. But what it is is it's gonna be hard for me to get more, so I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut. And then we hit that shit, and it was <laughs> such a fucking kick in the teeth that my girlfriend ran to her bedroom. And like overheated, had to like strip down to her underwear, turn the fan on. <laughs> and she's like hyperventilating, overheating, ah, 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 can't breathe. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm as stoned as her and I'm trying to comfort her and, uh, and I'm spitting everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had such a bad spit experience and I've taken plenty of dabs, but I've never dealt with that. I salivate, God damn it. Yeah, I don't and, know what uh, causes the overheating effect though, because dab sweats are like notorious and it it's, I think it must just be that many cannabinoids hitting your body at that time my or something theory, it's just my, too, no human was meant to consume that much at once my, my theory is that you are hitting your lungs with with uh it's either the hot air or okay. or or specifically that hot kind of vapor and you're having um a reaction to that because your body right. thinks that maybe it's damaged its lungs and it's it's like having an involuntary sort of reaction of some kind i think it's that which is a little right. alarming if you think about it <laughs> yeah, i don't yeah. because, than because, the alternative. i say that because i've never had that overheating melting down reaction after taking in marijuana in any, any other way yeah you know no what same. i mean and and i've gotten a lot of it in a lot of different ways but yeah mm -hmm. that was the first time i ever did dabs and i was immediately like holy shit how because we, we'd done such a tiny speck of this shit right <laughs> it was like what the Fuck, we got a whole jar. Now you're looking at this little... <laughs> Holy Now you're shit. looking at it like, it's oh my god. Gold, that's a... Jerry, gold. <laughs> that's that's got to be 2 grams. <laughs> yeah, it made like a gram and a half or or so. I don't really remember exactly, but it was like a significant amount. And uh and and man, I was like that's how you do weed because my and look, the I wanted to get high because I love getting like out of my mind high and then playing an adventure video game or a role playing video <laughs> right. game. Because I want to slay the dragon. I want to for real or a board game. Anything you can zone out. <laughs> of. And like, like I, I'm getting super duper baked to play Tarkov because it's so like, you know, you're sitting there clicking for hours. For fucking right. hours. I'm in Woody, the now. new hideout is tremendous. I don't know if you've seen the 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 level three shooting range, but it has a mini game built in where it pops up targets everywhere at random while three targets slide around at different distances and you're timed and scored and you're like ping 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 you get anything it, for it no i, I think it's just i think it practice. trains skill it does train skill it trains your shooting oh, skills and stuff i didn't know and that. then there's also a gym now and i've seen a lot of I got people that build gym. the gym and break their arm <laughs> i got the Wait, full you can gym. break your arm in the gym yeah. it's just like gta so in gta they had this concept and you you have like a hexagon on your screen and then a larger hexagon is shrinking toward it and you have to click stop while it's within like the margins of the the one that was stationary. GTA has the exact same game. It's how you like work out in there, and it's hard to like do it perfectly. But yeah, if you really bug it up, you you break your arm. But then like healing your arm also gives you like skill, right? right. So like everything's a plus no matter how it goes. <laughs> yeah, they added a lot of stuff to to this wipe. I'm just loving it so much. I, I took a full wipe off, and I this one got me back with a vengeance. Like I can't. I can't get away from it. I'm just playing 10, 12 hours <laughs> when I have the time. I'm taking a, I wanted to play Dark Tide. Kind of miss that. I want to play. No, Dark we're going Tide. back to Dark Tide. I promise. Like they'll. I believe in that. That. I believe in. It worked on their last game for years. So 
it's a good track record of some stuff changed not to go into the whole thing but they got bought by a chinese company then it's oh i didn't know that eh, maybe the track record doesn't, doesn't mean as much as it could have <sighs> it's saddening well i probably it's not everyone's this kevin mccarthy stuff has been entertaining me to, to no end if people don't know U.S. government has three branches. One of them is divided in two. The House of Reps is one of those. Cool. The first thing that they have to do, even to get sworn in, is choose a Speaker of the House. That's the name of the leader for the House of Representatives. And it's been Nancy Pelosi for the Democrats. And before that, I think Paul Ryan for the Republicans. In any mm. case, there isn't one right now. Kevin McCarthy tried mm. to get it when Paul Ryan ran. But Kevin McCarthy is a below average speaker and you know he got up on the news and said the benghazi investigations which is fake and designed to make hillary look bad for a presidential run and everyone is like we can't have this fucked art as our leader so he lost and paul ryan became the leader well now it's his turn it's his turn the trouble is the republicans have a very small majority and the Democrats are voting for a Democrat, as they would traditionally do. The Republicans are voting for a couple different Republicans. He needs 218 votes. And I think he keeps getting like 201. And like 20 Republicans are voting against him. One vote goes to Donald Trump. A couple go to another guy like Donaldson or something like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Summer jokes. In any case, they've held this vote to choose their speaker 11 times now. And the Republican has come in second to the Democrat all 11 times. He hasn't won a single time yet. He has moved into the speaker's office, presuming. Oh, that, no. Yeah. Matt Gates is up there like, we need to evict this guy. He's a squatter in the speaker's office, which apparently is pretty dope. And uh, oh, yeah. And and the, you know, they're like, why did they allow him to move into this job he's not going to win he definitely doesn't want him to be the Matt Gates is against him and uh the government is pretty much not functioning right now like we can't so, approve any spending go ahead i saw a photo today i guess of them arguing over this and um aoc is in the background Laugh. laughing oh the dems love this shit. that's the only that's the only way you're going to get me care about this shit. If you bring her, if you bring her that sexy photo? ass into the fold. <laughs> then, then, then I, I can pay attention now. Yeah. The Demo Ted Lou, who's a, another Democrat. I think he's from Hawaii, but I'm not positive. He's photographed like bringing popcorn to the <laughs> to the thing so he can watch and laugh at the Republicans because they can't seem to agree upon a leader. What happened is this, and this is maybe my bias coming through, but on the Republican side in particular, there's an affection or a, um, what is it called? An affinity for leaders who just like are a Molotov cocktail that you're throwing into Washington, D.C. You might mm. describe Donald Trump that way, Matt Gates that way, Lauren Boebert, Marjorie Taylor Greene. These are all people who are, I'll call them independent thinkers. Radicals. Radicals, right. just throwing a Molotov cocktail into D.C. Well, now there's at least 20 of them who won't fall in line. And who would rather have a non-functioning government than Kevin McCarthy as Speaker of the House? And it's we're watching it play out. This hasn't happened for a hundred years. I, for a hundred years, the first vote has always been what they needed to get their guy. And <laughs> well, good. Now, I like it. I, I I just you know what you know what's going to happen. Uh, that it's going to affect us in our day to day life because of this. Nothing. Me either. Me either. Yeah. Nothing at all. It won't matter. It will not matter to us in the slightest whether they work this out tomorrow or not till next fucking year. We won't. Oh, is that shit it. still going? Yeah, eleven votes. It. They still don't yeah. have a guy. I for me, this is as impactful as two YouTubers beefing with each other. Oh yeah, I like watching it. But <laughs> Just, it well, I agree with that. I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I guess in theory, eventually it'll be a problem, but but. Uh, Speaking I of YouTubers we'll bickering, out. did you okay. see that Dylan Dennis snubbed, uh, um, 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 uh, what's his <laughs> name, uh, the black boxing guy, um, what's, his, what's his name, KSI, yeah, Dylan Dennis, like, there's, there's, they have, they have I literally big thought match. you were making up names doing it, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> the, first that, that one, the first one, the first one I did as well, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 an, an actual <laughs> YouTube drama I'll go to now, this will be, so here's what happened, KSI, um, huge YouTuber, streamer, everything. Also, uh, an accomplished boxer. Um, 
making tons doing that. Uh, it has this fight, had this fight coming up against Dylan Dennis, a big jujitsu guy back in the day, kind of palled around with Conor McGregor, made a name for himself in MM, MMA a little bit, but he's a bit of a joke there. He got fucking 10 aided by Errol Hawani on his own show recently. Like he goes on the show, Errol tries to shake his hand. He won't shake his hand. Errol called him a liar and a bitch to his face, made fun of his fake teeth to his face. It's it was Dylan a, it, it was a 10 8. Fucking Ariel on Dylan Dennis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and in the interview, he was like, I'll take fucking, t- I don't know what he said, but like 8,000 fucking to one odds that you that Dylan Dennis doesn't even fight. That the, It's not even a real fight. This is a fraud. Sure enough, he pulls out 14 days before the fight or something like that. And his reason is like, he's unprepared. They're like, why are you pulling what? out? I'm not, I'm unprepared. I don't have a coach. I haven't been training. I'm not ready. He was never intending to fight. It was a fucking scam just for clout. Oh, and, uh, it, it, you know, meanwhile, KSI is over there like out an opponent. They go to some other YouTuber. I, I feel bad that I don't know the good YouTuber who stepped up and was great. like, yeah, I'll fight KSI, who is a ferocious individual, by the way. Nobody wants to fight KSI. He will oh, fuck oh. your shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He trains like, this like other guy's- no other. He's a very yeah. good boxer in the YouTube world. <laughs> yeah, I said the same yeah. thing. He's the guy. He is the YouTube boxer. Like Jake Paul or Logan. Yeah. The he beat Logan, Paul right? He's the guy who beat Logan. Is like if you have obviously different time, classes of people, but as far on, as what, you, what, actual what were we saying, Josh? I was just gonna say the thing about YouTube boxers is if you have enough time, which YouTubers do, and have enough unnecessary resources, which YouTubers do, you're probably gonna be good at whatever you put yourself at. So like with Paul and them, it's like they're they they have the resources to be good. They might just not have that dog in them. That's where it all comes down to. <laughs> I mean, Jake is a, Jake is a legitimate tough guy. Yeah, Jake Paul's got a dog in him. He's a he's and I think a, KSI does as well. Yeah. yeah well, so I, I, KSI tied Logan Paul in the first fight. I personally thought Logan won, but it was so close. I didn't object to the draw. I thought KSI won. Okay. Yeah. And and I think a reasonable person could go either way. And I didn't watch. In the second one, Smart. KSI only won because like Jake Paul hit him when he was down. Like I think he took a knee and Jake Paul just kept hitting him. Just frowned upon. Lost some points, and that's how. And Jake, Paul, I'm sorry, KSI won on points because he got fouled. So, am I saying Jake? I'm sorry, it's Logan Paul. I'm I'm saying this all wrong. Logan Paul lost on points because he mm. fouled him, and it's one of those things where like. Street fight rules. He kicked his ass. He had him down. <laughs> he had him rules. down and he was hitting him and he was wide open. But boxing rules, he lost points because but of it. And therefore even boxing points. rules, like a boxing fan, I imagine, just like an MMA fan, would see like a clean knockout of a guy as a much more impressive victory than like, man, that guy was neck and neck and then he took a penalty, thank God, and that bumped him over the top. Like, no one's that blown away by that. No one's like, yeah, it was a huge win for Paul over KS or whatever order it went in. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I agree with what you're saying, but to play devil's advocate, when the score gets posted and the memory fades four years later, KSI beat Logan Paul. Yeah, true. That seems so. like a good thing for Logan, or because they're both YouTubers, they both love to box. They've probably done like multiple bouts now, right? Yeah, but dude, yeah. Pull, anyway, uh, the guy pulled out. Super scummy oh. move. Um, yeah, he's known, he's known to be a scummy guy. Like the whole thing was intentional. Like he he only accept, he accepted the fight knowing he wasn't going to take it, and he rode the 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 fight hype train to like increase his own clout. Uh, and and man, if, if y'all don't watch Ariel Hilwani. Now that his like uh, ESPN contract isn't isn't is is over and he's doing Showtime or whatever it is, I might have that like a little mixed up, but I think that's it. He's cursing. He's saying whatever the fuck he wants. He's calling everybody out. He's eating everybody's fucking lunch. Nobody takes somebody down better within six hours of them stepping out of line than Ariel fucking Hawani. He will murder you. It is so good. And, and if you if you, to your face, the the Dylan Dennis interview is just funny. Like, like he wouldn't shake his hand at like at the beginning. He's like, "You're not gonna shake my hand. You're really not gonna shake my hand. That's a bitch move." <laughs> and he's saying this to a professional fighter, like jujitsu champion, badass motherfucker. As far as like, you know, normal human the, beings go. All the fighters say Ariel Hawani is like dirty. He's a liar. He creates news by talking shit. All. The- I never see it. And whenever he gets called out, he's able to articulate his point in such a way that he seems like he's right. I'm like, man, why is he so universally despised and seemingly always in the right? How is this happening? But that's what's that's how I <laughs> maybe, see it. 
maybe there's stuff he's done that's wrong that I haven't seen. I don't want to like come off as an aerial apologist if he's some bad guy and I don't know it. But to my eyes, all I've ever seen was him not getting a fair shake from Dana White because I think he like released some like unreleased information a long time ago about a fight that was going to happen. Oh, and he like he like oh, it turns out Brock's going to fight for the belt or whatever he leaked. And like Dana didn't like that. And then like since then he's been kind of banned from like coming there and doing his fucking job. Like he's not in the he's not at the events, Taylor. Like the biggest journalist in MMA is banned from the events. He's not allowed to go. He's not allowed to be there at the press conferences. <laughs> it's weird. He lives yeah. in America, right? He's the biggest <laughs> one. Like he's the main his show is called the MMA Hour. <laughs> he's called the MMA Hour. And he's not allowed to every go. All right, so so every time there's a ma- like a big card coming out, well, that doesn't seem like, oh, every fighter on the card will be on his show the week leading up to it. All of them, like, like the right. main event guys. So like, he's like he's them. Joe Rogan adjacent, basically. Like yes, they all yeah. know each other. Oh, and he he despises Brent. He called out Brendan Schaub, <laughs> and and he's so nitty gritty with his details. It feels like like that time Donald Trump like had done his research when he was sharp. When he, he had like all the Clinton accusers showing up to the fucking <laughs> like, like like pressers, <laughs> yeah, he got Juanita Broderick on the stage. Yeah, yeah. Ariel Hawani's diabolical. It's it, it's good stuff. Um, I, I highly recommend people watching some of that stuff. It's That's good. what I like about yeah. modern sports. Like it, it you, I watched sports in the eighties and nineties. All you did is see the game and maybe a post game interview. Right, and mm. in hockey, sometimes they interview guys between periods, and that's it. Now. Now they're like on YouTube. They're they're dropping Twitter videos. They're beefing with each other on Instagram. There's so much more to see if you're a stats and stories guy like me. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. Like when he went after Brennan, I think Brent Schaub like said something about him, and then Ariel went back at him, and then Brent Schaub was like, "Why you keep coming at me?" He and Schaub in his like. He has this rant. His rants are thirty minutes long though. When he tears somebody apart, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm coming at you." I'm not going to stop because I owe you a couple. And if you're smart, you'll just keep my name out of your fucking mouth because I'm going to say whatever I want, whenever I want about you. Not just who? you. This is Errol Hawani saying this to Brendan Shaw. He's like, yeah. and I'm going to say it about you. And I'm going to say it about that bitch Callan that works with you. And I'm going <laughs> to say it that bitch Noah over there that does your crypto shit in the background. And that motherfucker Mike on the camera. He like knows the unnamed intern <laughs> in the background. He's like, he's like, he's like all well, of them. Anita, they, you're made. You think yeah, you got dirt on yeah. her? Right. And, and he's cursing the whole time. He's, he, he's like, little Bill with the gimpy leg and suck my dick. Your uncle Mike. <laughs> Can get it up the air. <laughs> like, like your your fucking priest, Pastor Phil, suck my dick too. Balls in your ass. Like, like he's just going off on him, and it's it's uh it's fun. I I like seeing him do it because every time he does it, he has like a goddamn. He's got sources and a bibliography and a witness or two with him too. He's 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 literally mm-hmm. pulling up like screenshots of his of text messages. He's like, oh, they said that. Well, here's my text messages. Here's where here. See, he's lying right here. <laughs> Here's another lie he's telling. Boop. Just show it, go folding you through his lies. Is that Great. guy, you said he hated Brendan Schaub? He's yeah, not even a, a fighter, right? Not anymore. Not anymore. He was a heavyweight yeah, 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 fighter. He, he doesn't he's even fight anymore. He's, he's a heavyweight fighter slash Joe Rogan's friend. <laughs> but he's he not relevant podcasting. in the MMA world, right? He is incredibly relevant. He has he, 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 is, he is a big part of the MMA iceberg, if you will. He, okay. he has his own MMA show. He has a, he has a large podcast with... with Callum that's sort of MMA based. It's very MMA based. Is he liked? He is he not well liked? He, no? he is rather despised by a very um, um, vigorous group of individuals. There's a there's a subreddit for the fighter and kid. And uh, over there, if you start reading some of the posts, you might think that somebody fell on their keyboard. You might not understand their language because they got Shogs. their own. Yeah, 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 yeah. You might be trogging to uh, trogging, <laughs> trogging the way might, to the chilies, dog. Yeah, you might be trogging along and not understand what truck. they're talking about over there. You know, you everyone's taking truck walks. Yeah, <laughs> truck walks. I'm not lost. I'm lost. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you what's up, because because what happened was Brennan Schaub, uh, a married man, was asking this um, sort of pod MMA comedy podcast adjacent young lady who's got a show of her own with a couple other ladies. Yo, you. Will you wog me to my truck? And, she, and she, she's, want, she's wanting him to like go in the parking lot. He's trying to get this chick to go suck his dick in the parking lot. And so she goes on her her show and she's like, yeah, there's this guy. He's like a, I don't want to get into specifics, but 
He's like an ex MMA fighting podcast host. Who's a big, <laughs> he's a big dumb Mexican. His name and, uh, he's a, just oh. a big galoot. <laughs> and uh, and he was trying to get, get me to walk him to his truck to I don't know work some stuff out in the front seat. I guess. And this is a married man. Just so again, not being specific, kid. she calls him out right. And so now, like 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 those people have have like made that part of the mythos and the way they talk Brennan Schaub trips over certain words and he and he says certain words in a very particular kind of way so they mimic that and they incorporate that incorporate that into every sentence that they write sometimes <laughs> so you'll have to like read it phonetically and try to hear his voice to understand what does said. he have an accent Chabanese they call you. it Chabanese yeah, yeah. So, job, oh, he doesn't, so he doesn't a, have an accent. He just talks. No, like he has CTE. Yeah, he has CTE. Yeah. So that okay. causes yeah. so, an accent. So there, there's a, there, so there was this time, I think, and, and, and I might butcher this a little bit. I think he challenged some people to like a sprint and uh, and like he faked an injury to get out of his bet in the sprint. And he said he blew out both quads. <laughs> and, and, which, which, <laughs> I'm glad you laughed. <laughs> because you play sport. You know. You know. Let me say this. How'd you and, blow both out, buddy? Were you jumping? Were you leaping? He was you never blow both out. And blowing one out is a, an incredible injury. It's traumatic. It's a huge fucking deal. Quad. He, had, he had an NFL guy on his show <laughs> later on. After he told the lie and gotten through it and everything and like got welched on his bet. Um, he had an NFL guy on, you know, and, and he was like, yeah. And this guy's talking about being a fucking gridiron warrior for yeah, real NFL playing, athlete. playing in the fucking NFL or whatever. And then he's like, yeah, I blew up both my squad, both my quads. And this guy goes, the fuck? what? He kind of makes a little face, like a little, yeah. huh? like, ah, yeah. what, what? <laughs> like, like you could tell it caught him, but he didn't want to call Brendan. Yeah, did you owe someone money? Stuff. Cause otherwise he didn't <laughs> well, he knew he was he knew it, it's but the, no. Taylor asked if Brennan Schwab is relevant or if he's liked. Yeah, I would right. say people love to hate him, right? People yeah. hate watch that guy he's and pay Nickelback. attention to him. And okay. he's Nickelback, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, but that's yeah. like in the world of fighting, it seems like that's that's not even a bad position to be in because it's like he's it's different. almost understood there ha there are like heels, right? It's better it than is. irrelevant, but it's no fun. I think he would he wishes people liked him and he's trying, but. Oh my! One little slip and and oh, so they're not. Uh, most people aren't. What you mean is like most people aren't even like hating him loved. tongue in cheek. He no. wants to be loved and he's hated. That's the situation. So, uh, what I've learned. He recently, wants to be relevant, serious. He wants to be thought of as a comedian and a journalist. He wants to be Joe Rogan. Yes. He wants to be Joe Rogan so goddamn bad. Um, his comedy special is called what? The Last Gringo or the or the yeah, some, uh, something something like Poppy. that. Gringo Poppy. Gringo Poppy. Gringo Poppy. It is. <laughs> It has been mocked and ridiculed by every comedian you've ever who, who's ever spoken about it. It's kind of like a running joke that it's Oof. the worst one ever made. Like, yeah. like, and, and it's also a running joke that look, how did it get made? Right? Like, 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 how did he get that special? Like, 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 what strings are being pulled for him, right. etc. Who and is like it with like Netflix, like a real company? I mean, no, show, it's what? with Showtime, and the second one was YouTube. Yeah, it was but... a show. It, I mean, it, those it, are real companies. Taylor, it is humiliatingly it's, bad. It's pretty bad. <laughs> it, I don't think really, I, I it couldn't wouldn't watch pass. It if it's that embarrassing. I watch a lot of comedy. It, it's you it's couldn't get that act on it at, at any like like the, the comp the comedy place I go to here in Atlanta. Like you would not be able to get on there. Like like yeah. like that place I went to see Josh Blue at. Like like you wouldn't be able to get on stage with that. Like the the least funny guy there that night was was hilarious. Everybody makes you laugh. That's that's going on stage. Can, can and you guys at a big comedy cop club? Like He's Josh, awesome. can you compare him to a comedian for me? Uh, like, is there another comedian you could compare him to? That's not an open mic, or probably not, because it's a lot of like, "Hey, I'm dating a Latina girl. Ha <laughs> ha! Isn't that funny?" And it's like, "Where's the joke in that?" Like, <laughs> he just he didn't like, include punchlines. That's no, you know, people don't realize no. how important the punchline is. <laughs> nobody knows. No. Yeah, nobody knows. It's, he tries it's, to do some it's race the humor. Crux of it. Yeah. He tries to do some race humor and 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 and, and he pantomimes a little hey, bit. And any black people in the house? Any black, black people? <laughs> no, no, like Mexican jokes. He tries to fall into that sort of like. Well, look, look it. Yeah, because I'm like, Asian... uh, you know, I am man. I'm a USC fighter, and I also go on a podcast. You know, is that what, what he like? needs? Is Mike <laughs> have you ever seen mike tyson's one man show on hbo when yes. he's, he's telling those stories and he's sweating profusely like doubt like toweling himself no. off as he tells a 
powerful story. He tells his story. Taylor, right. it is art. Mike I, bet I Tyson, love it. I like Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson's one man show. He this is when he was chubby. He's he's this is before his most recent fights and stuff. Like like this he's he's not this at his best. It looked like he needed the money, and that's why he was doing these shows. And it's what revived his career, in my opinion. I think that's what did it. He is on that mic on the stage, like powerfully, like right. laying this thing down. He's telling great stories, and he's funny. Mm -hmm. Mike Tyson is not a comedian, but he is funny because he's likable, and he's telling you about a funny thing that happened. Yeah. And his and he viewpoint a silly on that funny yeah. thing is funny. And, right. and because he's being honest about his viewpoint, it comes off as genuine and real, and you're like, oh, man, that's how Mike sees things. That's hilarious. It is, it is the opposite of everything Brendan Schaub is. It is the opposite. Everything he has is like, like this contrived. He's trying like, so inorganic. hard. Inorganic. Yeah. I'm yeah. in bizarre world because I saw Brendan Schwab tell a story of him losing a fight. His first one thought was funny. Was, okay, His I'm not alone. His first special is funny. His first special is genuinely – There's okay, it's rough. Don't get me wrong. He's a new comedian. So yeah. like it, it's not polished, but it's kind of funny. This fucking last and one, was I was just like, what? Are you okay? <laughs> well, in any case, the man, the man, the man has his, uh, has, uh, Basically, enough on his plate logging people to the I, drugs and stuff. Uh, yeah. So I, 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 I would... The internet likes to manipulate recently. And like, you can see it in subreddits, like with wings, all those people, you know, DSP, there's so many lol cows that the internet is now taking it an extra step farther with and making devoted subreddits and devoted Kiwi farm posts and devoted 4chan, this, that, and the other thing, oh, if I'm not full discords. And then they're now getting so dark and deep with it that they're finding people mm -hmm. that are, you know, retarded on TikTok or people that are like level one or two autistics and they're manipulating the entirety Wizards, of their life. Call them. Yeah, into like saying fucking wild shit. And it's just like, I remember when internet trolling was kind of funny, not let's ruin a mentally disabled person's life. <laughs> yeah, internet trolling you, should be funny. It shouldn't you shouldn't be like getting someone fired or like no. destroying their life or like causing <laughs> problems for them at home. That that's not trolling. That's just have have y'all seen someone. this place have y'all seen this place rules on HBO? I have not. What's it about? It. I think so. All right. So this place rules is Andrew uh, Callahan. I oh, think you mentioned the Channel Five. The News. Channel Five News, formerly All Gas No Breaks. Mm -hmm. It's his documentary um, around the 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 2020 election is is sort of where it's framed around that that whole time period. Him traveling the country, going to rallies, going to events and stuff. Damn, um, striking and, and, while and, the iron's hot. Well, I mean, you know, it's it's been made through the whole. Anyway, why, why are you being mean? What is this? <laughs> it's about it's about the beginning of 2020 and the late end of 2019. No, it's like 2023. It's about, okay. it's, it's about the January 6th thing. How did the oh, okay. camera end up over there? I feel like it January 6th what year? Uh, 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 what do you mean of what year? No, I was just what? establishing it was three years ago. Okay. <laughs> was it already? I'm just being it's sick. really good. It's really good. Um, it is bizarre, you know, in its own sort of like hectic kind of way. But um, it I don't know. I saw definitely saw a lot of footage that I hadn't seen before. And um, and I just like him. I, I, li yeah. I, I like I like his show. He is a funny guy. Does he and he always gets good interviews. You're He's just a bit ad, of a Google. <laughs> it's like, it's like, <laughs> like I, I don't I feel like it's going Peaking over up. there for some reason. But you want to turn it the other way. I know because now because now your head is behind Code PKA on lock and load. That's like Kyle's which honestly, that? Zach, that graphic should say Code Jizz as well. <laughs> Look at that, perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I like that show a lot. Uh, it's on HBO. I'll say this though: if if you if you watch it, um, you're going to be very confused when it begins. I was so confused. I thought I had begun this thing in the middle somewhere because it begins without an introduction at all. He doesn't say my name is this and that and this is this. He it begins with like this guy who has Joker tattoos on his face, um, and he's like a an a, an Instagram um, guy, and he's gonna fight another Instagram guy over their porn star girlfriend, and it's all kind of for clout, uh -huh. and 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 you stay with them for like ten fucking minutes, and I was about to turn this shit off, <laughs> and and. and 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 then they literally have a, a boxing match and one of them gets knocked down and then it starts cutting to like 
cool like footage of like the election and Donald Trump saying stuff and there's a little montage and then he comes in and so, and, and a guy asked him he's like so why did you start it with you know joker face and and easy money and their whole fight and he's like you know i i feel like it's it's very similar to you know the election how it's fight and i was it didn't make any sense to me that's the no, weirdest it, part of the whole thing it made no sense but it's a, like a is he he's telling like a disjointed narrative joke where it's like well, you pick something that isn't at it, all no it wasn't a joke of the he, thing and then plays I, yeah. I, I i think he thought it was good storytelling but um it, it wasn't great. That's my. That that's one of my major complaints. But I. I did like, dude. When he goes to the QAnon family, it's it's the <laughs> one where the the guy shows the Chipotle logo and he says that this is the the sign of a boy lover, and uh, and uh, what he, is he the Chipotle the, logo? It's a chili pepper. It's a chili because pepper. the the boy lover logo is like, isn't it like a a triangle or a heart? Like in itself, over oh, and over. it is kind of like a little upside down triangle. Yeah, in the, the you can find those on the FBI side. Like, uh, no, no, that's what it is. The, the, a triangle. Right. That's in well, itself. maybe he yeah. had a point on that that little part. Maybe <laughs> no, Chipotle it doesn't look like a pepper. Is... Chip. No, don't. <laughs> here. Well, 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 maybe a, a maybe chili pepper logos, not Chipotle's per se, can sometimes be interpreted that way. However, the rest of it's nonsense. And what was great was this is the guy who had the brainwashed wife and kids. Who were like going along with his QAnon like theories and stuff, and afterwards, after January sixth, after months go by and Q and the QAnon thing like fizzles out and everybody realizes it was bullshit, he goes back and he has dinner with those people and he interviews that same little kid sitting in front of the mom and dad again and the kid goes, "Yeah, I think you know my dad felt really silly when he realized that Q was." you know, just making all that stuff up and it was all real and, and none of it was real. And, you know, we all wasted our time, you know, just <laughs> worrying about it so much. And, you know, I, I was homeschooled throughout all of that. And so we're, you know, we, we didn't have any friends and the mom is going, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, like nodding along. It's and the dad sits there and like eats his fucking crow. He sits there while his <laughs> 10 or 12 year old son is like, yeah, I think my dad really got confused and misled buy some some stuff online and he led us all astray into the q stuff and, and really wasted a lot of his time and his dad is just sitting there like man that's it. you summing it up well son <laughs> <laughs> you really you really summing it up well and concisely thank you son i, I mean if that's like a band-aid boy do it right <laughs> if that's i mean honestly if that's the response Bad. of the dad then he's more respectable than most people because it, it, it is a lot. It is infinitely harder to convince someone they've been fooled than it is to fool someone. He ate and so if he actually like came to the had a come to Jesus moment and was like, "Yeah, I got hoodwinked a bit," like that's way more than most people can say. That's also <laughs> where they and that that was in Atlanta, and then they go a few blocks over, and it's the it's where they burnt down the Wendy's after that guy was shot, and uh, and that's when they interview those that those four black guys, and they're like, "It was actually a Caucasian." Male burnt down that Wendy's. Yeah, yeah hell, yeah. She undoubtedly that? true. By the way, yeah, it was <laughs> a white woman who they loved were there. burning they down fast food establishments. No. Such violent people. I, I believe them. I believe them one hundred percent. They they said they saw it happen, and then the other guy goes, "Yeah, for real, I fucks with that foe for foe." <laughs> <laughs> they were like, "We would." I believe. Like, we, we, all I believe we know him. for sure is that that guy didn't do it. I, look, I believe look, him. I, look, there was a man who was there, and he said a white woman did it. And and look, I. Picture this, Taylor. There's like a, there's a riot. There's some Antifa people there. Somebody's gonna throw a Molotov. Who's gonna be the one who's got enough like privilege, enough balls to throw the first Molotov? Who's gonna throw that first stone? But a white woman. Damn. They're yeah. always <laughs> ask Dana White. Ask Dana White. White <laughs> woman will come first thing. First thing. Yeah. Coming with the slap. Tracks. Coming I mean, with you can Molotov. find all those all those videos of those fucking white women throwing Molotovs. They're <laughs> always, always good. Absolutely. See one on Zach, Facebook. Show me pictures of white women throwing Molotovs. <laughs> He's on, and after that, show me the Speaker of the House's office. I thought I like mimed that well enough earlier, but I didn't. And then show us the old Speaker of the House's tits. <laughs> I would like to see Miss Pelosi's <laughs> milkers. One show. I would like to see Christiana Hendricks. 
or how, whatever how you pronounce her name. No, you know and, what? Uh, Dealer's choice: Nancy Pelosi, Christina Hendricks, or Ben Shapiro's sister. It's your choice. Ooh, Ooh. Abby, but Abby, big tits are coming in. in also, the cell phone lady. You can't, you can't bring Abby into the quiz. Actually, not Ben Shapiro's <laughs> sister. She didn't do anything to deserve she's any the of this. One. I was but say, she's can, the only can, one can that's like trying to do, seemingly like trying to do her own thing online and not get messed. What did we get? We asked for a lot of things. What? What is this? This Look at this. That's a white woman with a Molotov. Boom. Kyle That's is a million percent me. vindicated. I am happy to admit <laughs> defeat. When this I'm when I'm confronted it. with information that proves me wrong, I'm happy to to come around. And <laughs> yep, Kyle eat wins. Eat crow this one. like that man who believed that. Chili I'm eating was, uh, that. I'm eating that crow just like the man who believed that Chipotle was not only making delicious burritos, but they were shoving them up the children's asses. <laughs> yep, that's right. <laughs> Man, that would Man, be it's... devastating if I learned Chipotle was a child rape ring. <laughs> oh, <look laughs> I'd have to like be like, damn, how much did I support this? It was okay, Chipotle look, gate all along. Look how cool wow. Looks. The look only photo so... with no frontal. <laughs> no, no, look how suggestive it is. Look how suggestive this is with the with the Washington uh, monument in the background all phallic. <laughs> And look, ah. I bet she's got her left kitty out of one of those uh those milker shirts that they give the pregnant oh, ladies. Yeah. What do you call those? Do you think she's wearing panties? Is it just no, a no way. Shirt? No way. Yeah, maternity shirt. Thank you, Woody. <laughs> yeah yeah you I know like whenever i see like offices and like dc and stuff they really just look out of date to me like, that first yeah from, yeah yeah from, like, that, dude the Dave Chappelle, yesterday we have no clue they Chappelle's like they complained about trump doing some stuff that wasn't so bad like <laughs> god <laughs> damn I can't even know okay reason. Thank you, Jack. Honestly, this should be a part of the show. <laughs> Who wants to look at our mugs the whole time? We just go, Zach, your new job is just to find Zach. pictures of clothed, big breasted women. Yeah. We're going to look at my, we're gonna look at my, thing. we're going to look at a, a, a montage of my favorite uh, women from sci-fi and fantasy films. So first show me uh, Jolene Blaylock. Uh, work on that. It, it, that, that. That'll be the next one. And then after that, show me, um, um, from uh, from Lord of the Rings, I want to see Liv Tyler. I want to see Liv Tyler, but I want to see some like behind the scenes stuff. What are you talking about? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm super into Liv oh, Tyler. Bring Abby in. Because <laughs> I'm super into Liv Tyler. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I am. When she's got those ears, oh my Poor fucking Abby God, Shapiro so just hot. trying to do whatever she does, and because I, her sister's Ben Shapiro, Abby, people don't have a OnlyFans, or am I crazy? It, there is nothing. The she reason that I doesn't. <laughs> this is a very attractive lady. I, I think. I, I mean, I Ben Shapiro is an table. Orthodox Jew, so I assume assume she's an Orthodox Jew also. And I and uh, OnlyFans. What, what gave it like, away? That's kosher. Well, it, uh, what gave it away was her brother being like the most pro-Israel man on earth in the twenty fourth century. Oh, I, I meant from the. Oh, uh, so see, see, Jolene Blaylock's in the one in the back, though, buddy. I know you're trying hard, but but she's the one covered up by that average-looking woman. With the with the meaty, <laughs> that, that small breasted woman with the buck teeth, she's blocking the hottie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so I want to see Jolene Blaylock, but I don't want to see her in Star Trek per se. Zach. I just want to see like get your head in the game, man. <laughs> yeah, like don't show me Christina Hendricks from that that show Ten Star. They had her in like a button up fucking flannel. Like nobody wants to see that shit. Mm, I want to no, see the but shower I bet that scene. Flannel struggled. <laughs> oh. Well, flan had fucking steel buttons. Flannel's a hardy material. Like, like, what's better, corduroy? corduroy? Um, um, yeah, that, that's a tough material. Oof, you know, I, I think, I think denim. I think so denim is the time. hardiest of of fabrics. If you ask, and me. the most utilitarian. You can wear mm. jeans anywhere, yeah. job interviews, funerals. You know, <laughs> anywhere you don't care what people think, you can wear depends. jeans. <laughs> it depends. Whose funeral is. I've been to a funerals that had the, the, the where there were jeans worn. You know, it's 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 a little uh. It's a little un, uh, unseemly. That is, that's pretty trashy. You shouldn't wear jeans at a funeral. You I've can't like slap on some fucking khakis. I saw jeans at a funeral. I mean, a wedding. That's yeah. almost that... as bad as like shorts at a was wedding. Was it a biker wedding? <laughs> no, it was a Jeremy wedding. Oh, Jeremy got a house. Jeremy got a house. It's, it's a little bit of a struggle though, because like apparently they had so many of those like low income bastard white trash babies that they were getting like a lot of government money, like for each one to live in like whatever housing they were in before. Um, so now because they're like taking on a mortgage, all that money's cut off. Plus, you know, I don't know what a mortgage is. Fifteen hundred dollars. I think theirs is roughly. So it just mm. seems like a, a, a big struggle for him. But I'm yeah. sure he's he's a smart they, guy. So I'm sure he calculated all that. <laughs> they lost <laughs> the money because they bought a house. I, I yeah, I believe I believe that it was like housing funding because they were living in uh, a certain kind of housing 
but if you move on up like like now maybe you don't get that housing fund i'm sure they're getting plenty of money per kid for like various other programs but maybe that one program in particular was uh, is no more yeah i don't don't even know how many they've had at this point it's 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 idiocracy is coming folks i promise you i promise (laughs) you how many do you think (laughs) six seven eight i don't know it's like they're They're in their litter yeah like, like, like I, don't, I don't know. I, actually, I, I'm, I'm kidding. I don't know how many there are. I think it's two or three or four. Um, What's like the that. most amount That's of children that, in your view, is acceptable if you are not Amish or like uh, farming? I think Amish so. So here's my answer. I think you can have one child per one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year of combined housely income, and anything more is. Probably not a great idea. And I'm talking about modern to modern money, right? Like like you go back 10, 20, 30 years, it's less, right? Well, like, it's like, the opposite of that, bud. The poorest person? people have the most what, kids. What I'm the saying is if you have, have, it, it, you have more children. Grand a than, year per kid. Roughly, yeah. I, I, I think that if you exceed that, then you have done something that is inappropriate. I think that you have been selfish. I think that you are a cat lady. I but think most that people are, don't ever make 150K a year. That's only then one and a half kids. kids. <laughs> oh, Com- wait, I'm sorry. Combined housing income. Combined housing. One kid per hundred thousand combined okay. housing income. That's what you get. That's that. That seems fair to me. I think that's reasonable. M- most people Living don't in- make a hundred thousand household income. Like that's that's way above. Really? Average. Most people yeah. don't combine. Then no, they don't get to have no. kids. Do, then those kids. Cl- then they're clearly not ready to have a kid, are they? You think the average household income is $100,000? That's not what I asked. I said, do you think they're ready to have a kid if their combined housing income isn't $100,000 yet? Definitely. Yeah, there are some people who They're are. ready? Yeah, I they're mean, They're financially like, ready. They're they, financially Well, fi- financially, prepared. they'll never be as ready as they should be, but that's kind of a consequence of a fucked up system where, like, they don't have the opportunity well, we're not to make changing as much the as system should. here taylor we're, just, oh, <laughs> all right? we're not me, rewriting the code we're not going to live under socialism and get that baby all of its shots fat of magic money <laughs> you've got a hundred thousand dollars per kid that kid's gonna you know what diapers fucking cost i don't and i don't ever know. all right you know how you know it's how much funny shots i want to agree with i Kyle, don't know I, <laughs> people say kids are expensive I didn't think kids were expensive at all, right? Like like diapers. Diapers cost fucking slightly more than nothing. If you can't afford diapers, you can't afford children. Baby clothes. Now this is old. This is like twenty years ago. I was fucking shocked how cheap baby clothes are. <laughs> if I buy a pair of pants, they're like forty bucks. You can get a whole goddamn sailor costume for your little boy for like nine dollars. <laughs> oh they always make a big deal out of it. <laughs> that was like a big deal. A fucking onesie is like seventy five cents, and that's what fucking babies wear all the goddamn time. Babies are cheap as fuck. If you can't afford formula, diapers, and some onesies, get your shit together. You're not even holding down a McDonald's job. <laughs> but- okay, Woody's one hundred percent right there. <laughs> like if, you can't, if, you can't, if you can't afford to feed and clothe your child, get it together. <laughs> like, and, 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 and look, it's the size of saying- like a bag of potatoes. Like you just put something on it. <laughs> Where the equation changes if you have a sick kid, that's expensive as fuck. But yeah, normal yeah, yeah, kids. Yeah. I'm not saying we should uh, we should we should like make it a law against it or anything, or we should punish those people. But but you should know that you know if you haven't achieved that, if you don't have that, and and there's other ways of achieving that rather than um, you know having a traditional sort of household where that's you and your wife live here and you combine for a hundred thousand, you could live at home with your mother. And have like a three generational household if your mother's okay with that, and a lot would be. I bet there's mm-hmm. tons of 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 like um, parents out there who would love for the thir- for, for the grandchildren to be under the same roof. And and like if that's your case, and everybody's like kumbaya on that, then like do it. That sounds that's mm-hmm. also that it's might commonplace. be that yeah, might make cultures. more sense to me than that's more than, normal than what we do like yeah, yeah most, like most countries like and, arab countries italy like Mediterranean that's more country, stable like they, and they more loving more. like like having India, the grandmother there to to, India, to yeah. be like oh whoa whoa don't hold the baby like that like she did, she's already raised babies i don't know have it seems like having someone who's done all that stuff there um to help you out and like the financial security of like the couple and like that other generation there. Presumably, this mm-hmm. place is just about paid off. You know, like, we got three generations under the roof. But you know what I'm getting at? Like that sounds sound. You're just like a piece well. of shit 
grandpa who's like in that <laughs> and you like get a the third mortgage like as you're about to die it's like, sorry everyone Good luck. <laughs> grandpa wanted grandpa wanted to get his dick wet and vivid <laughs> <laughs> big shit to the great beyond <laughs> i want to be ba- i want to be buried in a gold coffin so i'm liquidating everything <laughs> i'm gonna be ba- I, I you be can't take it with gold. you yeah, he's, he's right. in my coach. will. I requested that mean. none of you go to college. <laughs> <laughs> I paid off all your favorite universities yeah. to never take you yeah. ever because yeah. <laughs> you're a bunch of losers, <laughs> and you always will be. Thanks to your grandpa, and you what always will never to... measure up to what I was. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah, I, I don't know. Movie. That just makes sense to me. I, I've given that no thought. I just made that up sitting here. But like 100,000 a kid <laughs> seems fair. Like, 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 look, if I were planning. <laughs> Isn't that fun like, when you do that on the show? So when like you start a conversation and you're like, I don't think people should be able to have kids unless they make a hundred grand a kid. And then yeah. suddenly you have to now defend this yeah. point <laughs> as though you're like, you know what well, it is? Actually, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like something that we just so, made up. <laughs> so that's how real debate works. In a real debate, you show up and they're like, all right, you will be arguing. Yeah, it's true. You will be arguing pro. Pro N-word. Parents being disallowed. <laughs> To have more more than uh, more than one children per one hundred one hundred thousand a year gross income under penalty of law, you are pro that point. You are you are uh, against that point, and it doesn't matter how you personally feel. You have to argue the point. That's how a real debate works. Yeah, right. So Dude, like I don't know, debater? having a little improvisation and like falling into a conversation like that's just a fun little mental exercise, right? So when we argue yeah. about any politics or debate worthy thing. We should always have to debate the opposite side because that's the only true way to discern. That's what I've been doing here for ability. a decade. Yes. And it's what I do it's intermittently genius. when it's when it's funny, you know, <laughs> Dep- depending on what other people's positions are, I form my own opinion. Yeah, I've made fun of my giant and tiny dick throughout the d- years. <laughs> Whatever's funnier at the moment. Whatever, whatever the moment says. That, that's the way it always goes. Is the nature of a, a shitty, <laughs> stupid podcast. <laughs> uh, we got Patreon questions, Zach. Yeah, we'll fire those through. Let's see if they're good. Let's see if they're good. We'll oh, see. You know, you know what I uh I watched so Kyle, that movie Vice that you said was pretty good with Christian Bale, it has him pretend uh pretending to be as uh Dick Cheney. I haven't seen In, that movie. I think what I said was his portrayal of Dick Cheney was excellent. Oh, Oh, I misunderstood. I probably wouldn't have rented it if I didn't think that you recommended it because it was not a Kyle pick. It, yeah, that was not a Kyle pick, so it doesn't sully the Kyle pick. I've still got LA Confidential in my living room. Tremendous pick. Love that movie. But you watched this movie, it, I did watch it. I loved okay, it. Good. Vice. I have a stroke. No, I watched it like right away when you sent it to me. I thought LA Confidential was fucking sick. But this movie, Vice, have you guys noticed this trend that seems to be more new in films where if it is even vaguely complicated, like if there's anything to do, they will have like, like they did, I think, in Wolf of Wall Street, too, the worst part of Wolf of Wall Street. Well, they'll have, like, cutaways where someone starts explaining to you how things work. Yeah. And they have this shit in Vice where it's, like, fucking Christian Bale killing it. <laughs> killing it in his in his role. And he will just be carrying the story and everything's moving forward. And they'll say something retarded about like how bills are passed. And then there's a four minute expose where some retard, cheap Matt Damon, who I don't even dislike, the guy from uh, Breaking Bad who kills that kid. Like he starts being like, the way that bills are passed is blah, 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 blah. And then this has to happen. And something people don't know. And like, just little aside, like, like retard level, like, like, of course, they're fucking Netflix shows. So they're like the fucking Hollywood shows. So they got their little fucking lib opinions in there. They they talk about how bad the Republicans are with the bad music. And then Obama comes on screen and they literally have like jubilation yeah. music. And it's like, I'm not even mad about that. I just am like, don't fucking treat me like a retard. Like, <laughs> let, the, let the movie tell the story. And let me ascertain what I will from the film. Don't go to something very basic. And it's like, and and Dick Cheney really didn't get along with Donald Rumsfeld. And then someone goes on the side and is like, hey, 
In films now, we don't do subtext. I'm going <laughs> to exposition my way through this because the director and the writers have such little respect for the viewer that they think that studio. you can't even begin to understand this. Yeah, the directors and the writers decision. were forced to make those decisions. You, you know it. Every I would hope way. so because you'd have to be a real fucking retard to think that that shit is not jarring. Direct it actively takes you out of the film. It takes you out of feeling that things are at stake. It reminds you that the people are playing a part, that they are acting. Stop it. Stop it. If you're too fucking stupid to follow a basic ass movie, then turn it off. This shit is not complicated. Stop Taylor having these fucking asides wrong. in movies. I want to be able to watch all my movies while also surfing Reddit, and it takes a little expose <laughs> to help me keep up. I can play Age of Empires while I'm watching this shit. <laughs> it up because that's how fucking easy it is. I'm playing an in depth RTS game with fucking 60 movements a minute. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm working an economy. I'm working a military. I'm attacking four enemies at once, and I'm going, speed it up, idiots! <laughs> at the TV. I it fucking hate perfect. it. I, I absolutely, I, I'm so peeved by this trend. It, <laughs> it, it, it is the worst. Nowadays, though. It's like, the worst. Like, opinions and, wow. and context needs to be fed that heavily to your average consumer. Yeah, that was yeah. that was not a Kyle pick, but but um, I, I did see it. I did see the scene. What I saw was, um, I watch a lot of... Um, YouTube channels that'll break down a single scene from something mm -hmm. um, to to explain like acting or, or writing or, or whatever it may be. And I saw the scene where George Bush's character and Dick Cheney's character are sitting there discussing how the presidency and vice presidency would share power should Dick mm -hmm. agree to, to, to take on the, 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 the job. And he, he's like, you know, and the vice president doesn't have any power. And then, you know, he's sort of like, He's really carefully manipulating George yep. Bush and 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 and, and, and into uh, into getting exactly what he wants. And what he wanted eventually turned out just so we're all clear. I, I know some of y'all might be a little young. They set it up so they started a war with a country for no reason, and the same people who were blowing the country up were rebuilding it. Yep. So Dick Cheney's company Halliburton, they rebuild countries after you blow countries up. Dick Cheney's other company, the U.S. fucking Air Force, they blow countries up. So it yeah. was this perfect cycle with $1 trillion floating right in the middle. And it went on for, uh, I don't know, presidency or so. Yeah, the old military-industrial <laughs> complex. It, it, like, it, it and, made and all so much money that Obama good. didn't stop. <laughs> good guy like Obama got, strolled in there with his with his tan suit and was like, <laughs> This is terrible. Wait, how much money? Wait, wait. <laughs> That's no, you put too many zeros hey, you're, on uh, there. You're not okay, uh, uh, understanding how much money we're uh, he, he, uh, recount those we're, zeros. We're making. Mm -hmm. he, he had to ask twice if the, if the amount of zeros were right when they said one trillion. Like, like, <laughs> like they kept they kept that fucking shit going for a long. Not the Halliburton thing and the and the mm -hmm. and the and the no uh, the no bid contracts per se. But, you know, the war went on. And Based on I, that scene, I understand why you thought, like, it could be good. Yeah, that's And, good like, e every time Christian Bale is on screen, tremendous. Yeah. Trem and I'm I biased because he's, like, my favorite actor. I fucking love Christian Bale. I think he's Really great. good? He's awesome. Like maybe Joaquin Phoenix only... is winning me over. I'm a big Joaquin Phoenix I lately. like him, too. He's, he's, he's not got a new movie stuff, coming though. out. He's got a new thing coming out uh, where, that looks ridiculous. Let's see. Yeah. What's, what, what is it? Pull pull it up. It's, it was it interested me a ton today, but I didn't have time to read it because you know I was trying to get my hideout you know uh, built up. Is it Joker too? No, 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 no. That's a musical he's doing with um, Lady Gaga. That's going to be really interesting. They're going to have they're going to do they're going to make Joker oh, two a, a fucking musical. Yeah, I like musicals. Like like I loved um what was the one uh Sweeney Todd? I fucking love Sweeney Todd with Johnny Depp and uh, that hot ass Bellatrix Lestrange shit. Uh, 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 lady, what's it, uh, the, the real actress's name's escaping me right now? Um, but the, the the one who plays Bellatrix Lestrange in the Harry Potter movies, I yeah, think super hot. She was also in Fight Club. Um, she, she she is in uh, all the Tim Burton movies. She's like um like a Tim kind of like, she's like a like a methed out Elaine. Yeah yeah yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Helena Bonham Carter, that's her name. That's who it is. I'm yeah. glad methed out Elaine got you there. <laughs> yeah, it did. It, it really did. It really did. I got to before Zach and Google Damon? it. Taylor, I need to get you on board. His name no, is Fat, Fat Damon. Yeah. Fat Damon. <laughs> Fat you know who Fat Damon's married to? No. Uh, anybody? No. No. Kirsten Dunst. <laughs>
Kirsten Dunst, his co-star oh. in um, that uh, that Netflix movie about the gay cowboys that uh, that everybody got all twisted up about. Brokeback it, Mountain. I never no, saw no, no, that. No, 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 a new cow. It's a new gay cowboy movie. It's something, uh, hmm. something of the dog, Mountain of the Dog, Day of the Dog, something about a dog. It's Different really about dog. how the. Oh, what it's really about is how like they're in this valley and the and the mountains shadow makes looks like a dog on. The, it doesn't matter, but but what it's got Fat Damon in it. It's got Kirsten Dunst in it. And it's got uh, Doctor Strange. Uh, he's in there. What um, Cumberbatch or whatever his name is? Oh, he's in yeah. there. He I plays think Fat Damon. Damon. Fat Damon may be a better. I'm not 100 sure. Matt oh wait, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> Zach is mistaken. He's saying Matt Damon's wife is that person. That... No, no, Fat Damon. Yeah, yeah. Fat, Fat Damon is I AKA think... Meth Damon. That's I'm the going kind out of... <laughs> on a limb. Fat Damon is a better actor than real Matt Damon. Oh. <gasps> What? Absolutely. What is a what is a role that Matt Damon absolutely killed it in? Other than the fucking you know with Robin Williams. Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. Other than Goodwill Hunting. The Bourne movies. He's good in those. He he no, shows he a lot of a, he has range. He shows emotion. the Martian. He goes from angsty oh, guy who's Martian in a, he, so he goes good. from angsty guy in role. a hurry to angsty guy in a bigger hurry in no. throughout <laughs> the entire Bourne series. No, no, I the Martian. But, you didn't like that. No, no, I thought the Martian was actually great. You're disproving my point. <laughs> I really, I like. I withdraw. Zach, delete this part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Matt just, Damon's a pretty good actor. Uh -huh, Ford me, versus me. Ferrari was pretty good. I thought. I didn't uh, yeah. see that. But but, you, but actually, but, but, wait, Christian, isn't he in Saving Christian Private Ryan? Christian Bale steals it. Yeah, Christian Bale steals he's in the Saving show Private Ryan. Ryan. Oh, okay, I'm wrong. Yeah, he's, he's, he's Private wrong. Ryan. Yeah, you're right. Okay, that was a stupid take. <laughs> it's that meme. It's that meme where he's going, ah! and he's rocking back and forth. All right, all right. Zach deleted that part of the show. <laughs> no one needs to hear that. But to be fair, Matt Damon, very strong actor as well. Um, specifically in that. that it's just the, the black hole that has Ben Affleck yeah. next to him sometimes. I, I get him confused. Must be all the time. part of it. Because I will all never back down on that. Ben Affleck is a terrible actor. He takes me out of all the scenes he's in. He's terrible. I don't like him. Uh, I want to come up with a good Ben Affleck movie. You can't. So, I thought so this ben was Affleck, <laughs> Ben Affleck does The Town. Ben Affleck does a good job at He's playing. terrible in it. The Town is good to Jeremy Renner the steals the fucking show. So... But but he's good in it, nonetheless. I, I think he's good in The Town. And The Town is a very, very good Boston gangster movie if it, about bank robbers. And it's it's a, you know, machine guns in the street, shooting cops, wearing masks, like like the kind of bank robbers who would, like, go in and shit with, like, full force. It's good. It reminds me of Heat, but obviously not as good as Heat because nothing is as good as Heat. <laughs> All right? When they teach, I need to watch when they teach special forces guys how to do combat reloads, you know what they show them? Do you think they show him like a video of some special forces motherfucker being like, my name's Delta Force Commando Pete, and this is how you do a, co a combat reload? No, they show him Val Kilmer in heat reloading his M4 while he's laying the fucking law down in the streets of L.A. or wherever they are. I don't remember where it was based. Heat is a great bank robber movie. It might be the best bank robber movie. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Heat's good. Best you bank gotta, robber content is our jewelry thief guest who couldn't explain how to oh, fucking rob a jewelry store. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can, Wait, what? Yeah, what we, we had episode? we had this guy Larry Lawton on who went to he was like a master okay. jewel thief. He, he he was like tied up with a mob a little bit. I think connected. He did prison time, and uh, I, his YouTube videos are very good. He tells good stories there because I think he. He gets his his son to help him like frame up the story and maybe edit some of the like slower mm -hmm. paced stuff out. But as right. a guest, he had a hard time focusing and and following along. And because I asked him a very simple question, I like, you know, how do you rob a jewelry store? And he talked for ten minutes, and I was like, so how do you rob a jewelry store? And he talked <laughs> for like five minutes, and I was like, so how do you rob a jewelry store? And he talked for ten more seconds, and I was like, stop, stop. <laughs> I You're still like, don't know how to rob a fucking jewelry store, and I don't think we're getting anywhere, getting there anytime soon, man. <laughs> it's it, it was one of those. Shows, Is it a secret? Like, <laughs> right. It was one of those shows where there it was like a roller coaster. Where in the beginning, I was excited for his stories, <laughs> and then it became clear that he had no conception or ability, even if he wanted to tell those stories in a con, in a concise way. 
And then it started going down. I'm like, oh no. And then once like he started really frustrating Kyle actively and Woody, I was like, this is way back on the ups again. And it started way going back up because like you can We're see you can see in real time as Kyle is getting is Kyle's very patient with guests. And <laughs> He absolutely like loses his patience <laughs> near the because, end of it. Because here's what happens. He starts first. Oh he 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 starts waxing philosophical out of nowhere when oh, he's supposed no. to be. He's still supposed to be telling me how to rob the jewelry store, <laughs> but he starts he starts talking about how the gener the generational gap and how this current generation is so good with their technology <laughs> and, and how the phones, they, can they can program their phones right from their <laughs> pockets. This Did is what he's notice? doing. I think <laughs> that programming is downloading Twitter. That's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. This fucking boomer, this fucking boomer starts bragging about how his daughter's generation, they can program a phone like that. And I'm thinking like, yeah, dude, because we've had like eight of the sons of bitches. Like, and like it just says next, fucking... moron. Right. Let's get next. <laughs> and, it just, it sets itself up. <laughs> and he starts like waxing philosophical about that. And I'm just like, dude, 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 dude. Tell me about your, tell me about Mikey the nose and how he'd get you the fucking codes to the safe. Right. Tell me about how like one time the guy wouldn't give you the fucking like, like key and you fucking punched him. And t tell me how it hurt your hand. Tell me how as much as nose bled. Tell me his eyes watered up and he told you what you wanted to know. Tell me he was fucking tough and you got scared of him, but you couldn't show it. Like, right. tell me something. I, I want to know who it your buster of your crew was. Me. Who was your driver? <laughs> like, give me I anything here. Some ego, because I asked him if he ever lost a fight. He couldn't come up with a single instance in which he ever wasn't the most alpha person he'd met. <laughs> oh, gosh. Nice. I imagine everybody loses fights in jail or yeah. prison if you're there long. Like, he was in prison, like... You're there long uh, enough. You have to be losing a fight, unless you're like Mister. I don't think everybody like, gets in a fight. I, I think it's rare. No, but he was like fight. gang affiliated, so like no, he was I, in the mix, right? Was he? I don't. I didn't think so. I, I, don't uh, think I thought he was, he was like friendly stuff. with. If I remember correctly, he was just kind of you know doing his own thing in there. He mostly talks about cooking in there and how like there was some rough stuff going down. But I don't remember him being gang affiliated. But it's been a while. I, I probably in, in made case, that up. That's a, that's an example of. Uh, I probably made it cooler uh, in my memory. <laughs> look, look, to be fair to Larry, like he's an older gentleman who's lived a very long life. If he has a hard time, like yeah. stringing a story together, lickety split for us young folks, then he's, maybe he's that's also our problem. Fat. Maybe we need to be a little bit more patient. Also, Taylor's a very slim man who could beat the shit out of him. All right, <laughs> so Larry better step up, step aside, rather than be talking any shit to Taylor. I forgot about that. I was going to defend Larry's old ass. Like, oh, you know, maybe Jennifer Generations, this and that. But he's talked shit toward the end of the show. He can get, he can get fucked up. That's what will happen <laughs> to Larry. Set up a celebrity Next boxing match. match. There ain't You'll nobody. Do nothing. You'll do nothing, <laughs> young fucking fucking nothing. <laughs> we'll fucking, we'll fucking three-way tag team you all night long. Yeah. Like, like you and two more you're gonna feel like of, you're in of prison similar again. to you. Okay, don't, <laughs> don't, 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 don't get you grab Leon. some young buck. <laughs> yeah. No, don't, don't, get, don't get some prison. I'm going to fuck up all the biggest hitters from Prohibition. <laughs> yeah, this guy Tony Tony Tequila Rodriguez was, was That's crazy. White Lightning Murphy. <laughs> That's White Lightning Murphy. He could run a forty in nine seconds. He was the fastest white man in the NFL. <laughs> uh, he was great before we let those you know athletes into the game. <laughs> what happened to Jeremy Renner? I don't know who that is. He I played um, so, I, I think, and he got hit by a snowcat. Yeah, a uh, it, it, an un. All right, so here's the story, and and, and sneak up on him. How, what the fuck? My interpretation is that they were doing something maybe a little bit silly, and there was a couple guys there, so maybe they're saying the story one way that doesn't quite make a ton of sense, so that nobody's culpable. But one way or another, an unattended snowcat rolled over Jeremy Renner, and he may lose his foot. Um, he's he's alive. He's gonna live. Um, he posted his his post was like I'm still alive, bitch, and and his face is a little beaten up, but no worse than like a bad UFC fight. Not even quite that bad, maybe. Did he have blunt um, force trauma to his chest, or am I conflating him and the football player? I don't know about that. All I know is what walk. I read was he might lose the foot. Is that the second Let's, snowmobile accident in a week? 
<laughs> Renner underwent two surgeries the next day after suffering blunt chest trauma and orthopedic injuries. The actor's snowplow was a piston bully or snowcat, an extremely large piece of snow removal equipment weighing at least 14,000 pounds. Uh, yeah. And I guess in his foot, too. I don't know. Yeah. But he got yeah. pretty fucked up. And, and I guess he was through. ICU for a while. So, yeah, it's kind of got hurt you want a uh you want a great mo- you want a kyle pick for this week as yes. we're nearing the end I actually did. all right here's the movie here's the movie I'm gonna write this movie's called digs town digs town okay Diggs. what it's about um somebody runs D-I-G-S. them out two g's just like uh your you know your favorite word <laughs> bigger <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> so it's uh it's about this guy who runs his mouth in a small town and makes a a, t- a, a bet and I believe the bet goes something like this. I know a guy who could whip any 10 men in this town. He says, I could beat any 10 men in this town. Any 10 of them, line them up one after another, I could whip their asses. And he gets in this silly bet, and, and they, I think they alter the bet. He, he, he comes and he says, all right, how about this? Uh, the, the slick-talking guy who's the main, James Woods character. I think they alter it to, I've got a guy who will fight for me, who will fight any 10 men who live in this county. In the county of Diggs Town, or whatever it is, mm-hmm. or in the town of it, and they said, and it's some of right. It's a large amount of money, like it's fifty thousand, hundred thousand, and small town, ta- small town money in the nineties. And uh, the thing is, he knows an ex boxer, a guy who woulda, coulda, shoulda been like a heavyweight contender. He knows mm-hmm. this guy. He's played by Louis um, Louis Gossett Jr., um, really good actor. And he goes and digs this guy up, and this guy's old. Even in the movie, he's old. He's like late forties, fifties, maybe. And, he, and he's like, he's like, look, you got to beat up a bunch of farm boys and and a couple of high school jocks, okay? It's Diggs Town, all right? It's a population of thirty two hundred. And mm-hmm. he's like, all right, I could maybe I could do this, but it's t- I think he's I think it is ten. It's ten or maybe even twelve in a and and like they I think they negotiated out so that it, maybe it's even over the course of two nights or something. There's they're really specific about how much time between each fight mm-hmm. and everything. And he's going through them. He's fucking destroying them one after another. Because some of them are, like you said, co- like high school jocks who don't know yeah. what they're doing. Every because some of them are giving up. They're giving him varied amounts of trouble, right? Some one of them's a real tough fucker. Some well, he's of like just pub in stomping, out. right? Yeah, because like, he's like a pro, and these guys, yeah. The, and uh, the okay. problem is, inside the county of Digstown is a state prison. <laughs> oh, this yeah. seems like a cool movie. Don't, 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 don't tell me anyway. Don't tell me. Yeah, so it's a thirty-year-old movie. movie. Um, it's a thirty-year-old movie. I've only it's seen it once. Movie. My memory of this movie was that it thoroughly entertained me when I watched it. But at the time, I was fifteen years old. So, fifteen-year-old Kyle highly recommends it. It's a it's Kyle pick for the week. Digs Town. I'll watch it. Um, um, this movie's um, a year younger than me. Like that, that's how fucking old this movie is. There you go. No. I'm, all right. You sure you don't want to see Avatar? Like it's kind of a <laughs> that shit. Nah, I will once again be rewatching. Watch, King of the watch Hill. Louis Gossett Jr. <laughs> yeah, I will stick to my autistic. Is character. Louis Gossett Jr. alive? He's got. There's be no. Dead, he's right? certainly dead by now. Uh, five bucks says he's dead. Five bucks says I misspell his name. Louis Gossett Jr. I'll he is that. alive. Eighty-six years old. Year, years young. Jesus. 86 years He's young. Living. Good for Louis He's Gossett picking. Jr. Good for Louis. Six foot four. That's it. Well, well, big people die sooner. I was going to say, tall people. He's got, he's got good reach. Yeah, but black don't boxing. crack. True. And he also, yeah, six, four, six four isn't at that point where like you start getting like goofy shit when you're old. Like six, <laughs> eight. That's a different it's a big story. boy. It's a big boy. But, big man. So, Josh, where can everybody find everything Strain Central? Uh, YouTube at Strain Central, uh, Twitch Strain Gaming. That's pretty much my main two currently. I want to see you test some of the uh, some of our sponsored products sometime. We should get some of those sent yes. to you if you haven't tried them already. Uh, I am they, more than down. Yes. <laughs> Once they get coming. more stock in Death by Gummy Bears, I'm going to have them send you a bunch and Hell and yeah. you'll, you know just I think they'll blow your socks careful. off. We They're going to blow your fucking socks off. Potent. Yeah, I would be that would be very appreciated. No yeah, we are done. we are daily <laughs> cannabis users, and these yeah, will we make fuck you up. So. All right. <laughs> That's the show. All right. PKA 629.